There we go. All right. <clears throat> All right, I think we figured this thing out. <laughs> this is David Wilcock, and we actually have slides that work this time, talking to you about whatever this thing is that we don't know what it's going to be called yet, but uh, I think it might end up being called the Great Pandemic. Um, as you can tell, I am not freaking out about this thing. Uh, there's a lot of good news reports that have come in showing us that this is not the bug out that everybody's trying to make it out to be. Uh, in fact, the virus always has a bell curve, okay? So what they've already seen in South Korea, what they've already seen in China is that it peaks and then it falls off. So believe it or not, China was quarantined on January 23rd and already in Wuhan, and already by February 11th to 20th, that week, the new cases had dropped off, the deaths actually had dropped off dramatically, and now as of like March 11th, I believe it was, or somewhere around there, maybe it was March 18th now, I'm trying to think of that, but there were no new cases. So the cases have completely stopped, Everybody's going back to work in China, and it has this bell curve, and it's pretty fast. Yet here, we are hearing that, oh, you know, the media is trying to say it might be 18 months. And mainstream sources like Newsweek are trying to stoke up paranoia about the idea that there's going to be some sort of martial law declaration by the President of the United States. And the actual acting head of the Department of Homeland Security got on television, in this case Fox, and said, no, that's not true. We're not going to do any nationwide martial law. So this is not some epic end of the world, as a lot of people seem to be thinking. Um, it is very bizarre, I will say, as a meditator and as a person who tunes into collective consciousness, uh, I find it very interesting how quiet it is here. I live in a suburban area, well it's all, Los Angeles is really just a big suburb except for downtown. So I live in a part of Los Angeles that is suburban. The cars have almost completely stopped. Everybody is doing social distancing, which I agree is a good thing, okay? I'm not saying that it isn't. But um, I wanna bring you the most important information so you can understand what the heck is going on because there's a whole lot of currents underneath the surface that you may not be seeing. For example, two days before China in the Wuhan province went on lockdown, a Harvard professor named Charles Lieber was arrested, along with two of his students, one of whom was named Zhao Song Zhang, if I'm getting that right. And I don't have slides for this because this is so late breaking news, but if you actually read the Department of Justice complaint, which is in the description field in this video, it actually says that Zhao Song Zhang was caught trying to smuggle 21 vials of biological samples from the Harvard lab into China, okay? And it was inside his sock. So a little bit of the details got screwed up from the insiders where I was, but the point is it was 21 biological samples. It's in the Department of Justice thing, and it said that he was replicating the research of one of his colleagues, and he had grown this thing on his own. Now, the factcheck.org and those kind of things, all they're saying is that this appears to be cancer research. But the place where he was going, the place where this research was taking place, was Wuhan. So it does appear, based on the insider briefings that we received, that that arrest, you know, because remember, it's Charles Lieber and it's his two uh, students, graduate students, who were actually working for the Chinese Communist Party and had lied about that, and they were lying to the United States about the money they were getting to do this research. So this is a federal unsealed indictment, okay? And Zhao Song was actually caught with these 21 vials as he was trying to get through the airport. He was trying to smuggle them back to Wuhan. Now, they say that the vials had a brown liquid in them. You can read that. But the real question is, what was in there? And according to our insiders, it had COVID-19 in it. 
dude, I know, I know. Wait a minute, David, COVID-19, isn't that something that started up randomly? Isn't that some random virus that showed up out of nowhere? I don't want you to freak out, okay? But it does appear by all intents and purposes that this is a man-made virus. Another reason why, and I got this sent over to me from some folks in China, it's, there is a Chinese study on the record now that shows that there are these certain protein receptors in the lungs which are far more prevalent in Chinese men than in any other type of people. And so, believe it or not, uh, this virus is actually five times worse for Asians and specifically men than for Caucasians or any other race. That is a scientific fact. That is not speculation. And there's similar epidemiology data with SARS and avian flu, okay? So there's something fishy going on here. Why would it target Asian men in particular? And the, the male favoritism of this virus is so extreme. And again, I, I didn't have time to put this into the slideshow, so I'm giving this to you up front. But it is in the description field for this video. The, the, the men are so strongly favored for the lethality of this that it's 80% in some studies. It's 71 to 80% like the fatalities in Italy, the fatalities in China. It's trending very strongly male. It's five times more likely to hit Chinese men. And bear this in mind too, 49% of men over the age of, I believe it's 15 in China, are cigarette smokers, heavy cigarette smokers, 49%. Whereas for some reason in Chinese culture, women do not have, uh, it's not socially acceptable for women to smoke cigarettes, so you only have 2% of women, but 49% of men. And as I've said before, in these provinces of China where it hit the hardest, they have very extreme air pollution. Uh, there's sometimes visibility is practically zero, so everybody's lungs are already damaged. And they also use public drinking water fountains. You're putting your hands on the same button, and then you rub your face, or you, you know, it gets into the water that you're actually drinking, that kind of thing. So um, this is a big deal. Let's, let's think about this from a, a major perspective here. Now, what am I saying? David, 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 wait a minute. You're talking about that people who are Asian are five times more likely to get this. And then if you're a male, you're like even more likely, like 80% of the people that are dying are men. And the, why would they go after they okay i just i just put it out there why would someone if someone made this virus why would that someone go after chinese males well i'm going to be straight with you okay there is a war going on an economic war between what we could call the deep state and china and i do not support the deep state the new world order the cabal the illuminati whatever you want to call it i have been a great proponent of exposing this thing defeating them, regardless of how difficult this has been. There has been a great deal of trauma and pain in my physical life as a result of taking this on. Um, many, many death threats, an enormous, enormous amount of online harassment, uh, the cultivation, some people knowing that they're doing it and some people being duped into it. But there has been the cultivation of an extraordinary field of piranhas where if anybody goes out there and tries to support me, you just get eaten alive on the internet. People whose entire life is just writing hate about me. They get up and they say, I'm gonna hate this guy today, that's my day. <laughs> and then they get up the next day, I'm gonna hate this guy. I'm gonna hate this guy. We've done the best we can. As I said last time, we now have a full-time attorney on staff and uh, hopefully everybody will start to respect the fact that we really don't need to be doing this. If we ask you to cease and desist, please just do that. You know, it's not, constructive. I'm not a cult leader. We don't even really have any friends. We live alone in a house, my wife and I. Every now and then somebody comes over, but it's very infrequent. And most of the events that I was already doing this year had not wanted me back. So we're down, we were down to New Living Expo, and I was going to do some work in uh, Holland, but that all got canceled. So we are going to be doing an online conference uh, to meet that demand. It's called The Great Awakening. It is based upon a whole new book that I put together uh, called Awakening in the Dream. And that book has over 500 academic references 
and it's a whole new reinvention of the wheel for me. I've gone back to all the stuff that I learned in the early and mid-1990s and find out there's a whole lot in there. This gets into the weird Edgar Casey facial similarity that I have, where if you look at pictures of Edgar Casey, pictures of me, the facial similarity is uncanny. If you haven't seen that, you can go Google it up. What is really going on with that? You know, and the fact that Casey's own readings, if you don't know, Edgar Casey did 14,000 medical readings, as they're called, where he was hypnotized, put into a deep state of consciousness, and in that state, he could be given someone's name and address in a particular day and time where they would agree to be at home, and then he would actually visit them apparently in some kind of out-of-body state and be able to diagnose correctly what was wrong with them from a medical perspective. And again, this was not, all he got was the name and the address, but he would know exactly what was wrong with them and he would prescribe these unusual treatments. And in many cases, people who had been written off for dead were saved by these treatments. Now, Casey scholars typically say with the advent of antibiotics, uh, a lot of those Casey remedies were no longer necessary, but of course now we have this pandemic scare. And so there's a real good reason to want to go back to whatever you might have in the house, whatever might be available to you. We're going to talk about some of those remedies in this show. Uh, I'm not going to go as slowly as I did last time. We have a, a, an enormous number of slides to get through, uh, but I do want to set this up. So the book does finally, after all these years, go back to the story of Edgar Casey and me and the facial similarity. And there's also an astrological similarity where the planets at the time that Casey was born, March 18th, 1877, I believe is the date. They line up with my planets at the time I was born so precisely that it's only something like one in 230 years after Casey's death where you could be born and have an astrological alignment like that. Now, I didn't come in with the same abilities that Casey had. Casey was able to converse with people in foreign languages while he was unconscious very precisely. Full knowledge of multiple foreign languages. That has only happened in short bursts in my case where I've had sentence fragments in other languages. There was one in German, there was another one in Japanese. That's in the new book. Um, I do hope it comes out on June 2nd, but I don't know if they'll be able to do all the work from home or not. But it's very prophetic. Now, when I wrote this book, I, in case you were wondering where I've been, I spent all of last year really working on this thing. And I took some big gambles because I actually said in the book that by the time this book comes out, I expect that major, major changes in society will have already taken place that will lead to the arrest and the defeat of the Illuminati slash cabal slash deep state slash new world order. That's a crazy gamble to take. The last day that I was possibly able to edit this book, and I only could make very minor things at this point, was January 23rd, the exact day that Wuhan went into lockdown. I did not see at the time that this was going to extend throughout the world, but the book already had basically put that out there. So the book is going to be very prophetic when it comes out. So we'll talk more about Great Awakening as time goes on, but let's cut to the slides now. So here we are talking about the great pandemic, and we're going to be asking what is really going on here. Because in society, this has now escalated to a truly biblical scale. You have the president or prime minister, uh, Angela Merkel of Germany, calling coronavirus the biggest challenge we have faced since World War II. That makes it bigger than 9-11. And of course, she now supposedly has gone into hiding because she has the virus, but there's a lot of arrests going on based on something called Defender Freedom 20, the biggest military uh, NATO buildup in Europe in the last 25 years. We're going to talk about that. So some people are really freaking out about this thing, and that is important. You definitely do need to respect social distancing. I don't want you to act like this is BS. And please don't try to lump me into any category where I said that it is. That is not true. However, back to the slide, I do not think this is the end of the world. All of this is being caused by the coronavirus, and the coronavirus is a normal thing. There are many coronaviruses out there. This is just one specific strain. 
There was an NBC article that was trying to clear up some conspiracy theories online where people saw that there was corona, human coronavirus listed on bottles of Clorox and Lysol, that it's going to kill the coronavirus. And so NBC has to come out and say, no, Clorox and Lysol did not already know about the new coronavirus outbreak. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see at the bottom of this little screen capture that there's a screen there. That is a video that starts auto-playing. And we'll talk about what's in that video in just a minute. So when you go into this, it's NBC quoting from factcheck.org, where it says, numerous social media posts falsely suggest that because Clorox and Lysol products list human coronavirus on their bottles, the new coronavirus driving the outbreak in China was already known. It wasn't. There are many human coronaviruses, and these products were tested against a strain that causes the common cold. So all we're dealing with here is just a specific strain called COVID-19, which I'm sure you already know. The Chinese government informed the World Health Organization about the outbreak on December 31st, and some say they waited too long. Okay, that's fine. That's when it came out. Within a week, they ruled out other viruses, and they're saying that 2019 coronavirus or or, you know, COVID-19, it's the year 2019 is when they found it. That's why it's got a 19 on it. It's about 80% similar to SARS and 96% similar to a bat virus. Well, there's other things going on here. Now, the insiders who I'm talking to say that the write-up about this coronavirus 19 pandemic was waiting on the National Institute of Health website from the cabal, putting it in there, since 2019. So apparently this thing has been in the queue for a long time. Now we're going to go through all the crazy headlines that happened last year in the news. Okay, We're going to go through all that stuff and I'm going to show you how this is the culmination of a fight to the death between the current U.S. administration and the deep state. Now you've seen this. You know there's some kind of crazy thing going on with the media. I don't have to be the first person to tell you that. That what we're dealing with here is an unprecedented fight to the death between a sitting presidential administration and the entire media. The media is so anti this administration that it's, it verges on almost 100% negative. And that's never ever happened before. You know, I think the Bush administration certainly deserved a whole lot of uh, hating. And I <laughs> definitely partook of that myself online at the time. You got these oil men and, you know, George Bush Sr. was really kind of running Reagan behind the scenes. So he had eight years with Reagan. Then he got four years on his own. Then you have the Clintons, which, of course, are really working for the Bushes, and now they're all friends. Then you get George W. after this very strange 2000 election crisis where Al Gore technically won the popular vote. But remember, he was Clinton's vice president and also very much the reincarnation of Henry VIII. If you look at their faces, they're almost identical. And I think Henry VIII had to go through a lot of karma in this lifetime, including losing the presidency, uh, whereas before he really abused being king. He would kill his wives if he didn't like what they were doing, just have them beheaded. And he also had uh, these very strange uh, rules called bills of attainder, and if he passed a bill of attainder on you, he basically could kill you for no reason. So I think if you look at the reincarnation research that I've done in my book, Synchronicity Key, which I'll show you right here, uh, we have a, a whole, I mean, again, this is not like something I just came up with for this show. I wrote a whole book on this. You can see how thick it is about people reincarnating and having the same face that they did before and they actually repeat their karma in these weird long-term cycles of time. So Al Gore is another one who I hadn't gotten yet when I was uh, you know, working on this book, but there's cycles that link them with their past lives. Henry VIII, it's an interesting discussion. Uh, I'm not going to really go into that here. And you can laugh. As I've always said, you can laugh if you want to. You're allowed to laugh in this show. If you think something I say is funny, go on ahead and laugh. But uh, there's a great deal of science, as I said, from Dr. Ian Stevenson studied over 3,000 children who remembered past lives, and they were able to remember the way the house looks, people's names in some cases, who killed them, the person who did the murder then confessed. They can remember that there was a painting on the wall. They can remember that the treasure was buried in the backyard and exactly where it is. And then, as they grow up, if you look at their face, and you compare it to the face of the person they remember being, they have a forensic similarity, which means 
if you have police face matching software, that person is going to look like who they were before. This science should be cool and it should be commonly known, but this deep state has deliberately stripped out everything in science that could suggest that there is a god or a divine creator, whatever the heck you want to call it. They don't want you to have faith. They don't want you to believe in higher power. They don't want you to think that anything's going on. In fact, Corey Good here <laughs> has already given me in the past this zombie machete. Okay, this is actually to fight zombies. It's got the green handle, let you to know that you're, you're chopping up beings that have weird green flesh. And uh, this apparently is very effective. So if somebody's going down the street, ugh, that's the crazy thing, guys. They have put this into the psyche of humanity. We have, uh, <laughs> we have like zombie guns and zombie weapons, as you just saw that. All of these zombie shows. And so there's also some very important movie franchises that everybody loves that uh, always have to do with the world having ended first. Hunger Games, of course, is a post-apocalyptic society where the population has gone way down. They don't really, I think, say exactly what caused it. It might have been a virus. But definitely in the case of the Planet of the Apes reboot, you have the whole planet get wiped out from a pandemic. And then there is this virus that does two things. It makes apes turn into intelligent beings, but then it makes humans dying off from this very contagious thing. Of course, we also have the Maze Runner trilogy, which I actually liked the first one, uh, but then it kind of gets all into zombies and, you know, Scorch Trials is the second one, I believe it's called. It gets really disturbing with all the zombies because they're very nasty, and of course you have the whole Resident Evil series, which also talks about zombie apocalypse. You have a very popular show on television called Walking Dead. So please understand that the deep state folks, you have six major media conglomerates, right? Everybody knows that now. There's, the, the media is controlled by a centralized group that doesn't have our best interests in mind. And I'm going to get a lot more into that as we go on. I've got a great slideshow here. I'm really excited about this. And I get to say whatever the heck I want because this is live and it appears that all the sensors are not at their normal desks. There's a lot of stuff about that going on with Google. So there's a lot of fear that's been seeded in. You have to understand that MKUltra is real. Mind control is real. They do want you to be afraid. They do want you to have a panic response in a situation like this. They don't want you to think logically or rationally. They want you to be irrational. They want you to be freaking out. They like people going to the grocery store and buying everything that boosts sales. But look at what's happening. The Federal Reserve is now bailing out the too big to fail banks at a trillion dollars a day. If you look for it in all of your busy time, I know you're busy, there's so much information coming at you, but that's something you really should pay attention to, a trillion dollars a day. Now the full nature of the, 2000 economic, the 2008 economic collapse has yet to even be fully understood, okay? But at that time, we're still only dealing with, what, $29 trillion of bailout money. And that's a gigantic amount. That was half of the world's gross domestic product for its time. But at a trillion dollars a day, which they say they're gonna do through until the end of the month, we're already looking at like 10 days or something for that. Plus they've already done like a trillion and a half or something. So this is where the misdirection is. You know, if you're a magician, right, you got this hand out here and then the other hand you're going into the pocket. So the pocket in this case is another bailout and everybody's so freaked out. They're like, please don't let the banks collapse. Well, okay, but it's one thing to keep the financial system running. It's another thing for these guys to steal another 10 years worth of money to keep their zombie banking system going, which is why they like to threaten you with zombies. So when you get into the uh, Dr. James Glatfelder research, this is very important. Dr. James Glatfelder works with the Financial Institute of Technology in Switzerland. It's the most prestigious institute uh, for people that are gonna learn about the financial system. Albert Einstein actually spent time there and studied there. There was a study that he did based on a 2008 
uh, economic report uh, in which they studied something like 48,060 transnational corporations and they were looking to see if there were hidden tentacles linking all of the corporations of the world together. These are all the world's corporations, more or less, okay? It's not like it's just some of them. It's, a, it's Orbis is the name of the database that they used for this. So what did they find? They found out that out of these 48,060 transnational corporations that you had what they called a super entity of only about 151 corporations that actually through hidden memberships of crossover and board of directors, stuff that's very difficult to see, they had to use essentially chaos theory, almost like an AI, to look at how these things fit together. They ultimately found out, and this is credible Swiss scientists, found out that only 151 companies actually are earning 80% of all the money in the world, and they're all basically run by one single thing. Now this could not happen by accident, it's very bizarre, because two-thirds of the things on that list are financial institutions, okay? And it includes all of the too big to fail banks. They only published a list of the first 50 on the list of 151, but you see every too big to fail bank on there, on that list. Now what does that mean? That means it's something that the insiders in the, in the Illuminati call vertical integration, okay? You have these different corporations that appear to be in competition with each other, but they're really not. That's what we learned in the LIBOR scandal. That stands for London Interbank Originated Rate. And what does that mean? That means the credit rating that these banks have against one another. So if you're going to invest in the stock market, which now would of course not be a good idea at all, because uh, it could go down a lot more. It's not a buy, buy, buy signal right now, I don't think. I mean, if you want to do that, go ahead, but it's probably going to go down more before it goes up. Before we get any further into that doom and gloom stuff, let me tell you, we are looking for a global financial reset in which trillions and trillions of stolen dollars will be freed up for the planet. I am expecting this thing to be very positive. There's very few people really dying. The number of people who died in Italy up until now is 0.001%. Uh, the number of deaths in America is, is a ridiculously small percentage of our total population. This is not the end of the world. It's not, and they're not going to keep society shut down when you have these bell curves where everything in China, which was a lot worse than anywhere else, was over in basically two months, and by the third month, they're opening it all up again. So I look at this as a global timeout, a global go to your room. <laughs> Everybody was getting pretty crazy. People are yelling and screaming, they're too busy, they can't slow down, they can't take a breath, they can't relax. And it's this strange thing because, you know, I'm not afraid of this virus. I think I already had it. I was sleeping like nine or 10 hours a day and I just had to sleep like two hours in the afternoon and then like eight and a half hours at night. And I was fine, you know, other than like really being tired and maybe not looking my best for a while. I kicked it in the ass. Uh, it's done. Tom Hanks, you know, whatever you think of him based on some of the stuff that's out there. Um, let's just talk about the one piece of data, which is that they said in the news that he got the coronavirus and his wife, and all they had was some body aches, and then his wife got some chills, and they were tired and they had to sleep a lot, and then they got better. And it's over, and now they don't have it, okay? And now the, the media is trying to plant all this stuff about how, oh, oh, you know, well, it could go dormant and then it could come back. But wait a minute, no. If you look at a world map, there's this green band up at the, the top and bottom of the world. You know, the, the red band is where it's warm, like summertime temperatures. And it's only in this one little green band that the virus is really able to thrive. So now that the spring is coming and the weather is heating up, it's going to kill the virus much, much faster. This thing is simply not going to last. As I said, it is actually an ethno-specific virus. It targets Chinese men because this entity, as I'm saying, right, 151 corporations in a super entity, they control 80% of all the money there is to be earned in the world. Okay? That's an enormous amount. It's a monopoly and it's a hidden monopoly. And I wrote about this all the way back at the end of the year 2011 in my book, Financial Tyranny, which I highly recommend that you see. And it's going to become a big part of what the Alliance has to say. Now, 
You got to understand in the politics of China, there are six different political factions. One of those factions, at least, is working with the deep state. So it's not like China is out of the loop here. But what appears to have happened is that the Chinese administration is in a war with the deep state. Specifically, what do I mean by that? In America, okay, you have the deep state which still controls various parts of the American infrastructure, uh, the media, certain intelligence agencies such as the Central, certain uh, <laughs> investigative bureaus like the federal one, right? I'm being very careful. <laughs> I'm going to put it out there. Those guys, there's still probably going to be some good guys in those groups too, and, and, and they've all been overturned. But there's 16 intelligence agencies in America. And some of them are, most of them now, are, are actually doing the right thing. They're working for the positive, as are the majority of all the aspects of the U.S. military. Okay, so this deep state has lost its control over the power in America, but they still have various parts. So there is a corporate part of the United States of America where there's still a battle that's being fought. So that corporate part of the United States of America will put out crazy, crazy disinformation all the time. And it's always getting disproven. But like in the last year, 2019, almost all the news they put out was to impeach Trump and they ignored almost all the other stories. You have uh, James O'Keefe with Veritas Media who's come out with incredible reports of how uh, people are coming forward from ABC, from Google, they're blowing the whistle on shadow banning that they were in fact making it so that you basically can't be seen by anyone. You think that you're okay, but they've shut you down. Nobody's going to see you. I used to be one of the most popular people on YouTube. I had 5.9 million unique videos with my name in the title when I announced that on February 23rd. And as I've said before, as soon as I opened my big effing mouth and said that I had twice as many videos with David Wilcock in the title than there are with the name Hillary Clinton in the title and others like that, two days later when I checked again, it was down to 250,000 videos. They killed 5.75 million videos. Donald Trump was at 40 million. Dude Perfect was at like 45. I think they actually beat Trump. And uh, the biggest one was Will Smith, and he was at like over 100 million videos or something like that. And Cardi B, I think, was at like 49 million. So Cardi B had more videos than the President of the United States. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, folks. <sighs> Let's just be grateful for a minute that we have the opportunity to be here for this show. Do you like the show so far? I guess you're leaving me a lot of comments there. They go really fast. And that's okay. Um, I'm going faster this time. You guys wanted a faster pace? Well, you got it. So I want to just say, look, all this stuff that's going on right now, I don't want you to be afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm very relaxed. I had been setting up this home studio to be able to do my own uh, conference from home and also to be shooting shows for a new network I'm going to be starting. Um, I didn't expect that this stuff was going to happen, but we're all set up here. We've got the slides. We've got it all working. Oh, and you want to know what happened last time? Check this out. Okay. This is crazy. This cable, okay, was the whole problem. This is the reason why I was not able to do my slides. Uh, it's a new cable. I might have used it before. I don't know if somebody rolled the chair over it or what the heck happened, but this cable wouldn't let the video go through, and so when I simply use another HDMI cable, oh my god, now the darn thing works and I've got slides. So that's what happened over there. All right. One of the other things I talked about last time, which is a good time to bring this up again, I showed you these three books, okay? When I was in college, um, I had a sociology class, and then I took another one. Now, you're trying to get an education, you're paying for it, and your college professor tells you that Ford Motor Company built Hitler's tanks and when the Allied bombers blew up the Ford Motor Company tank plant that Hitler had, Henry Ford personally repaid Hitler to rebuild those tank plants as quickly as possible. But it's an American company. If you don't believe me, let's go to this one. There's books like this, okay, Wall Street and the Rise of Hitler. 
Okay, and it's a pretty good size and it's got a lot of references in it. This is by Anthony C. Sutton, talking about the seemingly impossibly treasonous idea that Wall Street itself, the British bankers, okay, actually created Hitler. And it gets weirder than that because Hitler is actually the illegitimate son of the British royalty. So if you look at the images of the king of Britain right before Hitler was born, he's got a very similar face to Hitler. And uh, Kaiser Wilhelm was the guy's name, I believe. So Kaiser Wilhelm is another guy who also has, you know, parentage of this. So Hitler was a Brit and then they changed his name and they sent him over to Germany. But what's going on is you got both sides working against the middle here. And look at this, I got another one, as I said last time, by Charles Higgum. This is called American Swastika. Okay, why would they have a book called American Swastika? Hmm, maybe it's because the Americans created the Nazis. Maybe it's because, as I was graded in my class, Boeing manufactured Hitler's bombers. They created them as passenger airliners in the U.S. They had a lot of seats in them. Then they sent them to South America. They take all the seats out. They send them over to Africa, where they repaint them, and they fit them out as bombers, and then they send them right over to Hitler. Hitler could not have been doing his war machine and destroying all of life in, the, in Europe if it wasn't for the American apparatus that was helping him with their logistics and their materials and all the raw materials we can dig up in America, shipping it over. It's total treason on an unimaginable scale. And then last but not least, folks, the third one, again, if you saw my last video, Trading with the Enemy, again by Charles Higgum. And it says right here, the Nazi American money plot from 1933 to 1949. What happened in 1933? America goes off of the gold standard and they made it illegal for you to have gold. They literally went into people's safety deposit boxes, which you thought were safe because it's locked up in the bank, right? And you got the one key and you got to have your key or else they can't get in there. No, they just went into the safe deposit box and took your gold. So that's why now all the all the alt-right people, right? Oh, you know, you're alt-right. Ooh, you, you, you actually believe in dangerous conspiracy theories. Oh, man. Yeah, well, wait a minute. This is, <laughs> this is not a conspiracy theory, dude. It's a college class. And I was graded upon my ability to know that American corporations financed Hitler. The whole thing was a sham. World War I and World War II. 90% of the guns they were using were made by the Remington Gun Company, which was owned by Samuel Bush, who was the father of George Bush Sr., right? The original Prescott Bush, right? So you got Samuel Bush. A lot of people don't know this. Samuel Bush was running the Remington Gun Company, which coincidentally... <laughs> This is where it gets fun, right? The conspiracy theory is fun. Because, oh, you're crazy. And you can laugh if you want to, but this is real, okay? And at some point, it's going to matter. It's going to matter. People are going to pay attention to this, especially now, right? You might have laughed before. You might have been too uncomfortable. But now it's all this buggy, germy stuff when you go outside. It's not fun. It's not cool. It's scary. People are freaking out. This is not a random thing. It's not an accident that this happened. It is an intentional attempt to scare people. Well, a trillion dollars a day are going to the too big to fail banks. It's a much bigger bailout than the TARP bailout in 2008, and it's much faster. And they're doing it fast before you realize that this thing is not as serious as they're making it out to be. The majority of everybody who dies from this thing is over 70 years old. You have to have a compromised immune system, and more than likely you already have lung damage, such as if you're an extreme smoker. And that's also, you know, 80% men and five times more likely if you're an Asian. That's all true. So all of these numbers about alleged death rates, if you're not in an Asian country, they're five times too high. Based on the scientific data from the Chinese, they've already studied this thing and published. Okay, this is not a conspiracy theory. You have China, you have Russia, you have Iran already accusing this of being a bioengineered attack. And all of the evidence is pointing in that direction. As I said, we have this guy, Charles Lieber, who was arrested by the Department of Justice around January 21st or so, as, as well as two Chinese nationals, one of whom was smuggling, as I said, 21 vials in his sock, 
trying to get through the airport of a brown liquid with biological material where he had taken something that his friend was working on and replicated it for personal use to bring it into Wuhan, which is where he was going. We're going to get back to that, but this is already public. It's in the, it's in the description on this video, so you can go click on that and read it. And I want you to write articles about this, okay? This is, I can't do it all. And I want you to steal my work, but please give credit, <laughs> you know, if you feel so inclined, it's, it helps us. But uh, anyway, Deep State, there it is. I showed you three books. I was graded on this in college. They are studying whether or not this world is being run by some secret industrialist cabal. And the answer is absolutely yes. And these people created World War I, World War II. They own both sides. This is called problem reaction solution, right? They create the problem, then they have a reaction, and then they offer you the solution. So the problem in this case would be, oh my God, there's a big pandemic. The reaction is, oh my God, there's a big pandemic. The solution is, hey, let's give the banks, the too big to fail banks, a trillion dollars a day. Let's just slip that under the table while nobody's looking. Before everybody's so happy that they realize, oh, this isn't really as bad as we thought, which is gonna happen. Okay, do not, please, fall for the authoritative media. If you haven't figured out yet that the mainstream media is totally compromised, if you haven't paid attention to James O'Keefe, to Veritas, if you're not seeing the interconnectedness of this thing, then you just got to make a tinfoil hat. You got Reynolds wrap right in the kitchen, dude. Go in there, pull off a sheet, fold it up, and wear it. And then you'll start to have visions coming into your head. I'm telling you, it works. <laughs> we have taken a lot of lumps over the years. We've taken a lot of abuse for being truthers, for having this information available to you. I don't like it, but it's part of the job, I guess. Public ridicule, public humiliation, it's really sad. But I want to explode a lot of myths here, and I want to really get to the core of what this thing is, because these people, the deep state folks, this is real. So let's go back to that thing I was saying about Samuel Bush. Samuel Bush, Prescott Bush's father, owned the Remington Gun Company pretty quietly, and they were making the money on 90% of all the gun sales to both sides of World War I. Goes to the Bush family. Then you have Prescott Bush, who is Samuel Bush's son. Prescott Bush is George Herbert Walker Bush's father, and he was President of the United States after Reagan. He was vice president during Reagan. Prescott Bush was Hitler's banker. That's officially known common public information. Nothing unusual, folks. It's commonly known that Prescott was, that, that yes, Prescott was Hitler's banker. Now, there's a lot more that we could do with that, but the point I want to get you familiar with is the idea at least in principle, that this deep state, these, these oily men, and oily because they're literally oil men, right? They're making money on oil. They took us off of the gold standard. They took us off of our currency being based upon collateral, something that's physically tangible that you can get your hands on, right? And they put it into the magic Babylonian money printing press, where you print money out of thin air. When the Federal Reserve was started in 1913, the dollar had 99% more purchasing value than it does right now, and that was before this whole alleged Great Depression happened. I don't think the economy is going to be in tatters for very long. We're looking at an economic reset. The other countries involved in that economic reset already signed off on it. If you remember, if you go back and watch my Pete Peterson video, we had another insider named Woody. That was a code name. And uh, I had also given him the code name Ward in the video. I wasn't sure if I could use Woody, I could. But on the same day that my insider Pete Peterson was found dead, so, well, he died actually of an accidental injection at the nursing home he was at. On the same day, our friend Woody was found face down, dead in his house. The day after he had signed off on the new financial system with the Chinese Dragon family, which is this ancient lineage that's in China where they have an enormous amount of gold in private collections, much more than the gold that's on the books or on ledger. So that's another thing I've talked about for a long time. 
The official gold in the world is valuable because it's scarce. How scarce? All of the gold in the world allegedly would fit into one Olympic-sized swimming pool. But if you take the off-ledger gold that the Asians have and you add that in, it now becomes 13 and a half Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of gold. So one of the things that happened, and I talked about this in Financial Tyranny, is that the Asians had way the hell more gold than this cabal. So the cabal had to do a whole lot of stuff to be able to take over the world, which they tried to do to get their new world order. Their plan is for everybody to be on their knees, begging for salvation, and then they come and they rescue you, but it comes at an incredibly steep cost. We'll get into that a bit, a bit later. So the Asians had a lot more gold than the Cabal did. So what did they do? They had this guy back in 1776 named Adam Smith write a book called On the Wealth of Nations. And it's got a bigger title than that, but that's the short version. And he basically said that gold is bad because he gave a whole bunch of reasons. He said, if your country has gold in its central bank, you're vulnerable to invasion. Another country could come in, steal all your gold, and now you're in an economic depression. Everybody's starving and the other country is richer. And if you don't have a strong enough military, then you can't defend yourself. So that's one of the excuses. Another excuse that they had was gold has a finite amount, but population keeps increasing, which means as there's more people, they need to spend more money. And therefore, there's still the same amount of gold, but you have more people that need to use it. So gold has what? Inflation. Gold becomes more and more and more expensive. It hyperinflates, and then that also could destroy the economy. So they made all these arguments for why, oh, we shouldn't use gold at all. Now, secretly, after World War I, there was a deep state-influenced meeting of all the major countries in the world in which they were told, we got to abolish gold, but people aren't going to like it, so we got to do it quietly. And the other countries reluctantly agreed to this plan. This meeting happened somewhere in around 1921, or 1922 or thereabouts. Uh, and what they started to do, it's very sad, they started to take private militaries, a lot of which were run by the Japanese, which back then were extremely nasty people. Okay, you gotta remember the Japanese were like the Asian version of the Nazis back then. Now I love Japan, I've been there, I've toured it, and I think they're all good, but at the time there was a radical faction, kind of the holdover from the shogunates and all the guys that were, you know, samurais, and that samurai kamikaze mentality, I'll kill myself for the greater good. So there was a whole operation, a massive operation, where they were torturing people, finding out about these private gold collections that the Asians held, going in, invading them, and stealing their gold. Most of this gold has been buried in a series of over 130 bunkers in Southeast Asia. This is very important, I'm not rambling, please stick with me, okay? There's 130 bunkers in Southeast Asia, more or less, where you could go down a hallway that's like a mile long, and there's doors all the way down, right? And every one of those doors, if you look in there, there's a whole basketball court-sized room in there with gold piled to the ceiling in bullion, in these ingots, these bars, right? It's a massive, massive amount of gold. It's an unbelievable amount. So what the deep state folks told the Asians was, give us your gold, we'll secretly put it on deposit. Nobody has to know that it ever existed because a lot of it was hidden anyway. Nobody knew about these private collections. And in exchange for it, we'll give you these bearer bonds. We'll give you these pieces of paper <laughs> in these things that look like treasure chests. And the paper could have a face value of up to a billion dollars. And then there will be coupons on it where the coupons are all worth, let's say, a hundred million dollars or something like this. They really did this and they look like they're made by the Federal Reserve because they were. They look like the US dollar. They have the same kind of writing. It's amazing. And I haven't talked about this in a long time, but now's the time. So these Asians were getting this, th these, these uh, worthless pieces of paper in exchange for their gold, which were then put on deposit for them in Southeast Asia in these bunkers that have been locked up. They're not allowed to go back to that gold and you can't really use the gold either because you have to have, uh, it has to be stamped, which is, um, you know, the good standard, the London good standard means that it has a stamp. So if you, if you don't have that good standard, then it's off ledger gold and it's technically illegal. So 
The Asians got screwed really hard, and it continued through into World War II, where the first thing that both the Allies from the U.S. and Hitler, the first thing they would do every time they invade a country is they go right to the central bank and they take the gold. Now, in many cases, there were secret meetings with those presidents that they would voluntarily let that gold be taken. They wouldn't give any armed resistance because they know, okay, it's all going off to this secret depository. We're going to keep it there. You don't have to tell anybody, but we're going to give you this cash in exchange, these billion dollar pieces of paper, and you can redeem them anytime you want. It'll all be good. And we're going to use this to rebuild the world after World War II. But we had to do this nasty thing. We had to do World War I and World War II to be able to get people off of gold so we can save the planet. Well, everybody fell for it. They got their treasure chests with their boxes filled with these fake bonds. The gold is all stored off. It was originally supposed to be brought to America, but the real military that was not the cabal part was stopping all those submarine shipments from getting through. They were cutting the supply lines, so they had to bury it in Southeast Asia. So there's still a lot of gold down there. Much of it, apparently, has been given to extraterrestrials. That gets into a whole other part of my work. Extraterrestrial beings that uh, gave us various technologies in exchange for that gold, such as food materializers. But we still have a lot, and the gold will be reinstated. That's part of the currency reset. Gold will destroy Fed is one of the things that was said by QAnon. All right, and we're going to get into who that is as well. All of this stuff is very unique to me. So um, not that QAnon is unique to me, but I did speak to someone who became a part of that. Uh, her name was Mega Anon. I was talking to her. I publicized her on October 11th. The first QAnon post was on October 28th in the same forum where she had been doing her posts. And my wife and I both got to speak to her on the phone. It was quite amazing. She was a very, very knowledgeable woman. So, we're going to talk about the plan, we're going to talk about how this group was going to be defeated, but getting back to World War II, everybody gets these pieces of paper, but one of the crazy things the Deep State did is they created misspellings on the treasure chests and on the boxes and on the paper, so that later on they could say, oh, that's counterfeit. Because they took advantage of the fact that these world leaders weren't, led, weren't literary enough to know that these were grammatical and spelling mistakes. And they're tricky people. This is one of the things they did. They also inserted certain bonds in the boxes that were different than the others, where the paper wasn't the same stock, it didn't have the same security certificates, and they didn't go through every box, so they didn't see that either. Then you can go in and say, oh, this, is, this box is crazy. And in addition to that, when you open up some of these boxes, they have this little poison capsule in there. So if you don't open it up exactly the right way, the poison goes off and it kills whoever tries to open the box. And you can still see the capsules inside some of these boxes. So I've had many, 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 many pictures of these Asian bonds uh, sent to me. We'll do that in another show. I got lots of time. I'm here alone at home. So we'll do more of this, okay? But I'm just giving you the overview. After this happens, after World War II is over, the Nazis lose. They immediately wanted to bring Germany into the new banking system that was going to be created. And a lot of people in various countries had problems with that. Now, they were told, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to set up this system where we're going to be able to print money out of th thin air. That's the, the Basel III Accords at Bretton Woods, all that stuff. You've heard about this. You've studied this. We're going to set it up so that anybody can print money out of thin air. We have to do this to be able to rebuild the economy so it's going to go towards humanitarian causes, okay? Well, that's not what happened. They just start printing money out of thin air, and then in 1971, Nixon completely takes us off of gold. In, uh, the, the, they were selling off the silver from the U.S. Treasury. Kennedy tried to stop that, uh, and that was one of the things that got him killed. Kennedy was going to issue silver certificates that were, based, that were backed by actual silver, but they were U.S. currency, not Federal Reserve notes. That's one of the things that got Kennedy taken out of the game. But we're going to talk about the alliance and all the people that formed to stop this. It's a major coalition. But I think now is a good time to get back to the slides. We've got a really nice backstory here. This gold, this stolen money, is how these people were ending up able to, be, to, to literally control the whole planet. 80% of all the money to be... Oh, I got, we got 25,000 people watching live. Thank you, everybody, for being here. 
Uh, if you're trying to sell us porno, we're, we're deleting that, so don't bother. <laughs> we got to get this thing going. I got a lot of slides, man, so let's do some slides. All right. So this NBC article uh, that I was showing you before says that big tech is deleting all of this so-called misleading content about the coronavirus. So that's the video that's in that screen right below there. So this guy has, has the cojones to get on this show and say, TikTok says it will remove videos that include falsehoods about the coronavirus, which is anything they don't want you to know. And also the other big social media platforms say they too are trying to remove this kind of content, but it keeps popping up. It's like whack-a-mole. Oh, you poor baby. You poor baby. It's like whack-a-mole. I'm so sorry that you, your, your work is so hard to try to like stop the freedom from... <laughs> you don't let people talk. If you try to say anything good about the President of the United States, if you don't buy into the hatred, they will delete you. They will, they will ban you. Like literally you can't talk about him unless it's negative. They won't let you. Big tech won't let you. Now, what does that tell you? They're really afraid of something, okay? Oh, oh, David, I get it, okay? I get it. But at this point, in light of what's happening in the world, if you want to freak out and just be paranoid, that's okay. You have the freedom to do that. But wouldn't it be cool if all this stuff that I've been telling you actually has something to it, if maybe even though you can't stand Donald Trump, and you never could, Maybe there's something going on here that you didn't see. That's the best chance we have right now. The best chance we have is all of this intel that I'm sharing with you. When you put the pieces together, when you see what's really going on, it might blow your mind. Do I agree with everything that Trump has said? Heck no. I have managed myself as a public figure for 23 years. I'm very careful about what I say. I don't want to offend people. I don't want to offend any groups, any minorities, ever. And Sometimes Trump says things that are incendiary. Sometimes he pisses people off. But you have to understand something. Trump didn't want to run. We had multiple briefings that there was going to be a military overthrow by the good guys of the U.S. government during the Obama administration. They didn't have any other choice. I've been talking about this for 11 years, that there are good guys in the military and the intelligence community, that they're going to steal the planet back from this centralized group that you could call the Illuminati, which are really nasty folks. They want to kill everybody on the planet. They want to get it down to, if you look at the Georgia Guidestones, right? They want to get it down to 250 million people. That's 6.75 billion that they want to be destroyed. And it says it right on these stones that are in Georgia, and they keep updating them. They never let the stones get destroyed or taken down or vandalized. They just clean them up. This is crazy. So I do believe that this is real. We're going to talk a lot more about this. As I said, trading with the enemy, Charles Higgum, Anthony Sutton, the Nazis and the U.S. and the British, they were all working together at the highest levels. Now, their generals didn't necessarily know that. They were fighting a real war. But at the highest levels, it's, it's order out of chaos. That's one of their mottos, right? They're going to create chaos and they create order. So the problem, reaction, solution... They're going to create the problem, they anticipate a public reaction, and then they have the solution waiting. So this is gun control, right? They don't want anybody to have guns so that they could create martial law and sweep through the society and hold everybody prisoner if they want to. That's not going to happen here, but they keep trying with all these false flag shootings. Now, we can talk all about that too. There's an MK Ultra mind control technique where people who are susceptible to it, who have somnambulistic characteristics, some of them can be trained to go into a hypnotic personality that they don't remember consciously. They have amnesia, and they can perform an assassination, and then they don't remember doing it. And so a lot of these lone gunman things, these school shootings and stuff, the casualties are real. I would never pull that on you. I would never say Sandy Hook was fake. That's not true. But you got to think about the shooter. You got to think about these guys like Sirhan Sirhan uh, who end up like, you know, crying and holding on to a copy of Catcher in the Rye 
and not even remembering what happened or how they did it. They don't have any memory of it. There's some strange stuff going on there. So if you could get that technology to work, if you're the bad guy and you want to create assassinations and make it look like it was just a random individual, use that MK Ultra mind control to do that. That's a common practice. And you guys all know this stuff. So back to the slide now. The media fear porn right now is at an all-time high. They are just jamming this thing. This came out from the New York Times in total flagrant violation of like common sense where again, China, South Korea, all viral things, they typically have a bell curve, they decay fast. China is already basically done. There's no new COVID-19 cases. The factories are back up to 95%. People have gone back to work. They don't wanna tell you that. Oh, well, it's gonna be different in America. But wait a minute, the sun burns it off? We gotta look at this clearly, okay? So China's problem first hit the top headlines back on January 21st. I always go to Drudge Report. It's, it's the cleanest of the big media websites that's available. So it doesn't mean I'm a right winger. It just means this is the closest thing we have. So there it is where it says virus. And then later in the same day, January 21st, right around the time I was finishing my book, another red one comes up a case in America in Washington state. The quarantine began on January the 22nd. Uh, you see that right here, the virus is mutating, new cases are rising sharply, China quarantines Wuhan. And now less than three months later, as of fact, March 3rd, the factories are returning to production. They've gone a lot higher than that now, but it was already starting at this point. You can look at all this, look it up. The news reports now say China's back up to 95% production and they have no new cases of COVID-19. And if you don't believe me, you gotta go British. You gotta go to the British press, the Guardian are great. China reports no domestic cases of coronavirus for the first time since the outbreak began. What do you know? There's no new domestic cases in less than three months after they began this social distancing stuff. But this type of a problem where we're having to stay at home and have food in the house was not at all unexpected here. We've been telling you to have your stored food and water in place for 11 years now in these briefings from high level intelligence government people that I've been getting. The most common insider guidance, as you remember, was that you should be prepared for two to four weeks with your emergency food supplies. It's also very important to remember that we have power, we have water, we have sewage and we have gas and all of the critical infrastructure things like groceries, doctor's offices, uh, laundromats, uh, food production, restaurants are still doing takeout, all that stuff is available. A true social collapse requires that these supply lines be cut. That's where you start getting rioting, panic, pandemonium, uh, and that is not happening. Additionally, the Alliance, the good guys, as I'm saying, will not allow the mega banks to destroy the flow of currency. So the, uh, the truth is, folks, this is not the end of the world. It, it, you're not going to see America descend into chaos. You're not going to have zombies walking down the street in, in the next wave of this thing. They want to get into your all these little mind control things they've seeded into people's minds for so long. They want you to just be freaking out. But you know, we've had a lot of insiders like in the Defense Intelligence Agency or DIA, Pete Peterson talked to me about this, where they'll go into a country that has a collapse of its currency, where you get rioting, looting, starvation, violence, rape, cannibalism in some cases, horrible stuff. It always requires there to be no food, no water, no power, no sanitation, no gas. You know, everybody's barricaded inside by martial law that kind of stuff. Now, it is true, and I will say this, that there was a plan in place by the deep state cabal Illuminati, those people that made the Georgia Guidestones that wanna get population down to 250 million. They did have a plan in place to herd everybody in America into concentration camps. And the plan is called Rex 84. And I was aware of it. Alex Jones was talking about it all the time when I first got online in 1995 and they would have these plastic, uh, these big pictures of these plastic coffins that they had for all the death they were anticipating. They literally wanted to have everybody on earth put into a concentration camp. And those were made by FEMA, 
Federal Emergency Management Agency. So they were called FEMA camps. So you've heard about this if you've studied the so-called alt-right as the uh, mainstream media has now tried to call this. But look, you guys took your big shot and so now we get to talk. Okay, because you've done that and apparently now the Alliance is allowing free flow of speech again on Google. But some of that has been stopped because it's critical infrastructure. So back to the slides. The mega banks will not be allowed to destroy the flow of money so we will have, you know, no matter what, with the emergency provisions, this will happen. And you can see this, uh-oh, here he is, he's quoting from the president. Well, hey, he is running the country, and they're going to try to get us through this without any damage. So he said, to those families and citizens, I'm not going to try to do a Trump. <laughs> to those families and citizens who are worried and concerned for themselves and their loved ones, I want you to know that your federal government will unleash every authority, resource, and tool at its disposal to safeguard the lives and health of our people. Every authority, resource, and tool at its disposal. So that includes the ability to safeguard critical infrastructure, which would include the ability to have freedom of speech through big tech. So there does appear to have been a major sea change in what you can say online. In other words, certain things that have been banned you'll now be able to do searches on on Google and the terms will come up, whereas before they wouldn't. My wife actually tried to type in the word Illuminati on Google and got nothing. That doesn't happen anymore. Here's another slide, again from the president, same day, March 13th. Americans are the strongest and most resilient people on earth. We will remove or eliminate. That's a very serious threat. We will remove or eliminate every obstacle necessary to deliver our people the care that they need and that they are entitled to, no resource will be spared. I'm going to leave that up for a second while I keep talking. Just keep reading this. We will remove or eliminate every obstacle necessary to deliver our people the care they need. Think about the gravity of that statement. We will eliminate, if necessary, every obstacle, remove or eliminate, and that they are entitled to. Now, if you think he's evil, if you think this is all bad, oh my God, oh my God, then this might make you freak out. And Newsweek is trying to help you out. Newsweek, mainstream media magazine, has their online website, and they just came out with this batshit crazy article about martial law, that Trump is going to declare martial law, and he's going to herd everybody into the camps. Okay? It's not true. But what they can do under the Stafford Act, apparently, is declare social media critical infrastructure as well as pharmaceuticals right so everybody gets the medicine they need that's another thing that's apparently going to happen is all this corruption in the pharmaceutical business which is also run by the deep state that super entity of 151 corporations it's all interlink interlinked together there i actually had a verbal flub okay it does happen <laughs> anyway they're all linked together pharmaceuticals media high finance, banking, 80% of the money in the world. And the other 20%, mostly probably, is being earned by China. So China and the deep state are going head to head, and apparently uh, there was a deadline of sometime in February, I forget what the date was, it was like February 16th or February 19th or 21st, it was one of those three, where China was no longer going to give us, as the corporate U.S., not, not the Trump administration, but the corporate deep state part of the U.S. apparatus. It would not be allowed to buy anything with the fake, hot air, funny money that they print out of thin air by stealing everybody's gold after World War II and then creating the oil dollar, right? After 1971, Nixon abolished gold, and now we're basically on a petrodollar which means they can just run the printing press and print however much money they want and there's nothing that can compete with it because all that gold is safely stowed away in Southeast Asia. This is all true, folks. 130 of them, these gigantic amounts of gold in there, it really is true. So this deep state has gotten into everything, but now the military turned away from them and the intelligence community turned away from them. And this is not just the U.S. This is most of the world has joined this alliance. It started out as BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, but it's now gone way beyond that. 
And that is what this Defender Freedom 20 exercise is in Europe that we'll get into in a minute. But again, back to the slide. We will remove or eliminate every obstacle necessary to deliver our people the care that they need and that they are entitled to. This is all part of the mass arrest, making sure that we don't get screwed. And best of all, as I'm about to show you, there is a very strong likelihood that the mass arrests are already happening. In case you didn't see this last in the last show or you didn't watch it, the U.S. has already sent 30,000 troops to Europe where most of these guys running the Illuminati live in their strongholds. Most of those troops have gone in the last two weeks. Here is one of several headlines you could read about this. Dated March 15, 30,000 American troops arrive in Europe amidst the COVID-19 crisis. Manilo Danucci, writing in the Italian web newspaper Il Manifesto on March 3rd, 2020, reports that despite Trump's travel ban, 20,000 American troops will be traveling to Europe in the next few days. So that was within a few days after March 3rd, right at the peak of this thing. Joining the 10,000 already there. This was before we went into this crazy shutdown, but it was right around the time. The 20,000 soldiers, quote, beginning to arrive from the United States in European ports and airports for the Defender Europe 20 exercise. There's a drill going on, okay, it's a drill. The largest US troop deployment in Europe in the last 25 years, including those already present, about 30,000 US troops will be participating in April and May, flanked by, this is very important folks, 7,000 troops from 17 NATO member and partner countries, including Italy. This is a joint operation between the US and the rest of the international community in NATO, 18 countries altogether. So this is not like Trump is some maverick. It's not like Trump is trying to go and do bad stuff that the other countries aren't, aren't in support of. This is the largest US troop deployment in Europe for the last 25 years, and you never hear about it but it's happening right now. What the heck are all those soldiers doing over there? Let's keep reading. There's actually 37,000 troops, and oddly, you know, which is not really odd if you understand that this thing's really just like a flu that lasts for 30 days for most people, if you get it. Uh, none of these troops have been issued with bio, hazchem suits, or masks, which seems a little reckless of the American government, if COVID-19 is really the threat that we are being told it is tongue planted firmly in cheek, because maybe it's not. That's what the writer is suggesting. The 30,000 US soldiers who will spread throughout the whole European region are in fact exempted from the preventive COVID-19 regulations that would apply to civilians. In other words, they don't really care. They're just gonna get the job done. The assurance given by the US Army in Europe that we are monitoring the coronavirus and that our forces are in good health is enough. At the same time, this is the bleeding heart liberal thing, right? The environmental impact of a military exercise of this magnitude is ignored. And then they go into trying to make it like it's a bad thing. U.S. Abrams tanks will participate weighing 70 tons with depleted uranium shells. And admittedly, DU sucks. Okay, I'll, get, I'll grant you that. I don't think they're going to have to fire very many. Each tank consumes 400 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers, producing heavy pollution to deliver maximum power. Well, at this point, I'm going to allow that pollution, in my mind, I'm going to let that be okay. Because think about it. Where is the biggest shutdown going on in Europe? It's Italy, right? Where is the head of the deep state? It's Italy. If you've watched Above Majestic, if you've watched Cosmic Secret, the two big movies I was in, what do we talk about? We talk about the fact that the deep state is actually ancient. It goes back to the Roman Empire and Rome defeated a nation called Carthage. It's on public record that Carthage was worshiping gods like Baal and Moloch. The Romans imported that pagan satanic religion, which involves human sacrifice, child sacrifice, pedophilia. They started practicing it secretly because they found out, you know what, this stuff works. Black magic, even though it's evil, it gets us what we want, which is money and power. Right around the time that Jesus was showing up, actually before, starting in like 54 BC, Julius Caesar was already starting to invade Europe because the Roman Empire realized they needed a nice island with all this water around it, an ocean around it as a moat, so they could develop their plans 
without the land invasion problems that they had in Italy because the mountains weren't enough. So they had to relocate. They had to up their game. Now, they still have a center in the Vatican, okay, but the British Empire was also them, kind of a rebooted version. They're working together, okay, and that island was where they wanted to put the headquarters. So even in the early AD, the very first century AD, you already have Roman bathhouses in Britain, and that's where they film all the period films, you know, where they have the antique look. Uh, that's in Bath. If you go to Bath, England, uh, you can actually see this really great old architecture and it still looks the way it did. You can go to the Roman baths that go back almost 2,000 years ago. So they relocated and so the coronavirus tampdown of Italy is very strong and what does that mean? That means that Defender Europe 20 could very well end up going into the Vatican. They got a lot of tanks, they got a lot of soldiers, they got 37,000 soldiers they got 3,000 war materials, as we're going to see here. Probably a lot of that is tanks, and you don't hear anything about it. But this is how we are getting the planet back. It's very real. Now, the UK media fought back against this <laughs> by saying that NATO must end its dangerous and irresponsible military exercise on Russia's border, campaigners say. Now, wait a minute here. Uh, why is it dangerous and irresponsible if 18 countries are involved, they know what they're doing, and it's not just Russia's border, it's all throughout Europe? Well, let's say that the guys who are running Europe, who are running the cabal, who have strongholds in Switzerland, strongholds in uh, England, strongholds in the Vatican, they don't want these tanks showing up and doing these precision strikes while well, everybody's at home and nobody leaves the house. This is what I've been telling you folks for 11 years now, you remember? I've been telling you, you're going to have to stay home. I want you to have your stored beans. I want you to have your stored rice. I want you to have stored water. And we were expecting about two weeks where you might not be able to have access to these supplies. That two week period probably has already ended because we have critical infrastructure. You can go to the grocery store. You can get what you need. They're keeping it stocked. There were panic buying going on originally. That basically seems to have stopped now for the most part. They may be rationing things in certain places, but I want you to go back again and look at this, the, the name of the newspaper that said this. You see that? Right up at the top there, it says the Morning Star. The Morning Star. You cannot make this stuff up because Morning Star means Lucifer, okay? The Morning Star is a reference to Lucifer, which is their patron saint of this weird cabal religion. So let's hear how the Morning Star spins this thing that's going to save the planet and get rid of these satanic people as dangerous and irresponsible. Well, they have their own little uh, political action groups, one of which is called Stop the War. It's very Orwellian, you got to make it sound good. Stop the War has urged the government to pull British troops out of the US-led Defender Europe 20 exercise, the biggest deployment of US soldiers on the continent for 25 years. Since January, some 6,000 soldiers and 3,000 pieces of equipment have been sent from the US to Europe according to Stop the War. So 3,000 pieces of equipment, of course, would be, you know, potentially tanks. They don't really tell you what that is. Obviously, uh, it's not just guns, right? Because 3,000 guns wouldn't even cover the 6,000 soldiers, much less the uh, 37,000 once the Americans came in. They're saying 3,000 hmm, pieces of equipment. So that's probably tanks and jets. It's the biggest deployment in 25 years. So the Morning Star is very scared about this. The five month exercise is expected to peak at the end of April and the beginning of May. Stop the Wars calls were echoed by another likely cabal group called the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament. Got to make it sound good. It is absolutely essential that UK troops are withdrawn from Defender 20 and the whole event is canceled according to CND General Secretary Kate Hudson. Well, that didn't happen, thank God. This is, in effect, a practice invasion of Europe by 30,000 US troops. At the best of times, this would be a disastrous military provocation. Oh, well, wait a minute. How could it be a disastrous military provocation when the 18 NATO members are involved? It's their countries. Their authorizing it. They're sending troops in. 
Why is it a military provocation? Because you all, deep state guys, don't like it. That's all that's going on. In the current public health crisis, it jeopardizes the lives not only of the troops from the US and the many European countries participating, but the inhabitants of the countries in which they are operating, this criminal folly has to end. Well, no, that's not what's going on. And my briefings that we get from high-level intel sources are saying this is the mass arrest scenario we've been hearing about. And the briefings also reveal, some briefings also reveal that the cabal realizes, holy crap, they got 3,000 tanks, they got 38,000 highly trained special ops soldiers. We are screwed and there's nothing we can do about it, so they're negotiating their surrender now. That would be wonderful, and I think a lot of things are gonna come out in the news that we haven't seen yet. So this is an international effort. All the different countries are pulling together to try to make this thing happen, to try to get rid of the deep state, and that includes Saudi Arabia, where what have they done? They have been selling off oil at an enormous amount to collapse its price Part of what they're doing to bankrupt the cabal so that they don't have the money to fight back and they can finally be defeated. That's one of the stories you might not have seen. It's from an article dated on March 9th, which you're gonna see right here. Crude oil prices crater as Saudi Arabia kicks off a price war. So oil prices are crashing today. At one point, crude oil prices were down more than 30%. While prices have bounced off of those lows, they were down more than 20% at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Crude prices tumbled last week following the collapse of a deal between Russia and members of OPEC to reduce their production by an additional 1.5 billion barrels, million barrels per day. Russia, however, resisted the further cuts. So that is being done according to the briefings we're getting to destroy the cabal because a lot of their money now and the remnant that's still hanging on is from oil. So Saudi Arabia is participating happily in the defeat of them. So that's why prices at the gas pump are going down and down and down. And they may even go down to 99 cents. Well, that's, that's a big problem for the deep state and they don't like this. Another big piece of news, Google and big tech may already have been quietly occupied by Alliance troops. Because remember, everybody's home. This is what we told you was gonna happen, remember? Have your food and water at home, and you need that because they're gonna be doing these military operations. They don't want people looking. They don't wanna create panic. So if everybody's home and then they can do something quietly, no, hardly anybody's gonna know about it. So that was the idea. And we've heard about this for a long time. Does that mean that the Alliance, the good guys, created this virus? Absolutely not. But I do believe they anticipated it. They knew it was going to happen. They couldn't stop it from happening because it was, there was too many ways they could have done it. But after it was released, they had this contingency plan in place. Defender Freedom started all the way back in January, and the U.S. started to put all the troops in as of March 3rd and a few days after that. So they knew exactly when to do this. When everybody in the world is in this unprecedented thing, everybody's home, that's when you can start doing all kinds of special operations and most people are too afraid to leave the house. Even though this thing is way below now, it, the mortality rate just keeps dropping, it's below 1%. Okay, and as I said, 80% men, five times more likely to hit an Asian, it's an ethno-specific virus. It's really sad because there's this war going on between the deep state and China where they're trying to bankrupt China. So they also have a poultry virus where China's having to buy all their poultry outside of their own country. And they also have a swine flu where all of China's pork died off or had to be killed. So they had to buy that out of the country. Interesting timing. This is all happening for a reason. First of all, getting back to the thing about social media, many people are now saying that Google searches are no longer being censored. This comes from a commentator in Ireland named Gemma O'Doherty who writes a lot of great stuff, she says, wow, it looks like Google is being unlocked. It's finally allowing the truth about one of the most evil men in history to come out. No wonder hashtag Bill Gates has stood down. The sleeping masses are about to get a serious wake up call. Hashtag Great Awakening, da da da. Now, of course, Bill Gates did step down on March 13th, and that is a fascinating, fascinating thing in light of what we now know. He stepped down from Microsoft, he stepped down from Berkshire Hathaway, he stepped down from his own Gates Foundation. 
Why would he do that? We're going to get into that in a minute. Here's some of the proof, okay? Bar O'Chalk, a guy who wrote, <laughs> probably not his real name, wrote back to Gemma in a, re you know, in a tweet reply, Lots more uncensored Google searches are available now. Google has been compromised and the shackles are off. Look up these terms. Aluminum adjuvant toxicity, that has to do with vaccines. Are unvaccinated babies healthier? Do aborted babies feel pain? Clearly he's, you know, on the far right. That's one of those far right talking points. That's fine. Adrenochrome, which is spelled wrong. You take out the N there, uh, which is supposedly this drug that is made in people's blood when they're tortured to death. It's like a DMT. If you drink their blood, you get high. It's one of the things these idiots do. All of these things are normally censored, but now you can look it up, type it in, and Google is back to the old days. And so I did it myself. I typed in adrenochrome right here, and all this crazy stuff comes up. And the idea is, uh, and again, this is really, really sad, but it's part of what's going on here. Um, if you drink the blood of a child who's been sacrificed, there's all this uh, HGH in it, there's all these growth factors in it, so it has anti-aging properties, and the adrenochrome also, the DMT that's released when somebody's being tortured, it does create a high, so these people actually do get addicted to this. It is a drug, and they have to do child trafficking, and there are actually rings in which they produce adrenochrome to sell to people so that you don't actually have to participate in anything. You can just have a steady supply of it and keep taking it. Now, part of the other weird stuff that we hear from briefings is that once you start drinking this stuff, if you do this black magic, if you actually draw a pentagram, uh, with, you know, the magic circle, the five star with a circle around it with candles on each edge, and if you know how to do this, if you know the right uh, incantations and spells and all this creepy stuff, you will see some demonic creature show up in the magic circle because apparently the adrenochrome, now you're sacrificing human beings, you're getting into that demonic energy. And your consciousness will alter in a way where you start to see between the veils of reality, these beings will materialize and you can essentially force them to do your bidding. But it comes at a great cost. It's a really, really, really stupid thing to do. Because one of the things the Cabal has to do, part of the rules, right, is they need to tell us what they're doing. They have to show us what they're doing and then we agree to be enslaved. We are voluntarily accepting enslavement. We are not just being bombarded against our free will. They have to tell us what they're doing. That's why in the British Museum Library of London, back in the 1800s, they had a, a document on display. You could look at it that had an, an, an outlined plan for three world wars of how this group was going to take over the planet. They had it on display. Or another great example is the Federal Reserve note with the great seal of the United States on it, right? It's the weird pyramid with the all-seeing eye. And it says Novus Ordo Seclorum, which means new secular order, new world order, right? What the heck is that creepy symbol about? Well, y'all didn't ask, so since you didn't ask, we're not going to tell you. It's to, we, we enslaved you because you're too afraid. So look, they want you to be afraid. They want you to be terrified. They don't want people who are healthy and, and fearless. They want you to be very afraid. And this is like the ultimate fear porn extravaganza that's going on in the world right now. It is so crazy. Okay, so let's go back to this now. Why are people hating on Bill Gates exactly? What, wh why did his name come up? What's, what's up with him and with the vaccines? Well, we're going to start this a little light. Uh, one of the favorite numbers of the Cabal is 33. And if you go back to the traditional old Windows logo, everybody used to see this in the conspiracy world back in the day. There's a 33 in the logo. You see how where the four colored boxes are there that you have, uh, you know, these, you can actually see these threes here. Um, there's one and then another one where the windows are located. Okay, that's not an accident. That's Windows 95, and it happens again with Windows 98. Now, why do they really call it Windows? Because there's so many, <laughs> so many darn windows that Bill Gates built into that thing to hack your computer, to spy on you. And then, of course, we get back to the endless updates that you have as the hackers keep finding all the windows. 
And so Windows is always having to plug all the holes. They built hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of holes in this thing. Now QAnon revealed that big tech, all of the different aspects of big tech, because they are enslaving us, right? They're using the social media to create suicide and, and you know, sadness. Look at this. All of the big, this was on the QAnon board, that the big tech is using these cabal Luciferian symbols, satanic it, you know, they believe in Lucifer, they don't believe in Satan, but, you know, it's kind of the same thing to everybody else. Oh, well, Lucifer, Satan is different. Well, I don't know. I'm not buying it, okay? I never have. You look at the Gmail logo, right? You got the Masonic Royal Apron. You look at the Facebook logo, you have two-ball cane, which is supposed to be the sex organs of Lucifer. That's what they believe in their religion. And they joke around it. They call it the two-ball cane, like the two balls and the cane being the phallus. Okay, then you have Apple's App Store, which again is the Masonic logo, and the Android product store again has the compass. And then you look at Google Chrome, which is a 666 type of symbol, three sixes put together, and it's the all-seeing eye. Google Play down there actually is a, a derivative of the sigil of Lucifer. You can see that very clearly. They're calling it Seal of Satan there. And then Google's GPS looks like the eye of providence. Now, we can talk about the classic quote from Prince Philip, one of the few times that they got a little more honest with us. In 1988, he said this quote, you know, not at all a disturbing looking dude, right? Totally normal looking guy, nothing that unusual. Oh my God, wow. You notice how these people start to look like Sith Lords? You drink all that adrenochrome, man. It's just, it doesn't, doesn't work out very well for you, right? So here it is, publicly documented in The Guardian. Did I say that? Prince Philip, the Queen's consort at age 88, and this came out on June 20th, 2009. Now he actually did say this, okay? This becomes very important right now. In the event that I am reincarnated, I would like to return as a deadly virus to contribute something to solving overpopulation. Oh my God, dude, really? Did you really say that? Yes, he did. This guy, looking the way he does like that now, he wants to come back as a deadly virus. Because, gosh, you know, we got to do something about this overpopulation. Isn't it a drag? This is the queen's husband, dude. It's not just some guy. Oh, Prince Philip. No, no. He's the husband of the queen. He's not allowed to be king for whatever reason because his blood isn't right. And this bloodline stuff is because they believe they have this Luciferian power that we don't. They got to keep the magical blood going, okay? There apparently were extraterrestrial humans that came here with elongated skulls, and that's what all above majestic and cosmic secret, we talk about that. It's in my book. This book, uh, I got them all here. You know, what the hell? I'm home. I got to do something. So Ascension Mysteries, my third book. Um, the whole second half of this book, the first half sets up everything that I do now in the new book about my early life. A lot of people wanted to get more information about me as a person. I gave that to you. But then the whole second half of the book is basically the cosmic history of the cabal, of the people with the elongated skulls, how they got here, that they were on another planet in our solar system that blew up, and why they came here. I've done a lot of YouTube videos on this, so this is not anything that I haven't already done. But Let's go back to the slide now, and we're going to go now, remember that was 2008 that he said that. I believe it was 2008, right? Let me just make sure. We'll go back real quick. I want to make sure I didn't get that wrong. Where is my pointer here? See, you guys are getting a backstage pass. Isn't that fun? All right. Oh, it's 1988. Okay, so I was wrong about that. Sorry. 1988. So, you know, these things take a long time to build. Let's just put that back in place there, and let's do this. All right. So we're going to go back now to May 24th, 2009. This is going to blow your mind. If you haven't already had your mind blown, and I want you to start to think, okay, we're safe. They're arresting these people right now in Europe. These are the good guys doing this. It's 18 countries. This is going to happen, folks. I know it. I know for a fact. And there's a lot of stuff I can't say, but... The things I can say are really good, okay? Here we go. May 24th, 2009. 
UK Sunday Times. This is mainstream media. It's real. This did happen. Billionaire club meets in secret in a bid to curb overpopulation. America's richest people meet to discuss ways of tackling the disastrous environmental, social, and industrial threat of overpopulation. Some of America's leading billionaires have met secretly to consider how their wealth could be used to slow the growth of the world's population and speed up improvements in health and education. The philanthropists who attended a summit convened on the initiative of Bill Gates. Oh, damn. The Microsoft co-founder discussed joining forces to overcome political and religious obstacles to change. Religious obstacles. What the F does that mean? Dude, this is crazy. Religious obstacles. Yeah, you know, it's not a good idea if you believe in God to want to kill billions of people. That God probably doesn't like it. That's a, religi <laughs> it's a religious obstacle. Political obstacles. You know, people aren't going to re-elect you if you vote. Uh, you know, I think we ought to kill a couple billion people. Prince Philip just opened his big mouth, said, yeah, I'll personally come back as the coronavirus or whatever the hell is even better than that. I'd like to do something about overpopulation. Bill Gates is running the thing. Now, what are, how secret is it, David? What are they really doing? Let's take a look. First of all, you can't find it, okay? I, I type in the Earl, and it's, it's no longer there. So you go through 2019, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. You have to go back to 2011 to find this thing. And then it disappears. So this is how I looked it up. This was February 23rd, 2011. And I was able to get it that way. Uh, the Flash plugin no longer works, right? This was deleted just after October 6, 2011. And you can see that on the Wayback Machine, where the blue indicates that it was the same, and then the green indicates that the link had changed, which means it's no longer there. And you can't find it except from people reposting it. Now we're going to actually read more of this sick, crazy article. We already read this part. They met secretly about how they could use their wealth to slow the growth. The philanthropists convened on the initiative of Bill Gates to overcome political and religious obstacles. Holy smokes, dude. Described as the good club by one insider. Isn't it funny how they always want to call themselves good? Right? Like, oh yeah, we're doing the good thing. We're the good club, buddy. Come on. You want to be part of the good club? Let's, let's dance. Let's dance with Lucifer. Mm, mm, mm. We're the good club. You guys are crazy. Why don't you just call it the Lucifer Club? I mean, you, you knocked down the Defender Europe 20 exercise with the Morning Star. It's okay if you call it the Lucifer Club. It would be a little more obvious for us to see what the hell you guys are doing here. But okay, you want to call it the Good Club if that's, if that's the kind of back padding. <laughs> this is so crazy. I'm not making this up. But it's funny, as Danny and Brinkley would say, that is funny. The good club. All right, enough of that. So guess who's in this good club? <laughs> David Rockefeller, the patriarch of America's wealthiest dynasty. Go figure, the Rockefeller faction and the Rothschild faction are the two big parts of the cabal. Warren Buffett and George Soros. Where have you heard those names before? Everywhere, if you study alternative media. Oh! Michael Bloomberg, the mayor of New York. Hey, wait a minute, David. Didn't Michael Bloomberg just spend like a billion dollars or something, half a billion dollars running for president? And didn't he try at the last minute to attach Hillary as his vice presidential running mate? Yeah, that happened. Isn't it a little weird to go back to this article from 2009 and Bloomberg was there? In the meeting, he was one of the guys at the meeting, and he just was out there trying to beat Trump, but they went with Biden anyway, because Biden didn't even know where the hell he is half the time. 
He was saying, hi, I'm, I'm Joe Biden. I'm running for United States Senate. He said that recently. He's been heckling people. They, he, he, he's like, you know, grabbing onto little girls and smelling their hair. And the stuff that we know on the inside about Biden is not good. And the $1.5 billion bribery that he was given through his son is just the beginning. It gets much worse. And the media moguls Ted Turner and, uh-oh, Oprah Winfrey. Now, I do need to talk about this one for a minute. Oprah did go. And we have briefings from certain insiders who said that when she found out what they were up to, that she staggered out of the meeting and puked, okay, because she realized what was going on. Now, they will terrify you. They, Pete Peterson described to me, one of my top insiders, members of Congress being abducted in the night from their homes, being brought to a location, and seeing some of their own aides who had, you know, blown the whistle on certain secrets, literally being offered the opportunity to push themselves into a chipper shredder machine head first that chips up big logs. And if they didn't voluntarily do it, they were shoved in and everybody got to watch, okay? Congress is bribed and blackmailed and terrified and threatened. Everybody is afraid of these guys. This satanic cult is very dangerous. This is real. They do this kind of crazy stuff. So Oprah was one of those things where they brought her in to try to give it some legitimacy, somebody who the public would appreciate. But I do not for a minute believe that Oprah is interested in this or supports this at all. I want to make that very, very clear. Oprah is one of the good people, not one of them. And that's why she was so sick when she was in this meeting. Let's continue. They gathered at the home of Sir Paul Nurse, a British Nobel Prize biochemist and president of the private Rockefeller University there you go, in Manhattan on May the 5th. This informal afternoon session of the Good Club was so discreet that some of the billionaire's aides were told they were at security briefings. Wait a minute. Why would this be so secret if they weren't planning something evil? Duh. Stacy Palmer, editor of the Chronicle of Philanthropy. Oh, of course, it's a philanthropic effort. We're giving money to help people. Said this summit was unprecedented. We only learnt about it afterwards by accident. Normally, these people are happy to talk about their good causes, but this is different. <laughs> Maybe because they don't want to be seen as a global cabal. What, what? They don't want to be seen. You cannot make this stuff up. <laughs> and of course, it was 555. <laughs> they don't want to be seen as a global cabal. Well, too late, buddy. We figured it out. All right? We don't really think it's a good idea for you to kill billions of people with a freaking virus. Thank God it didn't work, you know. Apparently the original COVID-19 was supposed to be a lot worse, but it's downshifted and it's not that bad. So they got to try their big end of the world pandemic, but no, we're gonna be okay. It's gonna have a bell curve. We're gonna go back to work and, and we all have to stay home for a while. And if you're thinking, here's another thing. Oh my God, the new, it's, gonna, it's the depression now. They always called it the recession, the great recession, right? Now I know why they were holding off on using the word depression, because metrically, things since 2008 are as bad as the Great Depression in terms of the actual metrics. Now granted, food production means that people are eating better than they were in the Great Depression. There was starvation going on back then. That's why there was campaign slogans, oh, a chicken in every pot, right? So they got that part right, but the, the economic data, yeah, there's a big schism between the 1% and everybody else, but everybody else is doing really, really bad. But now they're saying, oh, now it's going to be a depression. I'm telling you, there's a financial reset coming. The currency gets rebooted. There's been various plans in place of how much money everybody's going to get. The point is, don't worry about your business at this point. You can't do anything about it anyway. Don't think that this is the end of the world. Don't think that you're going to get screwed. It's going to all change and things will be set right. That's a big, big part of why I'm here and why I'm doing this show. So, <laughs> they don't want to be seen as a global cabal. Hmm. 
<laughs> Back to the slide now. Some details were emerging this weekend, however. The billionaires were each given 15 minutes to present their favorite cause. Over dinner, they discussed how they might settle on an umbrella cause that could harness their interests. Taking their cue from good old boy Bill Gates, they agreed that overpopulation was the priority. So that's their favorite cause. How do you solve overpopulation? Well, what does Bill Gates do? He's got the Gates Foundation. What do they do? They make vaccines. Ah, hmm. Another guest said, there was nothing as crude as a vote, but a consensus emerged that they would back a strategy in which population growth would be tackled. Holy crap. This is real as a potentially disastrous environmental, social, and industrial threat. Oh, but there's nothing as crude as a vote. This population explosion is something so nightmarish that everyone in this group agreed it needs big brain answers. Yeah, we gotta think like a big brain. Hmm, what do we do? Let's make a virus. They need to be independent of government agencies which are unable to head off the disaster we all see looming. They need to be independent of government agencies. They need to be independent of religion because you might have a religious objection. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, yeah, we don't want anybody getting in the way, man. We gotta just get this done. Why would you go over the heads of the governments if your tactics are ethical? Doesn't make sense. Why would you not want the religions to know? Unless you're going to be killing people. Why all the secrecy? Well, they wanted to speak rich to rich. <laughs> oh, yes. Rich British bankers are going to speak one way or another. We don't want to be seen as a global cabal. and We certainly don't want any of these religions getting in the way of our lovely plan. <laughs> Without worrying, anything they said would end up in the newspapers to paint us as an alternative world government. Oh, tosh, tosh. We'd never dare think for a minute that we would be locked up with the plebeians as they die. We have our underground bases and facilities that we go to. We've drilled just like the channel. We've got all the places we need. <laughs> you guys have done enough. It's time to go home. It's time to stop. If you want to surrender, the Alliance is allowing you to surrender, but enough is enough with this crap, this Luciferian crap, killing people, threatening people, assassinations, targeted murders, false flag events, fake wars, fake pandemics, fake economic collapses that cause real damage to real people and you're keeping everybody in poverty and you're not allowing us to expand into space. You're hiding technology that's gonna do that. I've had it, we've had it, enough is enough. We are done with this crap, we're moving on, we're taking the planet back. Can you feel the freedom? Can you feel what's happening with Defender Europe 20? Do you understand that I've been telling you for 11 years that there was a group in the US military and the international community it's going to arrest these people in a mass event, the last holdouts, okay? Do you understand that that's what's happening in Europe, that that's what's happening in America? And we told you everybody was gonna be home when this was happening. We told you you needed to have food in your house. We told you that you weren't gonna to wanna to go outside. It's the perfect cover. The Alliance didn't do this. They're defending us against this attack, but now they can get in there and get things done. So I've just showed you absolute proof in writing, which is what they have to do. That's the rules, right? I told you that's the rules. They have to tell you what they're doing. So they did tell you in the Sunday Times that they're planning on depopulating the planet with Bill Gates, who's doing the vaccines, right? They tell you this in 2009. They throw Oprah in to try to make it not sound so bad. Oh, but we don't want to be seen as a global cabal. And oh, we don't want to be uh, judged by politicians and, and, and religious leaders because, you know, we're going to have to kill people and nobody likes that. But in the Georgia Guidestones, they give you the manifesto. Yeah, we'll get it down to 250 million. If you have 250 million people, they're much easier to control because you can enslave them. 
We don't want that. The next year, the very next year, after this secret meeting that they don't want the religions knowing about, they don't want the politicians knowing about, good old Uncle Bill kicks out $10 billion to spend on vaccines. What do you know? Isn't that something? And he's got that cocked eyebrow. <laughs> yes, we have a little secret for you, folks. You won't find it for a decade, but then we'll release it. <laughs> it's going to be lovely. Bill Gates makes a $10 billion pledge for vaccines. Bill Gates, the Microsoft founder and philanthropist, will donate $10 billion over the next decade. That's a gigantic amount of money to develop and deliver new vaccines to children <laughs> in the developing world. And one of the biggest ever single charitable donations. What a nice guy. He wants the children to be safe. He wants them to not get disease. Because if the children survive, then the population will go up. Right? If the children survive from his life-saving vaccines, the population will go up. But didn't he just say that uh, they want the population to go down, that it's this grave threat to our security? So saving children's lives with the vaccine has... No. The vaccine is the problem. The vaccine has the problem. Have you seen the movie Vaxxed? Backed by Robert De Niro, where they actually talk about multiple cases of people where they're fine and their family is fine? And then they get vaccinated, and all of a sudden, they have all these problems. They don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know about the 1976 flu vaccine that my mother got and nearly died from. She was brought to the hospital, and all, it happened out of nowhere, and I didn't know if she was going to come back alive. So this is totally real. Now, look at this. A total of $15 billion has been spent. This was from Lyndon LaRouche's Executive Intelligence Review. Uh, where he covered the story and he was pretty angry about it. Now, he says some things the other one didn't, okay? So he said in the second paragraph, Lyndon LaRouche called the meeting a kind of confession to the mass murderous intent that this group has against the world's population. They confessed. The meeting was convened on the initiative of the man deemed by Forbes to be the world's richest, Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, who has brainwashed millions of youth through Facebook, I think he got confused with Zuckerberg. Lyndon, buddy, we love you. He might be a little bit off on that one. <laughs> I think I actually have some of this in the slide here, but uh, Warren Buffett, ranked number two by Forbes, pledged $31 billion, the bulk of his fortune, to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Whoa, that's for vaccines, on top of the $10 billion. And David Rockefeller. Rockefeller arranged for the meeting to be held at the home of the president of the private Rockefeller University in New York City, Sir Paul Nurse, one insider, dared to call its participants the good club. <laughs> so there, yeah, we have it in slides. I've built it out for you. $31 billion from Warren Buffett. $31 billion. Now let's do the math. Okay, you got 15 from Bill, 31 from Warren. That's $46 billion of research money on a frickin' vaccine. Oh yeah, because it's so expensive to work on vaccine. Like, yeah, you, you get these guys in a lab and they're like mixing stuff up and yeah, it's a lot of work. $41 billion, dude, like, oh my God. It's such a gigantic amount of money. Besides the three conveners, the meeting was attended by New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, you traitor, <laughs> drug promoter George Soros, Peter Peterson, the genocidal advocate of government budget cuts who co-founded the Blackstone Group. That is not my Pete Peterson. Don't hate on me in the comments. I know, it's somebody different. I got it, okay? It's not the same dude, I promise you. <laughs> former hedge fund manager Julian H. Robertson Jr., former Cisco Systems chairman John Morgridge and his wife Tasha, you people should be ashamed of yourselves, Real estate speculator Eli Broad and his wife Edith, David Rockefeller's son, Rockefeller Jr., and of course, again, media moguls Ted Turner and Oprah Winfrey. ABC News reported the meeting was reminiscent of the 1907 salons of America's foremost financiers held in the study of J.P. Morgan to discuss how private citizens could stop the economic panic. 
Isn't that something? Because that meeting that they're referring to was the one that led to the Federal Reserve. <laughs> the Creature from Jekyll Island, written by G. Edward Griffin. Okay? So, this is what's so cool. We got a briefing that this particular very disturbed individual, this Harvard professor, Charles Lieber, was arrested. I believe it was on January 28th. That was what the briefing said. I feel sorry for this dude, man, because he was working for Bill Gates. He might be the guy who actually did the coronavirus. Heavenly Father, Mother God, please send Charles Lieber the support of ministering angels at this time. Why this man would choose to do something like this, I do not understand. We are sorry that there are people like this in the world who would do something like this. You look at the sadness in his eyes. He, he doesn't like what he's doing. You know, these people did make choices, though. He made a choice. He is very bizarrely connected to Wuhan and biological research. And the arrest was announced right here on the Department of Justice's own website. January 28th, Harvard University professor and two Chinese nationals charged in three separate China-related cases. And it says here, the Department of Justice announced today that the chair of Harvard University's chemistry and chemical biology department and two Chinese nationals have been charged in connection with aiding the People's Republic of China. Dr. Charles Lieber, age 60, the chair of the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology at Harvard University, was arrested this morning and charged by criminal complaint with one count of making a materially false materially false, fictitious and fraudulent statement. Lieber will appear this afternoon before Magistrate Judge Marianne B. Bowler in federal court in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh-oh. You got a woman judge, buddy. <laughs> you are in trouble. <laughs> she is not going to want to be nice to this guy. Now, the insider briefing told me that Bill Gates paid for this research. And they know that. This is on the Department of Justice's website. Now, when you go into this article and you read the whole thing, it also says that this, na that this man named Zhao Song Zheng actually was caught going through the airport with 21 vials of a brown liquidy substance that was something that his friend was working on. He was going to Wuhan, something that his friend was working on at the lab, and he, was, he had cultured it himself and was bringing it to Wuhan for his own research. According to the briefings we've gotten, what is in those vials is COVID-19, and you are going to be told about it on a collective level. You're going to be told that they were cooking this stuff up, that they manufactured it. It's a bioengineered virus. I told you it goes after Asian men. It's an attack against China. It's an economic war, and they're using it as a pretext to try to drive down the economy, right? All of the economic gains that we've had since Trump won the election, are gone. So Trump can't campaign on the economy anymore because they don't want this guy to be president, okay? They want creepy Joe Biden. That's all they care about right now. They're willing to destroy the whole world to try to stop this mass arrest from happening, which is what the Trump administration ultimately is about. Yeah, he might be as inelegant as a fart in an orchestra in the middle of the quiet movement where the strings are so light and crack. What was that? Sometimes he's like that, okay? I get it. But you gotta look beyond that. You gotta think about the big picture here, what's really going on. And there's a lot going on. So of course, immediately, when the Department of Justice announces this very curious thing, a prominent Harvard professor, right, with these big grants, he's secretly doing deals with China. The money is under the table, millions and millions of dollars that you don't get to know about. And he's doing this deal, right? He's, he's hiding this stuff, and then his buddy gets caught going through the airport with 21 vials of biological material that he's bringing to Wuhan at the end of December. Oh, that can't have anything to do with coronavirus. It couldn't possibly be that they were brewing this stuff up and that those vials can then be spritzed out with drones or airplanes or whatever to try to infect people, okay? That couldn't possibly be true. It couldn't possibly be that Bill Gates ordered this based upon the shit that he paid for. When they started this thing in 2009, they had the meeting, they talked about, oh, it's this terrible problem and we must avoid looking like a global cabal. We must avoid politicians. We must avoid religions. 
because we need to save the world by making a vaccine. Then the next year, he puts in $10 billion. Warren Buffett pledges $31 billion, $41 billion, enough to build a whole freaking huge country. And all that money, that $41 billion, turns into these 21 vials that they tried to smuggle through the airport. I am pissed off, okay? I am not happy. I am willing to get on this live stream and tell you about this news. The only thing that's missing is what's in the vials. And they say in this, oh, factcheck.org, right? It's like Snopes. We have to, we have to debunk the Department of Justice. <laughs> so what do we do? We're going to say, oh, yeah, it's just cancer research. It's cancer research, man. That's all it is, the 21 vials of cancer research. So let's take a look. Oh, factcheck.org. No link between the Harvard scientist Charles Lieber and the coronavirus. They're just backpedaling like crazy. As chair of Harvard's chemistry and chemical biology, biological department, he's the number one guy, right, in the chemistry and biology department at Harvard. Okay, that's a very prestigious school, the best there is, more or less. He's the most high profile of three. Yeah, he's a celebrity, he's a rock star. According to the complaint, Lieber lied to both the Department of Defense and the National Institute of Health about his affiliation with Wuhan University of Technology and his involvement with China's Thousand Talents Plan, a program designed to recruit Chinese expatriates and foreign scientists back to China. Lieber also allegedly failed to disclose large sums of money he received from the Chinese government, including more than one and a half million dollars to start a lab in Wuhan and gave him a salary of up to $50,000 a month. That's a lot of beer and potato chips, plus living expenses for his work at Wuhan. The Post, it's probably filet mignon, you know, and, and champagne. The Post summary gets most of this right, but suggests with quotation marks that Lieber's lab in China may not have been focused on legitimate research. Oh, there is no evidence that this is true. We have to fact check with science-based claims. God forbid people believe the Department of Justice. So here it is again. <laughs> Lieber lied to both the Department of Defense and the National Institute of Health about his affiliation with Wuhan. That's kind of a big deal. In the middle of, well, Wuhan is the center of where the virus was released, dude. <laughs> what? He's lying to the Department of Defense and the National Institute of Health He's getting $50,000 a month under the table in Wuhan, and then his buddy is caught bringing 21 vials of this weird brown biological substance that his friend was working on. And he gets caught, because it's in his socks, you know? Like you got a joint and you want to hide. I gotta hide that shit, I gotta hide that shit. I put it in my socks, man, nobody's ever gonna know. Well, this is a lot more than a joint. This is 21 vials of freaking coronavirus that they were about to release in Wuhan, and he was part of it. Let's bring over some more. So they're lying, they're not telling you what's really going on. So this story apparently is part of the mass arrest scenario. You're gonna hear about this. It's not just gonna be on my video, you're just getting a, a preview. This briefing, by the way, came to us from a very, very high level source. I'm not gonna say anything more than that, except to say that this person is in intensely plugged in. And that is the most trustworthy source of briefings we usually get, okay? That it was coronavirus in the 21 tubes. Everything else is already on that DOJ article. It's in the description on this YouTube video. You can go down here, click on it, okay? Go read it for yourself about the 21 vials. Write about this. Spread the word. Let it, what's the right expression, go viral? <laughs> oh, you know, you had to do that once or twice. That's where, that's where I got to get my Vegas jacket on, right? Once in a while, the jokes are so bad that I got to actually put on the Vegas jacket. Just because, you know, you need a little extra love. Okay, and this has got some silver on it, so like colloidal silver, I don't know, maybe it's going to keep the bugs away. But anyway, here it is, man. This is one of these sizzle power jackets that I bought for you to dazzle and impress. But now, I'm all alone, and I'm at home, so I got to do this at home. So... You get to enjoy this jacket in all of its majesty and wonderment because back in the old days, these were very expensive. They'd have to sew this gold in. Now it's like, what, $130 or something? It was nothing. But anyway, it's fun. 
I'll wear the Vegas jacket for just a little bit. This is so crazy. And his involvement with China's Thousand Talents Plan, a program designed to recruit Chinese expatriates and foreign scientists back to China. He also, again, failed to disclose huge sums of money, including a million and a half dollars to start a lab in Wuhan. I wonder what they were doing in that lab. Oh, you know, they were just worried about cancer. They're just trying to solve the, find the cure for cancer. It's nothing more than that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all they were doing. And those 21 vials, it's just cancer research. None of this has anything to do with the viral outbreak that happened in Wuhan. None of this has anything to do with why would the DOJ arrest this guy? You want to believe that? Have fun. <laughs> $50,000 a month. That's champagne, caviar, filet mignon. Man, he is living high on the hog. This post summary gets most of it right. This is, again, the fact check. But suggests with quotation marks that Lieber's lab in China may not have been focused on legitimate research. There's no evidence. There's no evidence. That's true. Wow, okay. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> Thank you for saying there's no evidence that that's true with no effing evidence of your own. Dude, you got it? You got it? There's no evidence that there's no evidence. <laughs> but they just tell you there's no evidence. It's a little weird. It's a little weird that the guy was working in Wuhan. It's a little weird that he was bringing 21 vials in. But, you know, something that his buddy was working on. It's a little weird that this guy got arrested and that he's getting weird money. Why would he lie to the DOD? That's not a, that's not a good thing. You don't want to lie to the U.S. government unless you're doing something wrong. Well, what's wrong? Oh, he's just bringing in a cancer cure. There's nothing wrong with curing cancer. Hell, we love it. If those 21 vials was the cure for cancer, we're like, absolutely, bring it in, we're ready. You don't need to lie to the DOD, we're excited about the cure for cancer. You lie about something when it's evil. You lie about something when it's bad, right? Not when it's good. Not if it's going to save people's lives. You get dirty money, you're sneaking something in, you don't want customs to know you got this thing. Oh, he just, he just wanted to do some biological experiments. He wanted to do a little research and make himself look good. I don't think so. I don't think so. According to the charging document, Lieber's three-year Thousand Talents contract required him to carry out the typical job functions of academic scientists, such as publishing in journals, advising students, and organizing conferences. You've got to give him a cover, make it look good. Now, this is them trying to backpedal out of this crazy thing. There is nothing inherently wrong with Lieber participating in the Chinese program, but he did need to disclose those relationships and funds to Harvard and when receiving grant money from U.S. agencies. Lieber allegedly failed to do so on multiple occasions, including when he was asked about his Chinese ties from curious investigators. Hold on. That means he's under federal investigation, and he still frickin' lied. At the time that the agents bring you in, you're still gonna lie? Really? Really? And nothing evil's going on. No, no, no nothing evil's going on. It's all good, man. It's just, you know, no big deal. Wait a minute. Lieber, they're going to defend him even more. Lieber has not been charged with sharing intellectual property with Chinese. No, because they jointly developed it. The evil part of the Chinese government was doing this, you know. The social media post goes on to imply that Lieber is somehow connected to the new coronavirus because the Chinese university he was involved with was located in Wuhan where the COVID-19 outbreak began. But there is no evidence that this is anything more than a coincidence. Oh, really? Well, I have evidence, which is an insider briefing from somebody who risked their lives to get us this information. I don't think it's a coincidence. I really don't. So again, it was 21. I had that wrong. That was from the briefing. The briefing said 23. turned out to be 21. But you can read it in the DOJ. Lieber, buddy, I don't know what the hell you were thinking. Again, Heavenly Father, Mother, God, we pray for this man's soul. Now, I'm not usually going to do anything Christian, but... If you did this, we are not happy, okay? Please, let us make sure that he also made the antidote and that the Alliance has already found the antidote and that it can be found and quickly released. The other thing that the briefing said 
is that Bill Gates financed Lieber's research. In other words, the company that was giving him the money to do this came from the Gates Foundation. Bill was behind it. And isn't it interesting that Bill Gates mysteriously resigns on Friday the 13th? Here it is, headline on CNBC. They try to water it down a little bit. Bill Gates leaves the Microsoft board. So that is a pretty big deal. That's a pretty big announcement. And there it is right in your face, right out there. It really did happen. Another thing that we see that might be related to the mass arrests is that Trump has 1,700 people working in Google, i.e. Alphabet, engineers working on a coronavirus information website, and then Google tries to deny it. Um, and so you can read that, you can pause it and read that. This came from this guy. It's not that Google is flipped, it's that emergency powers allow the president to declare them a public utility and to seize control for the good. It all makes sense now. They declared a national state of emergency. Trump said, I have powers in a national emergency that a lot of people don't even know about. Google is the largest go-to source of information. It makes up at least 70% of all search traffic. When Trump said, we have 1,700 engineers working on the site, and Google had apparently heard no such thing, I think they learned Google was being taken over at the same time we learned it. Ha, 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 ha. And by the way, removing the censorship algorithms would not be pertinent in any situation except for a massive disclosure of what they have been calling the storm. I take this as a further confirmation that this is the storm they were telling us would happen. If they were just seizing it to help us deal with the virus from an information standpoint, there would be no reason to mess with the algorithm to such an extent. Information regarding adrenochrome and all these other crazy things wouldn't be relevant to a virus, which means none of this is really about a virus. Just food for thought, buckle up. So when you declare a national emergency, this is the Stafford Act. That's how you do that. And it says here, in making the emergency declaration, Trump invoked the Stafford Act, signed into law in 1988, which Senate Democrats said would free up more than $42 billion in the disaster relief fund to assist efforts to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. We have very strong emergency powers under the Stafford Act. Trump said during a meeting with Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar on Thursday. I have it memorized practically as to the powers in that act. And if I need to do something, I'll do it. I have the right to do a lot of things that people don't even know about. Now you could get paranoid if you want to, but this does appear to include all the critical infrastructure stuff just based on that tweet I showed you before that he wrote. But no matter what, at this time, you cannot leave the house without seeing this going on. In fact, in many places like Chicago, Illinois, the whole state, New York, California, you are not allowed to leave the house. But even when it was first getting started, if you go to Target to buy groceries, they were starting to prevent panic buying by limiting the number of items each customer could buy. Uh, limiting the key number of items per purchase so more guests can get what they need. This is called rationing. The Soviets might have called it bread lines. Thankfully, we're a lot more organized than they are here in America. You're not going to see this kind of stuff, but that is what the Soviet Union was dealing with. Now, I went to a grocery store locally last Saturday afternoon, and it was fine. There was food on the shelves. They had a lot of stock. Most people are now staying home. They're terrified to leave the house. They think they're going to get sick. It's very likely not true unless you don't practice social distancing. However, just like 9-11, no one ever thought something like this would happen in America. Almost everything is shutting down or already has, but as I said, electricity, water, sewage, and utilities are all working. And we have been predicting something like this since the year 2007. This is when I first came out on my website, Divine Cosmos, to talk about something I called the revealing the end game of the New World Order. That was their original term for their plan for the New World Order when they're going to enslave humanity through some sort of disaster like a pandemic, which is not going to work. It's not what's happening. But that's what they were hoping they would do. Now, there's this whistleblower who goes by the name Savali, and I quote from her, for the first time I went public with this in 2007. Up until then, I've been working behind the scenes. She said, I remember when I was in San Diego on Leadership Council, this is in the Illuminati, during the meetings, they would laugh about how people had no idea of how much they were being influenced and they didn't even know it. They found it kind of amusing. 
Which is, I mean, that's the mindset of the people in this group, though. They're like, the sheep have no idea that they're being led by the hand. The Illuminati very rarely does outside recruitment. That's not their main method. It's just passed down generationally, just like the divine right of kings, bloodlines, from father to son, and mothers to daughters to children. And so the whole family line has been in it. Throughout the centuries, people have tried to escape, but a lot of times they were either poisoned, murdered, or set up to look like a suicide. Uh, can you say Jeffrey Epstein? Yep. They don't like it when people leave, and they try to make it very difficult. So this is a generational satanic cult. It goes way back in time. You're seeing some of these quotes here. And she came forward in March 2000, and I was on this story from the very, very beginning. I connected the whistleblower to alternative journalists beginning in 2002. The first one to really jump on it, because I was doing this all behind the scenes, I didn't want to be known for it at the time. The first guy who jumped on it was henrymacko.com, and his website initially was called Save the Males. Not the whales, mind you, but the males. <laughs> Because part of what the cabal has done is to create feminism. Gloria Steinem was a CIA agent, of course. And they want to destroy masculinity, destroy the family, destroy relationships, get everybody fighting and angry at one another. And they've done a pretty darn good job. So here is the link. You can look at it now. Uh, Savali Illuminati Defector Detailed Pervasive Conspiracy. And we're going to read some of this. If you detect the devil's hand in current events, you may be closer to the truth than you think. A woman who was raised in the Illuminati cult describes a powerful secret organization comprising 1% of the U.S. population that has infiltrated all social institutions and is covertly preparing a military takeover. Her revelations cast the war on terror and homeland security in their true light. Now let me just say this one thing too. No one was saying the word Illuminati online for years. I mean, like, I was watching all the conspiracy media. I had seen Savali come out in 2000. Nobody ever talked about the Illuminati. Nobody ever had anything about that word in it. And I said, there's something wrong here. We're not awakening fast enough. I need to take the risk and start feeding this to some of the alternative journalists who would listen to me. The two who listened to me the most were Henry Macko and Greg Szymanski. And Szymanski, in 2006, actually got Savali on the air to do a radio show, and I have an MP3 file in that article, The Revealing, that you can download off my website and hear her original interview, which was stolen thousands of times, re-uploaded on YouTube, thousands of times with so many hits, and they always take it down. But the original, you can get the MP3, it's on my website in that article. So, nobody was talking about the Illuminati. I said, you know what, I really need to change that. So I got involved, and I'm very glad that I did. Savali is the pseudonym of the woman, age 45 at the time, who was a mind programmer for the cult until 1996. She was the sixth head trainer in the San Diego branch and had 30 MKUltra trainers who reported to her. She has risked her life to warn humanity of the Illuminati's covert power and agenda. She describes a sadistic, satanic cult led by the richest and most powerful people in the world. This was before the whole Bill Gates thing happened. It is largely homosexual and pedophile. And I'm not saying homosexuality is bad, okay, but pedophilia, yeah, that's not a good thing. And it practices animal sacrifice and ritual murder. It works hand in glove with the CIA and Freemasonry. It is Aryan supremacist. German is spoken at the top, but it does welcome Jewish apostates. The Illuminati controls the world's traffic in drugs, guns, pornography, and prostitution. It may be the hand behind political assassination and quote-unquote terrorism, including September 11th, the Maryland Sniper, and the Bali Bomb Blast. It has infiltrated our government on a local, state, and national level, education and financial institutions, religion, and the media. That's all proven by the fact that the super entity of 151 corporations is earning 80% of the money in the world. Based in Europe, it plans a new world order that will make its earlier attempts, Nazism and Communism, look like picnics. 
They said they want to create an economic collapse that makes the Great Depression look like Sunday school. They're trying to do that right now. It's not going to work. One other detail, these people are not happy. Savali's courageous testimony raises the possibility that George W. Bush, who was the president at the time, and his administration are Illuminists, I would agree, and much of the world elite is engaged in a mind-boggling criminal conspiracy. Well, have these words since become prophetic? You betcha, because Epstein was arrested in New York City on child sex trafficking charges, and he's been accused of molesting young girls. The documents that come out from this could expose powerful politicians and businessmen. And as you know, on his list of people that visited him included Bill Clinton and many others, uh, deep state people galore. And so this was Savali's original uh, website, Lion and Lamb Ministries. This is where I found her. I started talking to her in her forum at the time, and I was the one that convinced her to come forward on the, on the radio eventually. In March 2000, this is still that article that we were reading from, Savali began writing a monthly column for survivors of Illuminati ritual abuse at sweet101.com, and it's excellent writing, and my article coming up is like a book. It's going to have a lot of that in there. In December 2000, H.J. Springer, the editor of CentrexNews.com, contacted Savali and conducted an extended 18-part interview with her by email. I remember when it started. It was very exciting. I am convinced she is the real McCoy, Springer wrote to me. And he knew about this from me, but that's okay. I, have, I didn't want credit, okay? I have personally relayed numerous email messages to her from other Illuminati members who had been ritually abused, brainwashed, raped, sexually abused, you name it, some of them confirming to me her story. So I have absolutely no doubt that Savali has been part of the Illuminati since childhood. Now this is really cool, look at this. Most of them, this is her now quote, this is what she said. Most of the people in the Illuminati are wounded and abused victims who don't even realize it is possible to leave the group. There is a lot of discontent in the ranks, and there would be a mass exodus if the members believed it were really possible to get out and live. Many of the trainers I knew, and believe me, I know, they were wicked, torturing, pedophiles, were nonetheless not happy with what they were having to do. They would whisper quietly or give a look to show that they disagreed with what they had to do. They would resignedly do their jobs in the hope of advancement. Do you know what one of the biggest carrots offered to those who advance up in the group is? It's so sad that you don't have to hurt people anymore and that you in turn cannot be abused. You can only be abused by somebody who is higher in rank than you. So that's your incentive to rise in the ranks. So you don't have to get raped as much. It's horrible, horrible stuff. It's true. Only those higher than you in the group can abuse you, so everyone wants to move up where the pool of candidates who can abuse you becomes smaller. Of course, people can choose to abuse anyone beneath them, and that is a strong motivation. The Illuminati are very political and backstabbing. They have a dog-eat-dog -dog mentality, and everybody wants to move up in advance. They never openly disclose their agenda or their cult activities as often they themselves are amnesic to them. And these are well-respected, allegedly Christian-appearing business leaders in the community. Their community image is all important to an Illuminist. They will do anything to maintain a normal, respected facade, and they despise exposure. Now, wait a minute. What about that amnesic thing? It's called dissociation. None of the Illuminists who I have known had unkind, or evil appearing persona in their daytime lives, although some of them were dysfunctional, such as being alcoholics. The dissociation that drives the Illuminists is their greatest cover. Many, if not most of these people, are completely unaware of the great evil that they are involved in during the night. Now this is weird, but it's true. They use MKUltra, and they have an alternative personality that you go into so what these people end up doing a lot of times is you fall asleep in your clothes. You don't really know why, but you feel like you have to fall asleep in your clothes. You wake up late, as late as you can in the morning. You're always tired. You don't know why. Another part of you gets a phone call. Somebody speaks to you in German. This is all stuff Savali said. They tell you about the meeting that's going to happen that night in German. You go into an alternative identity, but you forget the phone call as soon as it's over. 
You go to sleep in your clothes so that you can wake up quickly and go. You get up about 1 o'clock in the morning, so you'll go to bed at 9. You'll get up around 1 o'clock in the morning, so 9 to 10, 11, 12, 1. You get 4 hours of sleep. You wake up at 1 o'clock in the morning. You get the kids up. You drive to this either military base or like some huge mansion where these cabal people are, or sometimes they do it in a Masonic Lodge, okay? That's one thing she said. When you go there, you study things like riot control, because they wanted to use their people to herd people into these concentration camps. You study military strategy. You study black magic. You study occult stuff. They dress up in Nazi uniforms, believe it or not. All this weird, crazy stuff is what she was saying. They do this until about 4 o'clock in the morning. So you're there from 1.30 to 4 o'clock. Then you get to leave. You pack up all your stuff. You pack up the uniforms. She was in the mind control division, so she'd just be doing mind control on people all the time. And then you go back home. You're home and in bed by like 4.30 in the morning because you always have to be within a half an hour or less, 15 minutes of where you're going to go. You fall asleep, you wake up, you don't remember what happened during the night because it's an alternative personality and they use that mind control to do that. So people might know something is wrong, but they don't know exactly what. So if you've noticed certain children of certain celebrities recently who made very provocative statements, those children may not even know what's really going on. A person could be in the Illuminati and not know anything about what they're doing at night. This is what she's saying. It's really weird. But imagine how effective that is if you actually have that technology that you can stop people from knowing what they're doing. And they all have it in an alternative personality. That apparently is what's going on. A lot of people don't know that. Also, do you remember those studies that stated that TV violence doesn't affect children's behavior years ago? Well, guess who funded them? Of course, the Illuminati. They are all a bunch of bull crud. What a person watches does influence them, and this is well known by the behaviorists in the group. In fact, they know that TV is a tool they purposely use to influence the masses. It cannot create a total personality change in the average citizen, but it does desensitize us increasingly to violence, pornography, and the occult, and it influences the perceptions of young children. All of this, of course, leads up to the really good stuff, which is the plan to defeat the Illuminati. And the plan goes back to a book called The Fearful Master by G. Edward Griffin that came out in the year 1965. This is G. Edward Griffin. I interviewed him in the past, did some shows on that. He is the author of the classic book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, which is the definitive exposure of the Federal Reserve. And here's the book, The Fearful Master. This is now hard to get, and obviously it's going to be a lot more so as I talk about it. And it says, a second look at the United Nations, and here comes my dog. She clearly would love to get a walk right now. It is not going to happen. Sorry, girly. We, Daddy's busy. Daddy is very busy, and he's got a really nice jacket on. Okay, so that means we don't leave the house in this jacket. Who knows what the hell would happen if I walked out in this environment with this kind of a jacket on. People would be like, who is that guy? And why is he dressed like that? Here's another image of the Fearful Master, the book cover. And it says, this is a hard-hitting, carefully documented book and a healthy antidote to the UN can do no wrong propaganda, New York Daily News. This discusses a vast conspiracy, the book, discusses a vast conspiracy that took place during the Korean War, which ran from June 25, 1950 to July 27, 1953, just so you have your time reference there. The American troop positions were being constantly compromised. In other words, whenever they tried to put soldiers down on the ground, uh, they would get infiltrated for some reason. Uh, there would be an ambush waiting, and the American generals were totally pissed off. How is this happening? Why is this happening? And so what do they do? They figure out, okay, we need to use disinformation. So they would put disinformation about the troop positions and then give different groups different pieces of information. Well, one of the things they had to do by law is report to the UN where their troops were going to go. And when they gave disinformation to the UN, it was the UN's positions that were revealed to the enemy. So this is how the Americans found out that the United Nations was plotting against us and trying to get American soldiers killed while posing as our allies. This book also discusses the assassination 
of the other John F. Kennedy of the time, the other rock star, hero, savior of humanity politician, Dag Hammarskjöld. And this is a picture of him. He was actually running the UN and he was a good guy, not a bad guy. So he got assassinated in a plane shoot down that is now the focus of a movie, Cold Case Hammarskjöld. We'll talk about that in a minute. But again, when you type in Fearful Master, G. Edward Griffin, you can see images of the book. It's out there. It's, it's definitely spread around. This is not something I made up. Cold Case Hammarskjöld is a book that comes out now. Um, the next picture is gross. Okay, this is a picture you're about to see of Dog Hammarskjöld having been killed. It's not that bad, but you're going to see blood out of his mouth and his eyes. But here's what I want you to look at. I want you to see the card that was placed in his scarf. That is apparently the Ace of Spades, and it is a calling card of the assassination, that it was done as an assassination, the card of death. They did this deliberately. This is talked about in the movie Cold Case Hammerschold, a film by Mads Brueger, a Danish researcher who ultimately, in the course of investigating this plane crash, discovers that there was a group that was in deliberately infecting AIDS throughout Africa with, you got it, a vaccine. Specifically, an alleged smallpox vaccine. The movie talks about this. There's a whistleblower in the film who reveals that this was still being done through the mid-1990s on a massive industrial scale. The whistleblower says he was aware of 5,000 personnel working for the CIA and MI6, British Intelligence, in Africa, and this is all they did, is infect people with these vaccines to try to reduce population. Thank you, Bill Gates. Thank you, Bill Gates. There you go. HIV is another apparent example of a designer virus. The group that was doing this is called CIMER, the South African Institute for Maritime Research. And you can still see this online now, CIME, South African International Maritime Institute. It's basically the same thing. And notice that their logo is Moloch, the owl, the owl evil being, is that image on the left there. This is a satanic organization. So Cymer, a clandestine mercenary organization for hire, allegedly financed by CIA and MI6. The whistleblower said 5,000 people doing this. And documents discovered by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which was the big uh, Nuremberg trial for South Africa, same thing alludes to an alleged plot to remove the UN Secretary General Dag Hammarskjöld, but in the process we find out, again, AIDS was being spread up until the 1990s, because they're trying to reduce population, but now we, now we got to find a highly contagious pandemic. It didn't do what they wanted to do, thank God. The film reveals that this insider went into hiding and is now testifying against the people he used to work for, but let's go back now to the plan. This was so, so G. Edward Griffin wrote The Fearful Master. I showed you the book, and I told you what it's about. And he talked about this in my interview. What he didn't know is that the generals who found out about this created this thing at the time called the plan. And this was a plan to arrest the deep state. This was a plan to arrest the high-level financial criminals in the cabal. Okay? How do you do that when they control the world? How do you do that when they have their fingers into the media so strongly, into the financial system, into the military, into corporations, they're controlling what you think on television. There's the big three, CBS, ABC, and NBC. They control the newspapers. They control the magazines. You can't read anything unless it's approved. My father studied journalism at Tufts University in Massachusetts, a prestigious Ivy League school, and they told you, as a journalist, you are not allowed to introduce any of yourself into your writing. Not like blogging at all. I've been trying to tell him, Dad, you can tell, talk about yourself now, and he loves it. Now he's writing about himself all the time in his articles. But I said, Dad, you know, nobody writes that way anymore. But they did that so they could maintain control, okay? So they call this thing the plan. Now the plan the five-inch binder was drawn up by these, uh, Brit these uh, not British, they were American generals. During the Eisenhower administration, it expanded into a five-inch thick binder and it outlined a comprehensive plan to defeat the cabal. Now, isn't it interesting that, that they wanted to do this? They were trying to figure out how do we break through this thing. It is a fact 
that in 1958, Eisenhower tried to invade Area 51. This comes to us through a whistleblower who was interviewed by Dr. Michael, not, not by, no, this was written, the article was written by Dr. Michael Sala. The interview was by Richard Dolan, one of the greats in the UFO research community. Got this guy as he was dying, and this is what he says in this deathbed confession. That uh, we called in the people, that this was what Eisenhower actually said to him in the meeting, because he was going to be part of this military group that was supposed to literally invade Area 51. We called in people from Majestic 12, Area 51, S4, but they told us that our government, the U.S. government, including the president, had no jurisdiction over what they were doing. Eisenhower told him, the whistleblower, I want you and your boss to fly out there. I want you to give them a personal message from me. The message is, I want you to tell them whoever is in charge, they have this coming week to get into Washington and report to me. And if they don't, I'm going to use the first army out of Colorado. We're going to go over there and we're going to take over Area 51. Military invasion. I don't care what kind of classified material you got. We are going to rip this thing apart. This man was apparently brought in on a tour. They were shown several large hangars that had big garage doors and flying saucers inside. The agent's boss was allowed to partially interview a gray extraterrestrial who was held in captivity. And this appears to be the reason why Eisenhower warned of the military industrial complex in his closing presidential address on January 17, 1961. If you've ever seen this, it's very powerful because he says, in the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. He handed over the reins to John F. Kennedy, who worked very hard to defeat the cabal. Kennedy is a true hero. And this includes Executive Order 11100 which stopped the Federal Reserve from selling off all of America's silver. And this includes, of course, all of the nickels. Well, I don't know if it was nickels, but definitely the dimes and the quarters were made out of silver. The, the, the Treasury Department was bringing all those back. They were recalling all the nickels and dimes, well, dimes and quarters. And then they were selling them off, and they were getting rid of all the silver. Any silver they had in, in stock as bullion, and the silver in the money, they were just selling it all off. Now, Kennedy tried to stop that so we could use it as collateral to reboot the U.S. currency. So back in 1922, they actually did this for a while. This is a 1922 silver-backed $5 bill. Look at that. Look at the top. Look closely. What do you see? It says silver certificate. This certifies that there is on deposit in the Treasury of the United States of America, $5 in silver payable to the bearer on demand. That's called collateral. And here's another example. Silver certificate, United States of America, $10 payable in silver coin to the bearer on demand. One of the last things Kennedy said before he was assassinated, there is a plot in this country to enslave every man, woman, and child. Before I leave this high and noble office, I intend to expose this plot seven days before he was assassinated. Let's just have a moment of silence for John F. Kennedy and his heroic work. So 1963, he was assassinated. And of course, U.S. coins stopped being made with silver. By 1964, 1965, silver was demonetized. You can see that here. But certain brave filmmakers tried to talk about what happened and really get to the bottom of this. There was a movie called Seven Days in May, came out soon afterwards in 1964. An American political thriller motion picture about a military political cabal's plan to take over the United States government in reaction to the president's negotiation of a disarmament treaty with the US, United, yeah, Soviet Union. A military political cabal's planned takeover of the US government. That's exactly what was going on that Kennedy was trying to stop. It's part of Area 51, that whole thing, why they wanted to invade. I'm suggesting, Mr. President, there's a military plot to take over the government of these United States next Sunday. And here it is as a Warner classic movie. The astounding story 
of an astounding military plot to take over these United States. That's called word mirroring. You don't want to use the word astounding twice. Oops, it happened. This is the same director who, who did the Manchurian Candidate about MKUltra mind control, where an embittered general in the other movie again hatches a plot to overthrow the US government and only one man stands in his way in this intense political thriller, this is Seven Days in May, from John Frankenheimer, the Manchurian Candidate. So this is John Frankenheimer. He deserves our respect for doing these amazing films like Manchurian Candidate, which is literally about a man tasked to assassinate the President of the United States. He's under mind control and he doesn't know that that's what he's going to do. Uh, they were exposing all this back then and Frankenheimer was working on that. The Alliance continued working to complete the plan despite the loss of Kennedy, the tragic loss of Kennedy. Their next big move to try to get the country back was Watergate, exposing a whole lot of stuff going on and the CIA was exposed in congressional hearings for MKUltra. Nixon did resign and Ford took office, which didn't do us any good. The secret space program we've talked about so much did expand massively after 1980 when Reagan got in and all the financial system was starting to be steered in his direction, you know, the, all the stealing really got started in 1980, black budgets, okay? So this is important. Um, you have things like the Vietnam War, the Korean War, the Apollo moon missions. Uh, you have uh, military jets that are very expensive on paper, all those things, but then most of the money is actually going to this secret space program. They did get the Roswell technology. They do have it, okay? And it's been in place for 75 years. That's when the Roswell crash happened, over 75 years ago now, right? So when you think about it that way, we, they've had a long time to work on that technology, to get something that works. Apparently, they have had it for a long time. They've got bases on Mars, bases on the moon. There was this uh, whole interesting stuff with Kennedy trying to expose that and learning about it to some degree from Eisenhower where they tried to invade Area 51. Reagan also learned about it. He got some degree of briefing when he was put into office and he squealed. So that's why there was an assassination attempt on his life. Let's go to the slide. March 30th, 1981, they tried to kill Reagan because he had disclosed about UFOs to his former famous actor colleague, Jackie Gleason who was a widely well-respected comedian. Here he is hanging out with JFK. And some of this did leak into the tabloids. It actually was true that Jackie Gleason, with the help of, I guess, Kennedy probably, uh, or whoever got him in there, he saw bodies of dead extraterrestrials at a top secret Air Force base. And Reagan told him a lot more. This is what, this was the scene immediately before Reagan was shot. Notice the guy to the immediate left of Reagan, not the guy in the uniform, but the guy with the bald head, that's James Brady. And through some weird divine intervention, Brady stumbled at the last minute as the shot was taken and he blocked the shot that otherwise would have killed President Reagan right at this moment. This is now moments after the shooting took place. Everybody's in a state of panic. You got guys on the ground. There's a total freak out going on here and various people were shot, and that is Brady there, face down on the ground. Very sad, this is him. Uh, he did survive, actually. He was brain damaged. And here he is with uh, Ron and Nancy. Reagan was a good guy, actually. Um, he, he did participate in varying degrees, but he also was trying to do the right thing. And he uh, worked with Gorbachev to try to get the denuclearization of the planet. And then in 1982, uh, Reagan did spill the beans. There was a scene where Spielberg was there and they were looking at the movie E.T. And he leans over to Spielberg. Um, this is where uh, the moment that Reagan stood up. He stood up, looked around the room, almost like he was doing a head count and said, I want to thank you for bringing E.T. to the White House. We really enjoyed the movie. Then he looked around the room and said, there are a number of people in this room who know that everything on that screen is absolutely true. If you're talking about the covert world in 1985, this huge thing came in called the Seeker, a planet-sized artificial object. It zipped around the solar system for a while and then it left, but that really let them know there were some very major ET forces out there. 
The next time that the Alliance tried to take the cabal down was in 1987 in the Iran-Contra scandal where literally we find out that the United States government is a drug dealer. And not only are they a drug dealer, not only are they getting the cocaine out of South America, but then they're taking the money from these sales and they're using them to finance terrorists. So they have terrorist organizations in Iran and they're giving these people arms, weapons, right? They're paying for the arms by the sale of cocaine. And it goes all the way up to the Secretary of Defense in the US. Everybody got off, everybody was pardoned, and they, they put all the blame on Oliver North. But, and it was amazing, actually, that after that level of scandal was exposed in 1987, that George Bush Sr. won in 1988 nonetheless, but he did, okay? The next weird thing that happened is in 1990 to 91, thereabouts, all of the nukes in both sides of the world were melted down. The nuclear ordinance was no longer operational. And so we do not have nuclear weapons. This is something I've heard from more than one insider, actually. As weird as that sounds, you've had even ex-astronauts like Edgar Mitchell say that there are extraterrestrial ships that show up over nuclear missile installations. They power the whole base down. They show that the nuclear missiles will not be able to launch. And in that period of 1991, they actually melted them all down. We talk about this more in Above Majestic. Not going to get into it more now. Another attempt was made to arrest the deep state during the Clinton administration in 1995. This was the next time that the alliance was planning on carrying through with what they call the plan. This is very important. The backstory to this is the Whitewater investigation, which if you're old enough to remember this, Hillary Clinton and Bill were both heavily involved in it. Exclusive story excerpt, the truth about Whitewater, front page of time. This was really nasty, but people weren't learning the truth. There was a much deeper level to the Whitewater investigation than what you actually ever heard about. And all this stuff was a big, big political shakeup. This scandal was named for a failed 1970s Arkansas real estate venture by the Whitewater Development Corporation in which Governor, later President Bill Clinton and his wife were partners. Accus accusations of impropriety, in improper campaign contributions, political financial favors, and tax benefits. The Clintons were also accused of hiding files which they claimed to have lost. It goes much, much deeper than that. Clinton, Hillary was actually asked to testify. And many, many people uh, tried to testify against Hillary, including Vince Foster. But before he could testify, he suddenly killed himself. He was very close to her. They apparently were also having an affair. So he was going to try to do the right thing. So again, let's have a moment of silence here for Vince Foster, one of many lost soldiers in this war. And many others like him. Now, Sherman Skolnick from 1996 to 2006 uh, wrote a lot of great stuff. He was a guy in a wheelchair who's a lawyer, and he was actually uh, exposing and, and arresting judges, which is very, very difficult legal work. He would never betray his sources. Now, he's talking about this jet crash that happened in 1996, or actually this is a different one. He was investigating a jet crash at this point in 1973. But his stuff was coming out on rents.com. It's still there. You can read it now. The scoldingsreport.com site is gone. But this was uh, May 11, 2001, before 9-11, in which this article releases some very amazing information. In the spring of 1995, a small group of highly patriotic military officers were plotting to arrest Bill Clinton their commander-in-chief for giving military secrets to the Chinese, a sworn enemy of the United States. This arrest is allowed for and authorized under military code. As the titular head of both the U.S. civilian and military establishment, Clinton, on the other hand, could have arrested the 24 admirals and generals for mutiny. So it's a big standoff. If they were not assassinated, they intended to defend themselves with proof, such as Clinton giving to the head of the Red Se Chinese secret police in the White House and elsewhere, U.S. financial, industrial, and military secrets. On Monday, April 17, 1995, a military jet plane load of top military was en route to Dallas. 
They had on board what is not supposed to exist, an American prisoner of war from Vietnam, pre prepared to finger the Pentagon as perpetuated by Clinton in continuing to cover up POW missing in action people from the Vietnam War. From sabotage, the plane with all these generals in it exploded in the air, killing everyone on board near Alexander City, Alabama. The Pentagon made every effort to cover this up. There are strong reasons to believe that this plane had a portion of a group of seven days in May style military officers who were actually plotting a coup against the White House. That would have been the execution of the plan and the mass arrests. But they had to get this press conference first to make the public ready to understand what's happening. Thereafter, the small group of other flag officers out of uniform took up residence in a Paris suburb. That became part of what we're calling the Alliance folks. They got there in, in Paris. A year later, the chief of naval operations, Admiral Jeremy Borda, apparently aware of the coup, was assassinated and covered up as a suicide, which is a favorite whitewash by the Monopoly Press. We're seeing it now, again with Epstein, although he wasn't a good guy, but again, Let's have a moment of silence and honor Admiral Jeremy Borda. If he had succeeded, this whole thing could have been over a long time ago. We would have never had to go through this nightmare. 30 plus years would have been saved. All eight aboard Air Force jet die in a crash landing attempt. And it says here, among the passengers were Clark G. Feister, an assistant Air Force Secretary for Acquisition, and his assistant, Colonel Jack Clark, said to be an Air Force spokeswoman. The rest of the passengers were Air Force personnel and one Army member who was flying on a space-available basis. Well, that's probably the guy, the POW, an Army member. The plane took off from Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland and was en route to Randolph Air Force Base in San Diego, according to Lieutenant Colonel Johnny Whitaker. And here's another link. There's not very many. Assistant Air Force Secretary Clark Feister, one of eight, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We already said that stuff. And now the probe begins, UPI article. So, among those killed was Clark Feister, the Assistant Secretary for Acquisition in the Air Force. He was a close friend of the Defense Secretary William Perry, responsible for the research, development, and acquisition in the Air Force. So he's a big deal. He had 38 years of experience in designing and developing advanced intelligence Electronic countermeasures and imagery systems. Well, isn't that interesting? Because he probably was working on surveillance, getting these guys arrested, figuring out what's really going on here. Let's have a moment of silence now for Clark Feister. Also killed was Feister's military assistant, Air Force Colonel John Clark, and Major General Glenn Prophet II, a senior leader in the Air Force, who was Director of Plans and Operations for Air Education and Training Command at Randolph. So here is Major General Glenn Prophet II. Let's have a moment of silence for him as well. If they had succeeded, this whole thing could have been over in 1996 or soon thereafter. We would have had 25 years of freedom, folks. Prophet, a command pilot with more than 6,000 flying hours, began his Air Force career in 1965. He was responsible for developing and implementing operational plans, programs, and policies for undergraduate flight training, NATO jet pilot training, survival training, and combat training for airlift, tankers, and special operations crews. The other victims were identified by the Air Force Tuesday as Major Hubert Fisher, who was assigned to the Pentagon, and retired Air Force Major James Horn. The two-man flight crew, Captain Paul Carey, an Air Force instructor pilot, and First Lieutenant Paul Bowers, an aircraft commander, also died in the crash. Let's have a moment of silence for all of these brave soldiers. I couldn't find all their pictures. The name of the eighth victim, a U.S. Army sergeant, was being withheld pending notification of his next of kin. Well, that's because he was already supposed to be gone. Air Force officials at the Pentagon declined to speculate as to the cause of the crash. 
but witnesses on the ground reported hearing at least two explosions as the plane flew over a busy highway near Alexander City and then fell into the thick woods near a subdivision. Now let's think about this for a minute, folks. <laughs> a plane with a bunch of military guys is flying overhead. This is like a bad joke, right? You hear two explosions and then it crashes. We have the insider Sherman Skolnick, who was very accurate for many years, saying that these people had an ex-POW that they'd rescued out of Vietnam, who had still been there all these years. The U.S. was covering it up, and this was just the beginning of stuff that would link back to Iran-Contra and would lead to the arrest of the cabal, the exposure of what they were really doing. Now, one of the things that Pete Peterson told me is that their military forces were going to be quite vast when they did this mass arrest, but they had all the information to conduct the mass arrest stored in a federal building for the FBI. The FBI was storing all the data for Whitewater. It was going to be used to arrest the cabal in one building, which happened to be the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City. Do you know that name? Have you, you remember that? What is the Alfred P. Murrah building? That's the building that blew up and collapsed into its own footprint, allegedly due to Timothy McVeigh, allegedly doing it from a van with explosives in it, two days later on April 19, 1995. That's right, the Oklahoma City bombing, which again blew off much of the facade of the front. This was a counterattack because in the process they destroyed all the evidence that would have been used to destroy the deep state and they got to test out the destruction of a building like they did in 9-11 to see how well the thing worked. This is much bigger damage than should have happened from that uh, van with fertilizer bombs in it. Everybody was all over Oklahoma City bombing after this happened. Six years later, we get 9-11. Now, the Alliance was still working to defeat the deep state. And so wouldn't you know that a missile, not even a plane, a missile was sent into the Pentagon in the exact part of the Pentagon where they were working on this happening. So what does it see here? It says, when hijacked American Airlines Flight 77, which is not what it was, hit the Pentagon on September 11th, it destroyed much of the Navy Command Center. It smashed directly into the office of the Chief of Naval Operations Intelligence Plot, CNOIP, killing seven Navy and civilian employees. Now wait a minute, folks. It smashed directly into the office of the Chief of Naval Operations Intelligence. That was the Alliance. The Alliance was working to defeat the Cabal from within the Pentagon. And once again, these people are so freaking crazy that they sent a missile in to the Pentagon and blew up the guy and his whole office and Apparently, a lot of the financial documents that they were using to investigate the financial cover-ups that the deep state was working on and blow all that stuff out was located in, guess where? The World Trade Center. You got it. So they got rid of all the evidence. Once again, just like they did in Oklahoma City, the Alliance learned a powerful lesson. You got to you can't have this stuff in an easily identifiable location. You have to make multiple copies. And they can do crazy big stuff and satisfy multiple agendas at the same time. But here's the important part, folks. The Alliance never gave up. I began getting briefings of heavy-duty plans to arrest all these people in 2009. I've been leaking this out to the public all this time. You've got to have two weeks of food and water in your house. You're not going to want to leave the house. You're going to want to stay in for whatever reason. We didn't know what it was. One of the things we talked about was that it could be a, a virus. I hoped that wasn't what it was going to be because that's nasty, but here we are, although it's not that lethal, thank God. We have been predicting an event like what I might call the great pandemic since 2009 when I began my relationship, a friendship, a father type of figure for me with Dr. Pete Peterson. This is the original page from Project Camelot where we interviewed him. And there I am on video number two, looking dashing and skinny as a rock star with long, crazy hair. You know, I had a nice jawline back then before things start sagging in all the wrong places. You still have that shirt. <laughs> and I still got that one blue shirt. That's what all my haters say. 
Actually, that shirt is way long gone. I have a lot of blue and purple shirts, but nonetheless, that's the shirt. And I had crazy hair back then, but Pete still liked me because he said I was one of the three smartest people he ever met. Well, okay, let's talk about this for a second. Pete Peterson was working with Reagan in the Reagan administration. He, was, he had been friends at one time with Donald Rumsfeld, Dick Cheney, all those type of characters, okay? He was working right alongside them. He was their biggest expert on technology, the black ops technology. His grandfather had been Nikola Tesla's lab assistant, Pete Peterson's was, and they called him Dr. Do, because if they needed to get something done, he would do it. One of the examples was that they had these very intense fighter jets that had a very highly oxygenated fuel in them, and the fuel had so much oxygen that it would eat through metal and it would rust out the tank. So they asked him, hey Pete, can you invent something that stops metal from rusting? Pete actually went in and studied metal and found out that there, were, there was a compound that could plug into the Van der Waals bonds and make it so that metal doesn't rust. You can buy it if you know what it's called. The military sells it, they use it for Navy SEALs so they can put their weapons underwater and they don't rust. Pete's codename for it was Gun Guzalem, which was a play on the biblical Methuselah who would not die because the rust wouldn't rust, right? There would be no rust. Let's go back to that original Project Camelot listing. Dr. Peterson is an extremely well-informed informed insider. He was actually the best scientist in the black ops community and a most remarkable and brilliant scientist who came forward to talk with us publicly because he feels the issues he cares deeply about and knows about are too important to remain silent about. We salute his courage. Among the many things Dr. Peterson spoke about at length was his strong informed belief that there will be a meltdown of the global economy, well look at what's happening right now folks, and US infrastructure, which may be almost upon us, that Obama is planning to disclose the reality of ET contact by the end of the year, that got thwarted, and, the most, and that most but not all of the ET visitors are friendly. There is much, much more. Here's a very general list of the subjects we discussed. The probable, in Dr. Peterson's strong opinion, collapse of the economy, infrastructure, and law and order in the U.S. They are, the deep state is trying to do that right now. He was prophetic. The planned disclosure of the ET presence, the Aurora, now retired from service and replaced by vehicles capable of superluminal, faster than light speed travel, warp travel, and the TR-3B, Black Flying Triangle, which functions as an aircraft carrier, artificial intelligence, advanced robotics, it goes on and on. So there it is. The, the strong informed belief that there will be a meltdown of the global economy and U.S. infrastructure, which may be almost upon us, and Obama trying to disclose the reality of ET contact, that most but not all of them are friendly. And this, of course, has a lot more weight right now in light of these weird plans that we were talking about back then finally coming to pass than it did in 2009. Project Camelot got in a lot of trouble and almost Carrie Cassidy literally they were thinking about murdering her. Thank God it didn't happen. Uh, Camelot got in trouble for leaking the video too soon. You can pause it and see right here uh, what happened but it's just to start it it says the release of this video was delayed because Dr. Peterson was concerned it might contain some material that was just too sensitive and might endanger us. He spent some time checking with colleagues to ensure we would be safe to release it. At the time of writing, he has not specified what these sensitive parts of the video are, though one might guess. We have taken the decision to take these risks upon our own shoulders and release the interview in its entirety. It has not been cut. Okay. This is like rule number one, something you never, ever, ever want to do. And I, I'm still wearing my ridiculous Vegas jacket. I don't guess I really need that anymore. Let's go back to something a little bit more proper. <laughs> but it's warm. It's warm, and I have it. It's in the house. Okay. So, Pete Peterson uh, was not supposed to have said everything in that video, and it actually did cause some real problems because there were some things that the Alliance, the good guys, had apparently not been honest about, and certain countries found that out as a result of this video. And Pete got in a lot of trouble. He lost his monthly salary. Uh, he was greatly censured by this. He was still getting briefings, but he lost his security clearance. He was one of only five people in the world who had a clearance to carry a nuclear device into another country. 
believe it or not. There's a whole lot of Pete Peterson stuff I could talk about. I was very honored when he told me that I was one of the three smartest people he'd ever met. Um, and one of those people betrayed him. And uh, anyway, what he did say, for what it's worth, is that the science that I put in this book, Source Field Investigations, you look at it on this camera again, the science in this book, apparently, there's over a thousand academic references in here, he said, they were amazed, the Alliance people were amazed that I had done this. Nobody else had ever nailed it the way I did with the covert science of anti-gravity, time travel, uh, faster than light travel, DNA, biological life, the global grid, time being a function of gravity. All these kind of things are in this book. I highly recommend it. Um, and anyway, they were really, really impressed by that. So I do have apparently a lot of street cred in the Alliance, but I've had very, very little contact with them. We did have a couple people that we met with, uh, actually three. Um, so I've, I've definitely met people, and I know that this is all real. Uh, but after 9-11, there was a big, big decline in the Alliance. But one of the things Pete Peterson told me was that unbeknownst to the Illuminati cabal folks, that there had been these micro cameras installed in places like the Oval Office in the White House at Bohemian Grove, where you'd be looking at like a fire extinguisher, a fire alarm, and there'd be one little screw. And if you actually look in the middle of that screw, there's a little tiny camera lens in there like we all have on our smartphones now. Everything that we get is old for black ops. So they had that a long time ago, right? Little bitty camera, little bitty spy camera. And anyway, that little spy camera took video and audio of these guys plotting 9-11, and this is part of what we're going to get when we get the mass arrests. We're going to see how the Bush administration plotted 9-11. That's why he was so bizarre, Bush was so bizarrely relaxed when he's told about what was going on that day, and they whisked him off while he was in the middle of reading a book called My Pet Goat to a, a series of kids, and in the pictures, the book is upside down which is very strange. By the way, Pete also told me that Bush did have an earpiece in his ear, and uh, that Bush did have an earpiece in his ear, and that uh, there would be words going into his ear, and then he would try to say them, and that's where all these Bushisms come from, is that he'd screw it up sometimes. So that's why you get these very, very funny sayings where he says, I'm going to get you to put food on your family and stuff like this. There's a bunch of great Bushisms. Go look it up. Anyway, the next big attempt that the Alliance made to try to restore freedom after so much fighting and so much struggle was the leakage of the Podesta emails in the 2016 election. This is from Wikipedia, uh, not Wikipedia, rather. God, that's CIA all the way. This is WikiLeaks, the Podesta emails. And there's some very creepy stuff in here about ch all these keywords in the FBI database about child trafficking. Well, now we get to 2017. I've been writing about this stuff. I've been releasing Pete Peterson's briefings, telling you to have your two weeks of food and water in the house, that you're not going to be able to leave the house. They're going to arrest a bunch of people all over the world at once. It's going to be a big, big deal. And then we get the truth. We get to see these videos. We get to find out what happened. And then Mega Anon shows up in 2017. As of May is when she appeared. I went public about this on October the 11th. And I greatly expanded her visibility. And it was in this article, right after the Vegas shootings, which happened in front of a pyramid and sphinx and obelisk in Las Vegas. It was a ritual shooting. It was a ritual sacrifice, unfortunately. And the Vegas shootings prolonged what was about to be an imminent defeat of the cabal. The cabal was right on the verge of being done. And unfortunately, they got more time. Trump apparently was in the Mandalay Bay Hotel himself meeting to, to get the final stages of this thing done, and they staged this crazy attack. Benjamin Fulford uh, is an insider who has a lot of other insiders. He worked for Forbes magazine as their uh, east-west coordinator. He hasn't always been right. I want to make that clear. And we now have a big greasy fly that got in here, but I'll just ignore that. If he flies in my face, it'll happen at just the right moment, I'm sure. But anyway, this is what Fulford's has, he has a, Fulford has a lot of great insiders. He also has had a lot of disinformation. 
So let the buyer beware. If you read Fulford, you might get something good, you might get something terrible, but on multiple occasions, Fulford has had intel that I personally could corroborate in many different ways. Let's go now to October 9th, 2017, where it said here, after the Las Vegas massacre and an Israeli ambush, we're going to go for probably another half an hour, folks. This is going to be a long video. So there's a lot of slides that I need to get through and we're getting there. After the Las Vegas massacre and an Israeli ambush that killed four U.S. Special Forces troops in Niger, White House Chief of Staff General John Kelly summoned the Joint Chiefs of Staff and combatant commanders to the White House on October 5th to bring all hands on deck to back Trump against the NFL, Antifa, the Deep State, and the Cabal. The source continued by noting even NSA boss Admiral Mike Rogers and Pacific Commander-in-Chief Admiral Harry Harris were invited, as Trump said cryptically that this would be the calm before the storm. The storm, according to these briefings, would take place in the form of mass arrests, the issuance of a new currency, and the launch of a global currency reset. Well, that is what we're getting ready to see now. This is the storm. Okay, we're in it. Calm before the storm means the swamp is about to be cleaned out, and they are all scared crapless, so we better stop and take a picture, according to this source. And then again, Trump actually did say, this is the calm before the storm, and then he repeated it, the calm before the storm, and the media says, hey, we don't know what the heck was going on. So Mega Anon did give us personal briefings. My wife and I both spoke to her, and this is what she had to say in her posts on 4chan regarding the Vegas shootings. As you now realize, they, as in her case, the deep state, they lost. America, and really the entire world, won. It is going to get ugly, but look alive. This will be your happening, and you'll never give a single F about North Korea again. Remember, North Korea was trying to blow us up with nukes. Mega Anon here. Trump went hard in his press conference today, so I'm going to drop a few huge breadcrumbs. This is the first time I've really felt I need to tread lightly with my information. So please, for F's sake, friends, pay attention to every word I'm typing. Tonight, Trump publicly confirmed what, candidly, we've all been working towards for the last 11 months. This is the alliance. She's in that group that later became what they call QAnon. I believe that. Everyone always asks me what I quote-unquote do. Well, there's a lot of us. Notice I highlighted that. And exactly what we do. This is what I call the alliance. We've all been working towards. We, the Alliance, are going to show you what was intended for Las Vegas, how extreme it was supposed to be. Was, a lot more people would have died if they'd gotten it the way they wanted to. Who had coordinated it and why they did. Trump isn't blowing a lid on Vegas when referring to the storm. Trump's promised storm will prove that Vegas was supposed to be no different than 27 classified pages outlining what really happened on 9-11. Vegas was only done to stop Trump from what he was supposed to be telling you right then. It was going to happen that quick. Stick with me, though. I'm going to tell you exactly what I know. I have been on the ground in the hotel. I have accessed the shooter's room at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. She was there. I came home from Vegas Wednesday afternoon, but I got back tonight for another four-day stint. Example, take all of those initial witness accounts and live interviews of people within the first six hours of 9-11. They reported additional explosions on random floors, flashes of lights, conflicting reports of what they were being told by first responders in terms of events and secured evacuation routes, unrelated fires on unimpacted floors, etc. Remember that? Remember the live CNN interview on World Trade Center 7 collapsing, which aired an hour and 23 minutes before the building actually went down? I've seen it. See, the mainstream media thought that by internally deleting the footage and never re-airing or commenting on it publicly again, they saved themselves. They underestimated the capabilities of the average person to download, privately store, re-upload, and mass distribute information once it's hit the internet. That's where we are today. They can't keep up with us. They mean in the deep state. As technology, availability, and accessibility to everything from the internet, mass info distribution platforms like social media, video streaming applications, public board forums like 4chan, etc., these people literally are floundering in their desperate attempts to keep up. This is why they've locked down social media now, which thankfully appears to be ending. 
Over the last two decades, they've realized they cannot dot every single I or cross every single T. The coming storm Trump is referring to is not Vegas itself. I confirm 100% that a much larger event was planned and thankfully thwarted by the bad guys. Vegas was done to divert Trump away from declassifying and releasing the storm. So this is important. Before what we call QAnon happened, they were right on the brink of releasing this information. And the deep state fought back and stopped it from happening then. But this all could have started in 2017. It's a very important point. This storm is a series of class, she's actually defining what she thinks it is based on her inside knowledge. This storm is a series of classified info the administration will disclose publicly on three, three different but huge socially controversial topics. They have already delayed this release twice. They were going to go public. This is what Pete Peterson was telling me, mass arrests. They would have had to do a lot of you know, troop movement when they were going to do this because they got to get these guys. I'm not saying that they F with the weather. Think what you will. Well, I, I disagree there. They do have weather control technology, but she wasn't briefed on it. They did exploit hurricanes and devastation to their advantage by wrapping Trump in so much red tape with resource distribution allocation, services, duty assembly, deployment, etc. Hence, the storm reference was an FU to McCabe, Kelly, Tillerson, Pompeo, McCain, Ryan, McConnell, Pelosi, Schumer, etc. While the MSM distracted concerned public and Trump, it also kept him in check as they were gearing up for Vegas. It is a miracle that the full plan didn't work. It would have been so much worse. I will confirm that the three disclosures that are going to happen have been discussed and vetted thoroughly for the last several months on this board. Okay, fine. And while pizza is on the menu, talking about pedophilia revelations, it is not one of the three initial pending releases. Not in the way you want it to be. It will be discussed, and Hollywood specifically will take a massive hit in the very near future, hashtag me too started just nine days later. I published this article as I showed you on October 11th and October 15th, four days later, is when Alyssa Milano did the me too tweet that started this whole thing. And here is our girl saying that Hollywood is about to take a very massive hit in the near future. That's an accurate prophecy because she's a real insider with real intel. She knew the alliance was behind Me Too, Harvey Weinstein, who just got a, you know, sentenced to 23 years. Thank goodness all this stuff is coming out. Only four days after Me Too started, we had this kind of stuff coming out. How Hollywood pedophile ring behind child abuse, as horrific as that of Jimmy Seville, could finally be exposed in the wake of the Weinstein scandal. That's October 20th, 2017. A ring of high-powered Hollywood pedophiles whose abuse was as horrific as that of Jimmy Seville is set to be exposed in the wake of the Harvey Weinstein sex scandal. Well, wait a minute. There's been some stuff like that, but not pedophile. Not on the big level. So this is still pending. The deep state has done an amazing job of holding this thing off. But now they're finally out of time. And so this was their Armageddon switch, which again, don't fall for the pandemic panic. I mean, do practice social distancing, but very few people, relatively speaking to Earth's population, will end up dying from this. Harvey was the first low-hanging takedown. So just imagine how high level this will go. So she was talking about that at the time. But I assure you, while Hillary, the Clinton campaign, Obama administration, establishment of both parties, and the Democratic National Committee is related to election fraud, etc., will eventually fall for their epic crimes, You'll never see Hillary in an orange jumpsuit for actual pizza. So they've got to use other charges. The MSM in public will only be given a few hours of notice on the day of each of a series of presidential addresses. They will not be given details or talking points in advance. The goal is that when it's all said and done, there will be no room for question when it comes to the people. Trump won't have to disclose stuff like 9-11, Oklahoma City, Vegas, voter fraud, Russia hacking or collusion, election rigging specifically. When he is done, it will literally be a mic drop on the world stage. No one ever again will have the ability to question who's responsible for, involved in, coordinating anything that has ever happened and been considered a conspiracy theory ever again. When the president is done, the entire world will just know it all. It really is that 
all-encompassing. Like he says, you'll see, it just has to happen. We cannot be derailed. He's part of this team. She's part of this team. Ever again. From another poster asking her a question, can you give us any indication on the timing of when these disclosures will occur? Within days, weeks, months, years? She said, soon, I hope, but I won't pin myself to anything more than that because I literally cannot. Two and a half weeks ago, I would have said within 72 hours this was going to happen if I didn't know better. You then would have called me a LARP, and rightfully so. LARP means live action role play, basically means a liar. I would have been wrong thanks to what we now call on the inside a Vegas attack. <laughs> so ironic. Eight weeks ago, I would have said it was going to happen within the week with 100% certainty. I would have bet my entire career on it and doxed myself, released her real identity to prove her credibility. But alas, I've drudged through this swamp long enough to know that time frames mean nothing. Scheduled dates on a president's calendar mean nothing, literally ever. It is a full-on hourly, daily, weekly race to the finish. Truth or corruption wins whoever gets there first. When the President of the United States formally announces he will be making an official presidential address to the American public, the networks have to cover and broadcast it, unedited, unfiltered, uncut, and in full, from the time he starts until he's left the podium. No broadcasting breaks, no side commentary, no commercials, complete network silence when he speaks. The same protocol and procedure was initiated around radio broadcasted presidential addresses. It was legally protected so that station owners couldn't take advantage of the big crowds they knew would be tuning in by selling and cutting to ads in the middle of the president's speeches. But now, this message appears to be coming to us in the form of a presidential alert from the emergency broadcast system. What does this mean? This means that you are going to have your phone sound like it's an emergency. It goes, it's going to make that horrible freaking noise, the, the two-tone dissonant chord that it does. And then it's going to say presidential emergency alert, and it will start talking. This is something the president has available, and apparently that's what he's going to do to announce the initial phases of these arrests. And given what's happened in the world, I didn't see this coming, but we were telling you to have your food and water stored, that you're going to be at home for a few weeks, maybe longer, you won't want to leave or be able to leave the house, and that during that time when nobody's looking, a lot of these people in the deep state would be arrested. This is what appears to be happening right now, hence the 38,000 troops in Europe with Defender Freedom 20. They're going into the Vatican, they're going into Switzerland, they're going into the city of London, and they're getting these guys. This is all part of what's going on. So she says, I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's simply because I'm trying to convey the broadness and scope of what is going to be publicly disclosed. My only point is that after it's all over, no one will be able to turn away from the truth. The masses will never again be able to claim with 100% certainty that 9-11 didn't have inside U.S. sponsored and funded department agency coordination, allocated resources and assistance. No one will ever be able to not believe that our own frickin' agencies and departments and former administrations didn't play a huge role in stuff like JFK, Oklahoma City, 9-11, ISIS, Pizzagate, Vegas, etc. They won't be able to turn a blind eye to what they consider conspiracy theories today simply because the mainstream media told them to. The only thing that everyone will be able to agree on when it's all said and done is that we've all been horrifically lied to on incomprehensible levels. Think about what I was showing you with the billionaire club and its bid to curb world population and, oh, we got to attack this. And then the next year he starts funding vaccine research. Ten years later, here we are. And this guy gets arrested with 22 vials of, 21 vials of something that he was trying to smuggle into Wuhan right as this thing was ramping up. Financed by the Gates, the Gates Foundation. Isn't that something? Okay. Nothing we've been led to perceive as our reality for generations since the very day George H. Bush was sworn into the admin as director of CIA has been the whole truth and nothing but. No one will ever be able to use ignorance as their excuse anymore. You will know the truth. The people think they're in charge? Ha! Huh. Well, now the president is going to give it to them. He's going to give us all the transparency we can handle. And when he does, that's when you'll truly see what we the people are made of. You'll have people who can't handle it, who are begging to give the truth back to the administration because it's so horrible. 
Here's what the three different disclosures that she was briefed on would be. A three-letter three, three federal agency. You can pretty much tell what that is right away. A three-letter central department, and that's the obvious one. And a three-letter federally sanctioned economic organization. So we know what those are. That's the main part of what she's saying this thing is going to have in it at first, the first wave. These three huge effing rocks are falling. Once you've been given the truth, the credibility and validity of all three will be erased for the last almost 60 years. If you're not picking up what I'm laying down, I don't know what else to tell you. Once you're given the truth, the credibility... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Little glitch because we're live. Then she continued on October 16th, 2017, the overall release will conclude and confirm that the Clinton campaign, DNC, colluded with Russia themselves in an attempt to catapult the president over his GOP competitors during the primaries, then bolster his cordial business relationship with Russia and Putin to push the Russia collusion hacking narrative. So wait a minute, the Democrats colluded with Russia themselves to try to get the, the guy who's now the president ahead because they thought they could defeat him easier than other candidates. Isn't that interesting? And then if he won, they could say, oh, he was in collusion. So they had it going both ways. The problem for then is that WikiLeaks held on to a lot of this info for a while when the New York Police Department obtained files and communications collected from Huma Abedin and Anthony Weiner's laptop. The New York Police Department copied and mirrored the files before handing it over to the FBI as part of their initial investigation, which is why the New York Police Department publicly threatened the FBI themselves, stating that if the FBI didn't release and push for Department of Justice indictments, that they would release what they have, and it's very, very bad. It's what they call life insurance. It's, it's film footage of horrific, horrific stuff. This data dump will be very broad, it will probably be the biggest file dump WikiLeaks has ever published in size. Look at how they've got Assange on the ropes now. And when it's out there, it's going to leave no doubt on things like who colluded with Russia, why it was done, what crimes Hillary committed as Secretary of State and a presidential candidate, and the elite DNC, GOP, Obama administration like Lynch, Comey, etc. actually committed. Again, when it's done, you will have zero doubt as to who is actually guilty of crimes and elections rigging. And I just copied this off of her original writing. And please remember, Trump knows and has known exactly what Assange has. It's why he's been able to be so bold and seem like he's playing 4D chess in front of the media by making claims about things like wiretappings and other loose statements that always seem to come true. When this is done, the FBI and CIA won't have an effing leg to stand on. And if Sessions Trump hadn't played their cards right, the DOJ wouldn't have had a leg either. If Assange gets it done himself, as I expect, and like I said, the president will have no choice but to address the downfall of two of the three three-letter agencies departments I mentioned last week. Mueller and his team have until the 21st, assuming Assange keeps his promise or no one gets to him first. Assange dropped the hash to this hidden file yesterday that would open it up. They all know what's coming regardless of who makes it public first. They're all scrambling, trying to figure out what they can do, but sadly for them, the time is up. There are very few options left. And in this environment, with so many people paying such close attention to every effing detail released about everything and anything, like the Vegas investigation stuff of evidence and reporting, they all know their old standard bag of once successful tricks won't work. The president doesn't have a political party. When it's all said and done, we will all realize that we, the people of this great union, are the only effing party he considers himself to represent. I mean, do you realize that you're now watching the Dems right now trying to backdoor the inevitable demise of their failing Russia collusion crap? I've said a hundred times over the last two and a half weeks before, specific time frames, screaming it's happening today, right now, in an hour, etc., should be the biggest effing LARP signal on your radar. Look at Assange. Even he just publicly tweeted last night that WikiLeaks planned to release this dump October of last year as the final third piece of their promised surprise. But then NBC pulled the Trump-Bush bus tape, and he was forced to pull his release from being published. There you go. That's how they do it. Anyone who actually knows anything about how this all works knows time frames are bull because literally anything and everything could happen to thwart an actual happening. Now, the pandemic thing appears to be the final move 
right before the deep state is defeated, they had to try to do something to sway it in their favor one last time. So she says here, all I will say is the wheels are in motion and have been, it's all teed up and ready to go. Keep your eyes peeled, ears open, and wait for it like everyone else. I said it earlier this past spring, when the dust settles, you'll find out the president isn't kidding. When he says he's given people chances to redeem themselves, their departments, agencies, professional careers, and personal reputations. Sorry about that. There's some little thing stuck in the show. You got to get through that. Trump knows he can't drain the swamp alone or overnight, but he also knows there are many in the swamp who've been begging to get out, just like Savali said. All they needed was someone like him or Reagan or JFK, for F's sake, to extend a hand and pull them out. Realize it's far easier to think and say, what would you do if you were in a position like Comey, Mueller, hell, even Lois Lerner? It's always easy for inherently good people to think and say they'd always do the right thing. That is until your kids, family, decades-long professional personal reputation, your livelihood, future, and the sovereignty of not being in jail serving 15 to 30 years are threatened and very realistically at stake. This is how they've done it. This isn't an effing game, you guys, on the board that she's talking to, which is called Paul. In this swamp, you're not afforded the luxury of remaining a nameless, faceless, effing Anon with nothing to seemingly lose. Look at your threads for F's sake. Half of you are under, under, are under 27, unmarried, no kids, no mortgages, or mouths to feed. <laughs> Half of you are still in school, safely tucked under your parents' financial umbrella of security. Well, coming home to their house, eating their food, using their coinless laundry machines, detergent, during holiday summer school breaks. That's all fine, by the way. It's what you should be doing, while and if you can. I do realize not everyone's situations are so cozy. But that said, realize and consider that a large majority of this corrupt, decaying swamp got into politics thinking they were showing up every day to serve the public. Most of them did not intend on being neck deep in the sludge of the swamp with what has become so much at stake for them to lose. Most of them were set up. And thankfully, most of them are taking advantage of the opportunity they've been given to crawl out and clean themselves off. When it's all done, you'll know who was dirty, but you'll also have to learn to accept and appreciate what they risked on Trump to get out and help. The swamp only successfully drains when you see those who once eyeball deep in its filth are now coming forward and helping the cause. You'll have no choice but to see them, as the president does, the ultimate whistleblowers. And if you open your eyes and ears and give yourselves a head start now, you'll see the president's rationale over certain cabinet picks and candidate backings he's publicly made that you've debated and questioned on this board. I mean, really, do you think people still stuck in the swamp weren't jumping at the chance to offer themselves their knowledge and their assistance before the president even won? I realize this might be hard for you to comprehend, but also remember, the swamp saw the real election polls and results. They knew Trump had been significantly leading and trending for months to win, so they set up this Russia thing in advance to try to make it so they could defeat him once he won. No one knew better than them that the mainstream media would say and do whatever it took to keep that truth from the public, including what they're doing now. Ha ha, incorporating and transitioning those begging and dying to leave the swamp was one of Steve Bannon's primary roles in the administration. Pay attention, y'all, you're slacking if you don't realize all of this. Again, to be clear, I am not, nor have I ever been associated or employed by any alphabet agency. I don't work for anyone but myself. I choose which jobs I ultimately work and the roles I fulfill for others on their behalf. I always have and I always will. If more did the same, they would have avoided the swamp too. So she wrote this online on the 16th. I published it on my website on the 22nd where it got millions of views. And literally, folks, QAnon began six days later from those words being published in my article on October the 28th, and it initially used the exact same forum where she was posting. She gave them a great idea, and they ran with the ball. The plan has been under relentless attack ever since. They've got a, a whole lot of sealed indictments now. There's all this stuff that they've been doing. They've got thousands and thousands and thousands of indictments that they're going to unseal one of which was the Harvard professor Charles Lieber and his work on this vaccine, which is actually the coronavirus, apparently. The storm has now arrived. This is, there's so many memes. The QAnon thing has gone so far beyond 
where it was with me when I was literally one of the only people online talking about this alliance, talking to her in person, Meganon, well not in person, but on the phone. And it all kind of culminated in the year 2019. So this is the last little section I gotta walk you through. It's very important. Non-stop crazy fighting. This is March 26th. You know, all the blocking of the Mueller report and, and it just goes on and on and on. And then we had this happen July 4th. This was a big deal. We had a huge earthquake in and around the Southern California region. Uh, I felt it, it was, it was crazy, it was scary. Then there was another one again, an even bigger one. The second one was worse on July the 6th and it caused high anxiety, myself included. I wrote this into the book. And now look at this folks. This is still the headline on July the 6th. Now you go to July the 7th and look up there on the top left corner. What do you see? Reports. Epstein arrested in New York City on sex trafficking charges has long been accused of molesting young girls. Docs could uh, expose powerful politicians and businessmen. Right at the same time as the earthquake. Okay, Mr. Conspiracy, you're so freaking funny with your flippy blonde hair and your crazy Vegas gay jacket. Well, I'm not really gay, but I, I like gay clothes. I can't help it. I just do. Okay, but check this out. <laughs> check this out, okay? This is a map of China Lake, right exactly where those earthquakes were at their epicenter. The second one, as you saw in my Peterson video, completely demolished the base. It was not operational. Nobody could be there. Go back and watch that video. What were they doing? They were doing chemtrails. This was the main chemtrail base where they were using aerosol operations in our skies, which could include screwing with us and giving us that, you know, viruses, okay? That's another thing. So they took that base out to try to stop them from doing end of the world chemtrail operations. The guy on the left there was the whistleblower who wrote the articles that I talked about when I wrote that piece at the time. This again is the sidebar, okay, of Epstein being arrested. Now, the very next day, we have the Drudge Report's main headline being that Deutsche Bank is in red and investigations are swirling. This was the alliance closing in on the cabal, running out of time. It's almost over. They're going to get defeated. They've run out of money. What are they going to do? They got to distract. They got to distract and delay and decoy. How do you do it? You keep Trump on the ropes. Don't talk about anything else. Don't talk about what's happening to Deutsche Bank. But they couldn't stop this. They couldn't stop the Epstein thing. This is the sidebar on July the 8th. Uh, where they're talking about that they're underage girls. She was 14 years old. Uh, he is a flight risk. And then look at this. The same day, right after those earthquakes, there's this weird, gigantic flood in Washington, D.C. The swamp floods, chaos hits the Capitol, the White House is leaking, record-breaking rains turn Washington, D.C.'s subway system into a dangerous water park. There's now a whole new waterfall feature right smack in the middle of the tracks. What was going on here? They were flooding out, the deep state opened up some sluice gates and flooded out massive tunnels beneath DC that they were using for child trafficking that had all kinds of evidence in them. Then also, this is a fact, if you look at the number of human trafficking arrests since 2010, and this was as of, what does it say there? I can't really, June 23rd, way more human trafficking arrests have taken place during this administration than before. So, of course, uh, Acosta, Trump was initially defending him, but then he had to be stepped down because he was the guy that gave uh, Epstein a pass originally. That was July 12th. The headline, July 13th, Epstein's Temple of Sex. This was a big story. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Deep State, you better do something. You better get everybody's mind off of Epstein. What are you going to do? Got to create the end of the world. You got to create World War III. How are you going to do it? Boom! Tanker torpedo attacks in the Hormuz Strait. Starts out June 13th as a regular heading, and then it turns into a red heading. This is them blowing up oil fields and trying to destroy our oil supply. The USA blames Iran, and now the war drums are, 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 are being banged. The deep state tried to back our president into a corner, so he actually did order an attack that would have probably started World War III and gotten through this whole sequence they wanted to have happened, but then he pulled it back. At the last minute, he outfoxed him. So then here on June 21st, we see again uh, the, 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 the headlines. They were trying to get this thing into a war, and then they could have done a lot of stuff if they'd gotten a big war, but it just didn't work. 
Mueller does his final thing. He's dazed and confused. July 24th, the whole thing kind of sputters out. This is a very important news story. This guy was part of the original team with Zuckerberg. Uh, he came forward. I wrote about that in D-Class. I think that has to be him. It literally couldn't be anybody else by process of elimination. Now, if you saw D-Class, okay, there's some really weird stuff that I put in that book. Namely, if you noticed how Mark Zuckerberg always has this look on his face? Well, apparently, and it's very sad actually, Mark Zuckerberg is under mind control and he really is a programmable person. He doesn't really have a whole lot of ability to control what he's going to do. His parents were in the cabal. His parents got them into this. And this guy was his roommate. They were apparently having a romantic affair, a homosexual affair. He talks about that. He talks about the fact, and I talk about this in D-Class, that the whole entire social media thing with Facebook started out as a different thing that was called LifeLog that was run by DARPA, and you can look this up. People got really weird about it, thinking it was going to infringe on our civil liberties because DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, wanted to have everybody put all their personal information into this database because it saves billions and billions of dollars on surveillance. If people will just give you everything about themselves and you don't have to ask for it, they just give it to you for free, then you can compile it and use it. Well, immediately at the time that they shut down LifeLog is when they booted Facebook and they just ported the DARPA plan right into Facebook. They say that the secret plan is to create suicide, depression. People get addicted to their phone. They get addicted to a virtual reality. They're not talking to people anymore. Now you actually see people walking outside. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Now it's like we're in a public area. We go out to walk the dog and there's people walking everywhere. And they're all happy, by the way. Everybody's happy. They're smiling at you. They love it. They're like, you know, we got some time off now. Nobody's really worried about this thing uh, because it's, it's very much not killing most of the people. You just have to be very clear in thinking what's really going on here. Let's continue. So... Uh, impeachment is in effect, demand jury secrets, July 26th. And then, uh, we got to stoke it up a little more, get something else going. July 29th, mass shooting. There you go. This is what they do. They just got to keep stalling it out. You can't do it now because everybody's upset about the shooting. Now, this is another one. Um, Fed cuts a quarter point as the economy flashes a warning. Their old school economy was teetering. This is all the alliance trying to bring them down. Now they do another mass shooting on August the 4th, second mass shooting in 12 hours in Ohio, trying to blame it on alt-right, because they don't want people talking about this thing when they do the mass arrests. Now they're saying that there's going to be a Lehman-like collapse, and that gets a little headline, and then boom, here you have Epstein found dead in his cell. Very obviously, Epstein did not kill himself. Then August 14th, the stocks are plummeting, uh, banks are getting hammered and stocks are sinking. Now this is a very important one as well. Google is facing 50 different criminal probes from the federal government into monopolistic behavior. That disappeared really fast, but then a couple months later, and this is very important, both of the two major guys that started Google, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, they both resigned in December and then nobody talked about it. Why? Because they are getting out of the way before this all happens. They know what's going on. There's been so many resignations. Okay, let's continue with the headlines. Whistleblower drama hits the White House. Now they got to get this whole thing going with, wait a minute. Oh, that's right. Trump was going after the Ukrainians. He was withholding aid to their country until they gave him the information about what happened to Biden and his son. And, and what about this one and a half billion dollars? And this whole thing gets crazy. And now, oh yeah, we got to drum it up, drum it up. Trump's on the defensive. Trump committed crimes. And we got to impeach him again, even though we just got done impeaching him and it didn't work and he was let go. Now we got to do it again. Well, the IG report dropped around this time. Uh, this actually did happen. It's huge. I didn't really understand it. You have to be kind of like a government agent, but apparently there's a lot of great stuff in there. It's all going to be used. This was September 25th. So he's fighting, he's fighting through October, he's fighting October 8th, tells him to shove it, it's all impeachment, quid pro quo, October 17th, October 18th. We were so tired of this stuff, day after day, they drag it on, October 22nd, 
Trump killed the leader of ISIS. The media would not let him enjoy that for even one day. Uh, they just had to go right back to impeachment. And here's Nancy Pelosi, you know, with all that stuff. Trump says on November 22nd he wants a trial. He wants it to be speedy. Drudge is trying to bring the focus back to Epstein for a little while inside Epstein's sex island. And Pelosi just rushes through totally haphazardly, no rhyme or reason to this thing, not done in a smart way, not done with the proper approvals at all, not following the law. Impeach, 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 December 5th. It's so crazy. Get it done quickly, Trump says, you know, and he's defiant. It's a historic clash. Then December the 8th, something that's going to become very important, as I talked about in the Peterson video, the declassification of secretive space programs. And I talked about this a lot in the other video. So we go back and watch the Pete Peterson video on this channel. December 9th, battles are engulfing the swamp. It's the brink of impeachment. December 9th, clear and present danger. Then we get something good. Brexit happens on December the 12th. The UK votes and the Boris is in a blowout. It does happen. They get the, Bre the Brexit, that, which defeats the cabal by taking out the strongest currency from its basket. Trump is staring down impeachment December 16th. Uh, and then the, the sex abuse cases get exposed by the Vatican, or it starts to be. Uh, and that, of course, has not gone as far as we want it to yet either. Um, there's all this fighting going on. The impeachment is still rocking in December 19th. Then they got to do another one, right? They got to do another one. They got to try to get us into World War III again. This time they blow up the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, Iraq. They have these Iranian guys or, or Iranian loyalists doing it, chanting death to America. And once again, Iran is defiant. He's taunting Trump. You can't do a goddamn thing. Tehran is vowing revenge. Everybody's so worried. Oh my God, it's World War III. What are we going to do? We're so scared. And at the same time, you got these fires ripping through Australia, ultimately burned up 20% of the Australian, 21% of the Australian forests. It was huge. It was biblical. At the same time this is going on, you have this rage building. Iran is eyeing 35 targets. Trump has 52. They're shooting rockets at the U.S. troops. It's World War III, man. And here's the Harvey Weinstein thing. They got to distract you from that. They don't want you just looking at that. Uh, and Weinstein got threatened with jail just for talking on his phone. And then he announced it is war. Iran is targeting our troops. Missiles are firing at bases. It looks really bad. And then this weird synchronicity happened on January 7th, where there's these devil horns that appear over the Persian Gulf during the eclipse. For some reason, and I'm very grateful that this happened, on January the 8th, the president got it de-escalated, stood down the troops, said, let's make a deal. And it's all because of Iran accidentally shooting down a passenger airliner from the Ukraine. So those people, it's very sad that they died. And we do hold them in honor and high esteem, uh, of course. And we got out of this thing. So the Iranian protesters demanded he quit January 12th. And now here's another really weird thing that went down. Prince Harry exits the royal family. Now, why would he do that? Why would he all of a sudden get together with Meghan and like make this big media spectacle that he's not going to be involved anymore? And now they're in this big, big fight. I think it's because Prince Harry knows something really big is about to happen and he's got to get the hell out of there. This was announced on January the 19th. He is fleeing the ship before it's too late at the last minute. Right in the middle of this, December 20, January 21st rather, now it's all bug panic, bug panic. And that's where we are now. Virus in Washington state. The virus is mutating. China quarantines Wuhan, January 22nd. The outbreak is overwhelming. Doctors are collapsing. January 24th, case in Chicago. It's spreading. It just gets, the news gets worse and worse. Okay, check all this stuff out. Grave situation. Nobody can leave. Case in Orange County. Then, January 27th, Kobe Bryant dies on the day of the Grammy Awards. And there's a whole lot more we could talk about that. I do not think that helicopter crash was accidental. There were like three different examples of predictive programming where they had Kobe Bryant in a helicopter crash in media things. That was two of them was like that, okay? And we can show you that. That's a whole different talk that I have to prepare. But it was very, very sad and it happened on the day of the Grammys. Now here's another thing. Go back and look at those Grammy Awards, okay? 
And a couple things are notable. First of all, there's multiple performances where they have ordinary city streets of America that are on fire. And they're showing you the fire, and they're doing these anarchic raps and things like this in front of these fiery scenes. They're trying to plant the seeds of a social breakdown in America. They're trying to influence people to do this, and they traumatize us by killing one of our great heroes, one of the greatest basketball names of all time, Kobe Bryant, on that same day that they're, they're seeding this narrative of, of fires into people's minds. And then also, this one girl wins all the Grammy Awards, Billie Eilish. And it had just come out in the news before that that the Grammys were rigged, the CEO of the Grammys had resigned due to abuse and saying none of this is fair. It's not based on voting. They just pick who they want. Well, they went ahead anyway, and they shoved through Billie Eilish. Now, if you look at her videos, they are extremely satanic. She's literally got black eyes, demonic, this stuff coming off her face, and she's got these wings, and I don't believe she knows what's really going on or how she's being used, but they gave all the awards to the highly disturbing satanic video girl. And I feel sorry for her, and I hope she can get out, and that they haven't abused her too much, if at all. I don't know. It's really sad. But anyway, let's keep moving, because we got a lot to do here. So that same, that same day or the day after, uh, then they do another big thing, try to traumatize us again. 7.7 .7 quake in the Caribbean, and I do believe they have earthquake weapons. I was actually at the Steven Tyler, Janie's Got a Fund event, where he was raising money for uh, disabled, disadvantaged teens. This is actually um, a fan of mine named Luke, who is in a, a rock band, which actually is really cool. Um, and I forget what the name of the band is off the top of my head. Do you remember? Um, oh, the, it was oh, the... Wait, they were the Chill Up Chill Up. Anyway, uh, it's, it's back there on my... The Struts, that's right, the Struts. And I actually... I didn't even know this when I met him. He just said he was a fan of mine, right? So he came up to me and, uh, and, and wanted to talk. And we both had these glittery jackets, as you can see here. And um, so we had fun talking. And I found out later, actually, this guy's a great rock and roll singer. But he was into my work big time. Anyway, um, the World Health Organization declared an emergency. The cases are spiking. It's all this fear, fear, fear. This is when Brexit finally was, was finally ratified and announced January 30th. Notice the correspondence, right as they're about to lose control of the financial system and the world through Brexit. They got to get this thing done. They got to get this pandemic done. The trial is about to be over on January 31st, but they've already got the next thing lined up. Bolton, you know, all that stuff. And at the same time, we got this unbelievably outrageous locust pandemic going on in Africa. So think about this. You have a swine flu that's killing all the pigs in China. You have a chicken flu that's killing all the chickens, so they don't have any food. You have the coronavirus that's attacking Asian males. Five times more Asian males, 80% male are dying from this, okay? Then you have Australia on fire, which is biblical, these huge fires that there's all this evidence that it was deliberately set, and I will show that in another talk. You have Kobe Bryant dying, which is very traumatic to the public. And it seems like they, they set it up that way. They, they predicted it in advance. You have these locusts, which think about this now. If you can control the weather, this is what we're being told in briefings is going on. You can make it rain over desert areas. And then all these locusts are bred up and then you cut the water off and they get dehydrated and they will go to where the food is and they're just destroying all these crops. This is an attack against the planet and it can be done. You can make locusts to order by just putting rain in the desert. That's what apparently has been done. Then, of course, we have on January 31st, this weird, you know, like, th this is the Huffington Post liberal media version of it. The cover-up is complete. Senate has nixed the witnesses. They've got to make Trump look like the bad guy at all times. This was another really weird thing, okay? The death of Mr. Peanut. That's going to be in my article as well. Now, what do I want you to see here? Look carefully at the image that they have in memory of Mr. Peanut and look at the, the monocle and the shape of the monocle. It is a Q. And it even looks similar to the way the QAnon thing has been designed. There's a whole story in this where they wanted to assassinate Trump, the cabal did, and they know that Trump is related to QAnon, so they even worked the Q into the logo. 
and they joked about Mr. Peanut dying, but then after Kobe Bryant died, they had to pull these ads from the Super Bowl. But there was this very bizarre campaign that clearly telegraphed they wanted to assassinate the president. And here is the lovely Billie Eilish in one of her several satanic videos where she's got the city on fire and she's got black eyes and gook on her face and satanic wings. And this is the girl they gave all the Grammys to. And this is what, this is a, a you know, mock-up of all the fire outbreaks in Australia. It was truly horrible. This is one of the cartoons that they did where they showed Kobe Bryant dying. It was called Chamberlain Heights, well in advance of when his helicopter crash actually happened. It's very, very sad. This is almost certainly not an accident. The helicopter pilot had done this a hundred times. It was not because there was bad visibility. And also in these Australia fires, if you look at this carefully, look at the background, notice those trees are fine, but then look at the truck in the foreground and notice that there is molten that has now frozen up and turned solid again. Molten metal coming off of that truck because this is done by microwaves. They were deliberately starting these fires with all different methods, including microwave beams from satellites where the trucks burned up, but the trees are fine. Right in the background. Look at that. That is such an arresting picture. So again, this is where it all started for me, 2007. I put all this out there. And then we had something else that weird happened. Remember this? February 4th, where the Iowa caucus somehow blows it, and then they, they lose all the votes. Even though Pete Buttigieg and Bernie Sanders came out way ahead of Biden, and this is supposed to be what defines where the Democrats are going to go. Nope, they threw it in the trash. Here's a New York Post heading, Des Moines, right? <laughs> Democrats in chaos as the Iowa caucus implodes. So they got rid of that one. Good job, guys. You got rid of that. And then this was when the vote finally happened that stopped the impeachment. Uh, Pelosi ripped up the speech in front of everybody, which was kind of childish and actually illegal because it was destroying government property. They didn't go after her for that. Trump gets acquitted. The left people hate it for the most part, but the right are very happy. The country's divided. Biden finishes in fifth place. He lashes out at dog-faced voters. Then we get February 10th, where in the, grant, in, the, in the Oscars, the guy who was playing the Joker, Joaquin Phoenix, tells us all that we're parasites because we're eating meat. Everybody got mad at him for that, and the ratings fall to a new low. Then we have election crisis stuff. You know, everybody's all excited about the election. That distracted it for a while. While the, the uh, you know, the pandemic's coming in, there's Bloomberg. Uncle Virus, right, all the way back 2009, he was part of that group. He didn't make it, okay? He got scorched in the debate. This is where things really start to get crazy. Stocks spiral, yields crash, systems buckle. This is as this silly pandemic thing is starting to heat up, which is now not silly at all. Very serious. People in Fidelity Mutual could not sell their stock because mysteriously their accounts were all dialed back to zero as the first economic crash starts to happen. And when is all this happening? right at the time that Weinstein is found guilty. You get it? You see what I'm saying? He went straight to Rikers Island, 23 years. This is a landmark in the movement. Now look at what this man has turned into. Look at the, the, the decrepitude on his face as he is just degrading. He's walking with a walker now, which maybe he doesn't really need it, but it sure looks good for the camera, right? He's an actor. Now look at his face in this shot. I mean, he just looks as white as a piece of paper. His face looks like, you know, yesterday's breakfast come back up again. Man, it's nasty. And he's doing harv time. So as soon as that happened, as soon as that happened, right, this is when the world goes into lockdown. It's all scared, scared, because now they know all the rest of them are going to get arrested, that the judges are not bribed anymore. The spread is escalating. The spread in the USA is inevitable. The Dow starts going down. This is February 26th, February 27th, another February 27th. Dow is dropping biggest in history, February 28th, March 3rd. And that's interesting, right? Chris Matthews quits MSNBC, probably because he's doing it voluntarily, stepping down. All of a sudden, March 3rd, now they're handing it to Biden. What the hell? Yep, yeah, economy going down March 5th, and then we got March 8th. Italy now quarantines their population, and this thing is going crazy. But if you could actually read something like this, China's finally declining. They don't want to talk about that too much. Now, 
March 9th, it really starts to get crazy. Stocks go down, Dow minus 1,800 points. Oil is plunging, that's them selling it off to collapse the cabal. Banks are getting hit hard. Then March 10th, it starts to get really awful. Uh, you know, Italy quarantines the entire country, earthquakes. There's some earthquakes in Utah that were underground bases being wiped out as the cabal is being defeated underground. And then March 10th again, and then March 11th, we have Germany, 70% will be infected. They're just ramping up this fear. And this is where Trump comes in on the 11th and says he's fully prepared to use the full power of the federal government. And we need to protect all Americans. Now, Tom Hanks tested positive, but apparently he only had the, the you know, body aches, nothing that bad. Uh, March 12th, it's getting worse and worse and worse. The Fed pumps another trillion dollars. Now they're doing it every day. They're pumping a trillion dollars a day. This could get bigger than the 2008 bailouts, which have done incredible damage to the global economy. Yep, Fed pumps another trillion, worst day on Wall Street since 1987. And then we get these weird rainstorms. Right as everybody starts to panic, the rain comes in, and I think that was great. You can see it here, the Topanga weather forecast. Look at that. I mean, it never rains around here. And it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Showers, 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 rain, rain, rain. Rain destroys these airborne particulates like coronavirus by binding them up with water and ozone. Then on Friday the 13th, of all things, they know it has symbolic importance. The Dow has its biggest drop since the 1987 market crash, 2,352 points. This is all orchestrated, folks. They're doing this to try to throw off the mass arrest now that they know it's close. Trump has to declare a national emergency. It could go on for two months. Modern life turns surreal. This is really the day that it got totally nuts. Friday the 13th. Isn't that something? Look at the day. Complete shutdown is on the table. It's an emergency, March 14th. This is, you know, really crazy. And then right there, March 14th, it's announced, Bill Gates steps down. Hmm, interesting timing. <laughs> so then I'm like, okay, look, dude, we gotta find out like how many Americans are actually killed by the coronavirus, right? Because it's so scary, it's so scary, right? So I'll type it in on Google, right? Let's see what Google says. Well, it says, worst case estimates for U.S. coronavirus deaths. I didn't ask for a worst case scenario estimate. I wanna know how many freaking people actually died, right? Over 3,000 cases in the airport. Wait a minute, how many people actually died? You gotta keep scrolling and scrolling. They don't wanna tell you, right? You keep scrolling and scrolling. And finally, you go down there and there's what it says at the bottom. U.S. death toll rises to 30. 30 people, okay? Let's go back to camera for just a sec. 30 people? <laughs> America has 330 million people and 30 people die? And it's this crazy, oh my God, it's crazy. 30 people have died in America, but you can't find that. Now it's up to like a couple hundred, two, three hundred, but still it's very, very low. Anyway, now I'm, I'm still scrolling through. I'm showing you if you go down a little bit farther and you have the patience to scroll, as of March 3rd, there were only nine deaths and they're ginning up all this fear. And then here's the next one down there. Uh, now it says again, over 30 people dead. So this is an ABC News article where they actually admitted that the death toll was small. National Guard is being activated. And uh, you know, right here in that post, you have to scroll through it. It's not easy to find. The death is the 30th in the United States and the third in California. Okay, and then Italy, Italy, oh my God, Italy is so bad, right? It's so bad, oh my God, I'm so terrified. Everybody in Italy is dying. It's horrible, it's this catastrophe. They're dying, they're dying, they're dying. Whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. 168 died in the last 24 hours, that sucks. I'm sad for them. A total of 631 people, right? The death tolls in Iran and South Korea stand at 291 and 54. Korea was supposed to be such a big deal, right? Oh, wait a minute, 631 people in Italy. How many people live in Italy? Let's ask Google. 60.48 million. Let's divide 60.48 million by 631, the number of deaths, to get us a number which we can use to calculate a percentage. That means there's 95,847.8 units 
of 631 in 60.48 million. Divide 100 by the 95,847.8 to get your percentage. Chunk it into your calculator, what do you get? 0.001% of Italy's population has died, but yet, oh my God, it's so scary. So this is the kind of stuff that I'm walking you through here, but the media is not gonna give you. I'm sorry, but they're not. Now, Trump is saying we're doing very precise medical screenings at our airports, pardon the interruptions and delays, we're moving as quickly as possible. Now you can't even go through the airport. Uh, and then, you know, he's talking about Michael Flynn and he's strongly considering a full pardon. Now I know for a fact that Michael Flynn was instrumental in the alliance, in building this alliance, and he got screwed because of it. And when the, when the Pizzagate stuff first came out, the Podesta emails, he was the one who tweeted several times, at least twice I saw, saying that these children need to be saved, that this is an abomination and we must do something. And boy, did they come after him. So Flynn is your buddy. I gave him money for his legal defense fund. I suggest that you do the same because we need to get him back in the fight. This has destroyed his family. It has destroyed his life. And I would like to personally congratulate you and thank you, General Michael Flynn. Thank you for your service. Thank you for honoring this country and the people of this planet by doing the right thing. And we will see you get pardoned. I know that is going to happen. So now all of a sudden we're learning about things like the lipid envelope. This is the fatty tissue that surrounds the virus. Let's go back to this one. So the fatty tissue that surrounds a virus is called a lipid envelope. And now everybody's an expert on germs. Oh my God, David, you, you were touching this thing and you put it down. And then when you watch the movie Contagion, right? People are like, oh, and then he touched that. And oh my God, then he touched that. And, Oh, you, you, they say in the movie Contagion, right? The, uh, and, the, and, then, and then Kate Winslet from Titanic, right? She says it with a totally straight face. The average person touches their face four times a minute. Okay, look, I've, I, my hands are on the keyboard. I'm a geek. I'm on the computer all the time. I don't care about my face. <laughs> I'm touching my face four times a minute. The average person, uh, and uh, you can't touch anything. You can't touch anything, right? <laughs> And the masks, the masks. Dude, do you understand that unless you have one of those R95s or N95, I guess it's called, right? The other kind of mask, it doesn't help you. It's only to stop your crap from infecting other people. When you sneeze with these masks on, it makes it less likely that this big cloud of mist comes out of your mouth. So the only mask that you actually might not inhale particles from other people is the N95, but the other masks, it's only to help other people from you, dude. <laughs> so you don't. But <laughs> we've been ordering local food delivery here, and now the guy has gotten to the point where he's got the mask on, he's got the gloves, and he's like, I'm sorry about the mask. <laughs> don't worry, man. You got the costume. It's great, you know? And I'm fine. I mean, look, I already got this thing. I kicked its ass. It's not a big deal. I just slept for a month a little more than usual, a lot more than usual, nine, ten hours a day, but still. Now we're all experts on germs, right? Everybody's like a germ freak. They know about it. They're, uh, and the lipid envelope, we must, we must find a way to penetrate the lipid envelope. We, <laughs> we must breach the lipid envelope. Now there's, you know, there's all kinds of ways I could go with this <laughs> about penetrating the li lipid envelope, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> Beth is like, oh my God. No, I'm not going to do it, I promised, okay? But it's, there's a lot of comedy gold if you want to mine and, and, and get your hands into the lipid end. I'm not delirious at all. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I'm making people laugh, and I'm having fun. we got to have some fun with this, okay? So it said here, you know, if you want to read about the lipid envelope... It says here on the third line up from the bottom, as EP policy explained, EPA policy, once the lipid envelope is damaged, the integrity of the virus is compromised and its infectivity is neutralized. Viruses without envelopes are harder to kill. So there you go. You got to get rid of, you got to penetrate that lipid envelope. <laughs> okay, it's getting crazier and crazier. March 16th, chaos getting back into the US. Don't hoard. Here's the sidebar. You can pause this if you want to. Banks are running out of $100 bills. Uh, Israel is monitoring people's phones. 
closing bars and restaurants. Now, of course, there's three states that you can't leave the house. Amazon is running out of everything. Bank runs are going on. This little known thing shows up. The King of Spain renounces inheritance over an offshore fund with ties to Saudi Arabia, if you read the bottom. That's very important. That's all part of the deep state being arrested. The Queen flees Buckingham Palace for some reason. They're claiming it had nothing to do with coronavirus. Maybe she had a tip-off. Got guys like our good friend Mike Adams, who is uh, saying, you know, that there will be critical infrastructure. Federal government will oversee the distrib distribution of groceries and protect those points so the cabal cannot stop us from getting food. And again, I remind you what he said here, the president, every authority, resource, and tool will be used to safeguard the lives and health of our people. And we will remove or eliminate every obstacle necessary to deliver people the care they need. Think about the gravity of that statement. If anything gets in the way, it will be eliminated. That means the deep state is not going to be able to stop us from getting fed. Thus, they told you to have two weeks of food because this is going to get crazy for a while, but it's not going to be the end of society because nobody's really dying, so they're not going to be able to crash the entire world from this. So we're getting right up to the present now. We're living through history. That's what the headlines are saying. It's a new war. And, you know, all this interesting stuff. The Saudi prince's super yacht collapses, okay, capsizes. Why do you think that might happen? Could it be that the deep state is mad at the prince of Saudi Arabia for selling off all the oil and killing their oil business? Yeah. So what are they going to do? We're going to collapse your super yacht. That's the kind of stuff that's going on right now. You look behind the scenes. So they were thinking that they might have to shut down the whole U.S., the, Fed, the uh, FBI, the acting head of the, uh, actually it's Department of Homeland Security, has now said that's not going to happen. We will not have nationwide martial law. But we are getting this lockdown in California for 15 days. Partial lockdown in America, March 16th. Again, the sidebar. Now we're getting, you know, everybody's apparently going to get $2,000. Uh, that could be higher than that once this whole thing comes out. And then I, I tweeted this, in the event that I am reincarnated, I'd like to return as a deadly virus from Prince Philip. Right above, right after Trump said, the world is at war with a hidden enemy. If you think you're, he's talking about coronavirus, you're wrong. That's not what he's talking about. And he said, we will win. This is very important. Amazon is suspending non-essential shipments. Now you basically can't order anything from Amazon but food. Everybody's going to get $2,000, wartime authority, here's the sidebar, and this is the latest, the, the, the today of when I was going to do the broadcast, if my slides hadn't screwed up, testing chaos continues, New York cases double overnight, oh my god, are you going to have to stay home for 18 months? No, that's totally nonsense, it's not going to happen. Okay, so QAnon during this whole time has been bizarrely quiet, and now we're into the final little third act of this thing, which I'm going to have a lot of fun with which is QAnon, again, grows directly out of the Mega Anon stuff. I talked about it, and then they go and post on the same forum, the same kind of idea, but a lot more cryptic, but it was saying the same things that she had been saying, exactly the same things. They have since done over 500 Q proofs, as they're called, where the president says something to make it very obvious that QAnon is his administration. But again, now I'm showing you, this thing goes back to the 1950s, the early 1950s, and Trump was just put in position by the military. They asked him to run to risk his family. He was given a two-week insider briefing where they showed him what was really going on. The last thing he wanted to do is be President of the United States. The hatred, the, the, you know, he was set for life. He's a billionaire, he's a celebrity, he's got money, he's got places to live that are beautiful. Why the heck would he want to do this? Well, they told him, we don't have enough money to do this any other way. We need somebody who can finance his own campaign. We need somebody who we know we can trust. He was not a part of this satanic cult. He certainly had his own dents, okay? But last year, when they were doing all this Mueller stuff, they were digging and digging and digging. And one of the briefings we got is that if they had found something of high value against Trump, they would have launched this virus a lot earlier, okay? The virus was being held on to for the right moment of release until they thought they could get the most benefit out of it. They just couldn't get anything out of the impeachment stuff. Nothing stuck. So then they released it at the end of the year. And that's when it all starts to ramp up. It took a while. So QAnon 
is, is the alliance, it is the administration, and they are the good guys. I'm sorry if you don't like them, but now is a time where we really need to be looking at this with a pragmatic eye, with a sense of hope. There's, there's what, 3,800, 3,900 some Q posts now, it's gigantic. There's so much intel in there, no one person could possibly study all this and understand everything. It's that big, it's huge. But there's been some really crazy stuff, and the, the craziest one recently was on November 11th, 2019, where Q talked about Project Looking Glass. This is a photograph of the post number 3585, where it says, Project Looking Glass going forward in order to look back. Now, what in the world is that? We're going to drop in for review now, and this is mostly going to be slides. I'm going to move quickly. The human brain has this gland in it called the pineal gland, or the third eye, and it shows up in many, many different forms in ancient cultures, like the King Tut's serpent on his forehead, and they often show it as a pine cone. Here's a Babylonian version of it. The Hindus have it as the bindi, or the third eye. Bacchus has the pine cone on his staff there that you can see. Dionysus has it on the end of his staff. All the mystery school people, the initiates, the sacred orders. Buddha, as he's reaching Buddhahood, Buddha consciousness, he's got the symbol of it, the inner fire. Even in the Bible, Jesus says, you remember this from my show back in 2008, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. And this is Matthew 6.22. Well, wait a minute, if there's only one eye, then your body becomes full of light? Well, yeah, Jesus is saying when you activate your pineal gland, when that fully kicks on, you get the light body, okay? That's what it's about. So these people in the secret mystery schools, they also know this, that the pineal gland is the key to ascension, right? It's the key to your psychic function. It's the key to higher consciousness. So as I said in that show back from 2008, if you remember that, surely the Vatican doesn't follow this, or do they? Well, check it out, because you go into Vatican Square, there you have the open sarcophagus, you have the two birds representing the phoenixes, and then you have the pine cone. In fact, this area is called the court of the pine cone. When you walk around in there, you also see this crazy ball sculpture, which we'll get into in a minute. But there it is, the pine cone. And then look at this. You got these uh, sphinx-like lions with Egyptian hieroglyphics right at the base of the pine cone. What in the world is this doing in the middle of the Vatican? It's a secret. There's an obelisk with a Christian crucifix apologetically stuck on top. <laughs> then you have the Pope himself has the pine cone on his staff. This is because they're really into the pine, pineal gland and the secret traditions. So this is a little map of this uh, visual cortex mapping into the pineal gland. It goes right back to the same part of the brain as the eyes do. It is an eye. It is a third eye. And again, Jesus said... If therefore your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. In Matthew 6.22, you can go look that up. It's a big, big clue to what's going on here. So, uh, the pineal gland is only activated when light goes out. And one of the quotes from Jesus is, The people who sat in darkness saw great light. So this possibly refers to the idea of meditating in darkness and then activating your inner light through the pineal gland. It's possible. We don't know for sure, but it's speculation. Now, what do we know, also know about the pineal gland? It does appear to secrete DMT, or dimethyltryptamine, which is found in these various shamanic potions, such as ayahuasca and yopo. And if you have a DMT experience, you get time dilation, time travel, journey to paranormal realms, and encounters with spiritual beings or transdimensional modalities. So you don't want to screw around with that stuff unless you have it supervised. And again, it's probably illegal, so I can't really tell you what to do, but uh, a lot of people are trying these things now. The big secret with the pineal gland, as I've always said, this is very important for reasons we're going to go to, so just hang in there, guys. I know this is long, but I am a machine. I just keep going, right? Like, wow, how does he do that? The interior of this gland is filled with water. It's hollow inside, and that what you're seeing there, that's about the size of a pea, okay, a typical pea. Now, the water inside the pineal gland will calcify and harden as you get older, so there's no water in it anymore. And that's really bad. That means you lose your psychic senses. This is like the mark of the beast in the third eye area. That's what starts to happen. Now here's the really cool thing. The interior tissue, the, the tissue inside the pineal gland aimed at the water 
is filled with rods and cones, just like the retina of your eye, and it's wired into the visual cortex. So as long as you have uh, light, the pineal gland is not very active, but when the light goes out, there's all this electromagnetic activity that starts to form around the pineal gland's surface. So you go into the dark, and then this electrical activity fires up, and if you're sensitive, you can feel it as a pressure, a buzz, a tone, or an acceleration in your head. All the water inside your pineal gland is now shifted away from local space-time and electromagnetic radio signals, and that allows it to go over into time-space where your soul is. I have all that science in the source field book. <laughs> Then the retinal cells inside the pineal gland record whatever visual imagery your soul is actually seeing. So the DMT appears to hyperactivate this activity. And so when you take these types of drugs, you're forcing the pineal gland to have more DMT in it, which gives you more of this psychic insight. But it is dangerous. I mean, people can do a trip and then their pineal gland is always stuck on. It doesn't turn off anymore and you start having hallucinations, schizophrenia, and waking delusions, which you definitely don't want that. Now here's another really amazing thing I've talked about. It's all relevant, so just hang in there. The DMT itself is a piezochromatic material, which means that when you actually synthesize DMT and you hit it with a hammer, big bright flashes of color will come out, and it'll be red, blue, green, yellow. So when that's inside your pineal gland, it's like a little piezochromatic crystal. It can actually be moved by an electromagnetic frequency, okay, in this case from the other realm, because you're shielding off the ones from our realm. Your soul gets in there through the silver cord that everybody sees when they're out of body, right? That's the tether that you have to your soul as your soul is going out and doing remote viewing. It goes through the silver cord into your pineal gland. The DMT crystals are actually releasing full color information that the retinal cells in your pineal gland actually see. So when you're tuning in and meditating, you're seeing images from your higher self. Now, in my class coming up called The Great Awakening, I am going to be unlocking the secrets of how I've used this technology to get into the psychic sight. I'm gonna teach you how to analyze your dreams because that's one of the best sources, how to do this type of verbally dominated remote viewing, how to get your own readings. Never before have I gone into this much information to get you clear communication with your higher self. We're gonna talk more about that a little later, but I wanna get through this first. So it's in the middle of your brain, it's kind of upside down, as you see there, the, the, the pine cone is actually kind of tilted upside down, but it's in the geometric center of the brain, and also interestingly enough, the eardrums both eardrums are actually aligned with a tetrahedral shape if you actually look at where they're positioned. Uh, and so this is like the higher dimensional fields that the ears are also pulling in information as the pineal gland pulls in the visuals, your eardrums pull in the higher sensations. And this is why you'll get these sounds that you think you can hear, but you're not really sure. Auditory hallucinations when you start meditating. It's from that tetrahedral vibration that your, that your pineal gland is creating. Now, apparently, when people really know how to activate the pineal gland and they get that thing fired up all the way, which is what's going to happen to all of us as we go through this great awakening, this great change of which an event like what's happening on Earth right now is a big part of this great awakening, if we do get out of this thing and everybody's okay and satanic evil people have been arrested and we find out what they were up to, the whole planet's consciousness will change. And as that happens, the physics changes, right? So the pineal gland, if you're activated, you can create a stargate for yourself to shoot through and go somewhere else. And what does that look like? You see a round halo over the person's head, a halo of light. That's what they're describing in those halo pictures because these ascended masters, these human ETs that we call angels, would travel with their pineal gland, and when they want to leave, they, you'll see this, this halo form over their head, and then they shoot up into it. The gravity pulls them up, and they disappear. That's what was done, okay? This is really, really cool stuff. So again, from my 2008 slideshow, are great secrets being held? Well, yeah, you know, the awakened pineal gland is the symbol of the Illuminati. They co-opted something positive for their own purposes, 
And now we get to this part of my show from all the way back in 2008. Nobody else ever did this but me. And this is what Q was referring to. Could we reverse engineer the pineal gland or has it already been done? This is what looking glass is, folks. So just hang in there. I'm going to explain looking glass to you now. What might we need? Well, first we got to build the basic shape of the pineal gland, right? So we build something roughly in the shape of the pine cone, a barrel shaped container. We got to fill it with water. We know that the pineal gland needs water. Then we got to put those DMT type of crystals in there, resonant microclusters, which apparently they actually used ground up dust from some of these human ETs. They have a lot more of that kind of DMT in their body, which I guess makes it pretty freaking cool to be an ascended master. You got a constant DMT thing going on. Anyway, you, you put those microclusters, the mummy dust in the water, and you got to shield it off from electromagnetic fields like it happens inside the gland. And then you got to fine tune those electromagnetic fields. It starts to give off photons from the other side, which you then capture in an ionized gas, which in this case is argon. Okay? So here it is. This is what it looks like. This is a large thing. Just to get you a sense of size, each of those posts are taller than a human being, right? So when you walk up to this thing, it's big. It's a big freaking thing. In the middle, you have the barrel shaped cluster and you have the water is stored in there. Then you have these rings that rotate around it and the argon port is where they shoot in this argon gas. When you fire this thing up, you see this, this kind of amber colored uh, looking glass as they call it. And it's got a fisheye lens distortion around the edges and then a person can walk up to this thing, okay? And as you stand near it, it will pick up whatever your pineal gland is seeing and make it visually accessible to everyone in the room. So this is very, very important because the pineal gland can see into the future. Project Looking Glass, they use this technology to look into the future. And if, so, so what we've heard for many years is they called this quantum surveillance and if they really wanted to screw with somebody, they could use looking glass and they could see where you're going to be and set up these things to scare you and make you go crazy. And this apparently they did do this to some people. A lot of people who have a diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia might think that's happening to them, but it's really not. So they don't do this very much. Looking glass has largely been discontinued. But let's go back to the slides now. You have the movie Contact, which showed you almost exactly the same kind of thing. We're not going to go through all this in a lot of detail but they show you basically something that looks and works very similar to Looking Glass, including the fact that Jodie Foster's character gets dropped into it through the gantry crane. She goes down. The first one died, of course, and there's a crucifix symbolism there, as I said before. It looks like the cross because they do hate Christianity, the Cabal does. But anyway, they have another one in Japan. He says, you want to take a ride? And she ends up going through that one. It's this gorgeous sequence where she goes inside the capsule, it closes up, and then she drops through this thing and she goes through this amazing wormhole ride where she then goes to another reality and sees her father. I didn't know at the time, but the movie The Last Mimsy was also originally written by Jim Hart, the same guy who wrote Contact, and there these kids are playing around with this thing that looks like a cube that has exactly the same abilities, it looks into the future. Well, that is another thing that our guys have on the inside world. It's called the Orion Cube, and it was taken from the beings at Roswell. One of the beings at Roswell came out of the ship with this box in its hands as it was dying, and it was carrying it, and then they took it, and they found that when you, when you hold on to it, and it, 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 it will open up like the uh, flower petals, and then whatever you want to see will appear in full color without the problem with looking glass. Looking glass apparently is some Atlantean thing, goes back 11,000 years. But this is another example of looking glass, but it works better because it's 3D. So in the Roswell ship, these beings would hold on to this cube, it would open up, they would think about where and when they wanted to go, they would see it in this thing above the cube, they would decide that's where I want to go, and then the ship would take them there through space and time. The UFO is a time machine and an anti-gravity machine and it travels faster than light. And they use that cube to do that. So we have those. So they could use this technology to look into the future and see what the heck is going on. So I also talked in that video about the doctrine of the convergent timeline paradox thing. 
which is the idea that everything they saw through these types of devices blanked out after 2012 because apparently they weren't authorized to see where this was going. That includes the Snowden stuff, all the other things that are going on. So the Orion cube is probably what they're referring to when they say looking glass in these Q posts. And this was Dan Burris saying, which future do we choose? Now I'm going to give you one other tasty little thing here that is very relevant. This is a pyramid in Egypt where it says gate there, that's the pyramid. And this was an artificial stargate that Dan Burrish claimed that he had been sent through. I never actually used these slides, but this is what he gave me. This was the setup of what he saw out there, heavily armed soldiers, uh, pylons. Now this is the key right here. This is what he said he saw. You see that uh, there's, there's three pillars and they got these weird gears on the top of them that are luminous. Then you have this slate gray disc. That is the Stargate. You walk through that thing, you go somewhere else. Now notice to the left, there's those two red discs. And then inside the red discs is a little thing that looks again like the barrel. That's what it is. It's one of these barrels like the looking glass. It's the same thing. It's that barrel of water, except in this case, they have to be near a pyramid, but you can actually use it to travel. So the barrel is right there in between the discs. You can see it up close here. That is the same thing as a looking glass. It can be used to make a stargate. And he also said that there was a strange perception area as you're getting near to the gate. Now this is one of the weirdest things he said, that the, the barrel, depending on how you tilt it, it'll either produce a round sphere, like you see at the top, which is how they use it for looking glass for that configuration, or it forms a flat disc, which you need to do if you want to travel through it as a stargate. If you don't travel through it as a flat disc, it will literally tear your body to pieces. If you tried to walk into that sphere, you will die. But you can walk through the disc, apparently. Another thing I've never showed anybody until now is this is his recollection of the flip book that somebody had where they were actually looking at the global grid and timing when the Stargate would open based upon these geometric alignments. So you might pause and look at that for a while. Anyway, looking glass is a commonly used tool in the Black Ops world, especially the Orion Cube. The Cabal used it for decades to outsmart their opponents. And QAnon is now saying they have gained access to this technology to look into the future to see what the Cabal was going to do and to, uh, and to beat them at their own game. So here again, November 11th, Looking Glass, and we're just going to go through a few Q quotes that I did last time, and then we're done. So they said, going forward in order to look back, Q had this very bizarre, huge gap in posting between August 1st and November 2nd, 2019, and then they say the public understanding of events are just around the corner. This is after they told us about Looking Glass, right? What do they know? Public understanding right around the corner. November 11th, they say, be ready, Patriots. And then they also announced that they had moved over to the Department of Defense's own web server, 11.11.18. This is the same day that they made the Looking Glass post where they say future proves past, where they're talking about DOD being the, the server. So sure enough, when you look up the IP address of the Department of Defense's own server, it is 11.11.18 as their main domain name. So the QAnon is now protected by the Department of Defense. November 13th, they say nothing can stop what is coming. And they know this because they have looking glass. Then they say November 16th, they borrow from my lingo. The harvest will soon be delivered to the public for consumption. And the hunters become the hunted. That's pretty freaking cool. What do they know? They've got all this intel they're going to give us. Then they say, there is no step five, this is the end. November 19th, they knew that something big was about to happen and that we're heading to the end of it. November 23rd, they said, it's going to be biblical. Well, look at what we're seeing with plagues of locusts, Australia on fire, this weird worldwide virus plague thing, the plagues are in the Bible, right? And they said it's going to be biblical. So they already knew what was going to happen and they knew we would get through this. Okay, the Great Awakening. Be ready, public awakening is coming, December 2nd. They know what's going to happen. They said panic on the inside is real and all hands on deck. So these people are going down. Now they say they're going to use the national presidential alert system to get us the first messages, political and information warfare. And then December 19th, they say this is going to lead to a mass popular awakening. And they also say they will fight but you are ready. So they know what's going to happen. Now, this is one of my favorite ones. December 19th, the enormity 
of what is coming will shock the world. How does that sound right now? To me, it sounds very, very amazing. The enormity of what is coming has shocked the world, and we're just at the beginning. All of this stuff is getting ready to be released, the 38,000 troops in Europe. You see how this all fits together? Looking glass, they know what's coming, they can see the future. They knew that the deep state would release this thing. It wasn't going to be as serious as they wanted it to be. And then they can use that to do the arrests. Everybody's home right now. That's the best time to do this. Okay? So it says here, you know, the enormity of what is coming will shock the world. That's post 3728. December 19th, they say something big is coming, obviously. And they also say on the 29th, the truth will be told. The 21st of January, they're attempting to protect themselves from prosecution and prevent the public from discovering the truth. They keep stalling. Then they say on January 23rd, the public will learn the truth. They also say that a slow drip will suddenly turn into a flood. And again, nothing can stop what is coming. Nothing. And think grand jury material, GJ. Nothing can stop what is coming. Nothing. This seems almost absurdly overconfident, but if you have Looking Glass and this plan is in place and it's got so much behind it, so many million, well, probably millions of people ultimately working on this in varying ways behind the scenes, at least hundreds of thousands. January 23rd, what storm? You'll see. So they know. They know they're getting ready to do something amazing. January 23rd, they say, don't worry, it won't be boring forever. <laughs> That's to say the least. And then they also say, the Great Awakening, they will not be able to walk down the street when people learn the truth. That is coming, folks. That is coming. February 5th, 2020, they say, buckle up. There's going to be panic in D.C. And then on February 9th, as this is all starting to really ramp up with the virus, they say one word, justice. And then on February 13th, they say, haven't you figured it out yet? It's not about Trump's corruption. It's about making sure you don't find out about their corruption. Then on Valentine's Day, they give us an amazing one, a gift for Valentine's. A world televised sit-down is coming. And they say right here, uh, allow for the public dissemination of critical facts, possible unsealed indictments and declass prior to a world televised sit-down. Watch what happens next. It's going to be a very hot spring. They knew what was going to happen. And then they say on February 17th, to be blunt, game over. That is a very solid statement. They have no lack of, they're not afraid. They know this is going to work out. They say, prepare for the storm. You have come far, Anons, and you are ready. They're letting you know what's happening right now is the storm. Then, oddly, they drop off from the 25th to March 9th, where they then say, nothing can stop what is coming again nothing. Rig for red, that's a term from submarines. Red alert, you know, they're getting ready to go into it. And then they say God wins. And now, just uh, today, uh, well, they had not a word then for 10 days. And the silence of Q during this time is very noteworthy. They're not, they're wanting you to look back and, and figure out that this is not the end of the world. And then very recently, they just said, okay, you know, here we are, and do not fear. That was the latest post they just made yesterday, I guess. Okay, so I've been talking for a really, really, really long time. But uh, I hope by now you see, we're at the end of the show, I hope by now you see, if only 1% of people who are infected will die from this thing, it's not a big deal. Here's the thing, 28 deaths in the U.S., you know, total global deaths only 5,000, it's really not bad. China's factories are returning to production. There's no new cases of coronavirus in China. It's all, it all went away in like two, three months. So the world is not going to stand by and kill 5 to 20 or 50% of the population to save this 1%. All right, so I do not believe that all of these things that I've showed you are random. I believe they're all interconnected. I'm sorry, I don't know how long this thing is, four hours, five hours long, whatever. But we had to do this. It's important to get this out there. So thank you for hanging in there with me. We, you know, just uh, the Great Awakening course, okay, is live. So now we can put that nifty sidebar up on the screen, the little animated ticker that we got. Okay, so we do have um, a specific URL 
that you'll see in the, in the ticker. You're going to go to ascensionmysteryschool.com. This is how you support us during this critical time. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about how this all fits together with QAnon and everything before we end this video, so you don't need to click off now. I'm just going to again remind you, the new course is amazing. I wrote a whole new book. It took me a year and a half of really hard work. 500 references, so much new information about these angelic beings and about ascension and 127 new quotes from the Law of One. Spiritual practices on how to activate your pineal gland, how to download the information that you need from your higher self, how to use your dreams to do that, how to do it telepathically, meditation practices. Every week we're going to have a guided meditation. Every week I'm going to lead you through a consciousness raising thing. And it's all new information. So even if you saw Ascension Mystery School before, you're still not going to see this. We do also have an opt-in page, okay, that you can go to by clicking on that link. You go to ascensionmysteryschool.com and you'll see it there. And if you opt in, we have a special video that I shot. How long did it end up being? Was it like a half an hour? 20 minutes. 20 minutes long. It's a whole new video. It's free. All you got to do is opt in. And that allows you to see the video and to put your email in for the class. Now, the class does cost money. Um, and part of what I'm doing is offering you an alternative since all the other conferences have been lost. There's Contact in the Desert is probably not going to happen. They haven't really canceled it yet. But New Living Expo, I was going to do that one. That's gone. I was going to do a whole thing in Holland. That's gone. So I want to be clear here that we are in amazing times. And this is information that really can help you to tap into the spiritual realms in a way you never have before. And that's something that I feel that I'm pretty uniquely qualified to teach. Having gained this type of stuff, having gained accurate prophecies, the new book has a number of examples of that. Uh, hopefully it will still come out on June the 6th. And again, I gambled big time on the idea this would happen, and I put it into the book. So this new science of consciousness that we're learning reveals that the universe is one that we are all interconnected, that the universe is ultimately made of, of consciousness. The universe is a sentient life form. And all of us are actually sharing one infinite consciousness. When you start to understand that, you go a lot deeper. And another thing I've done in this new book that will be in the course is the amazing linkage point between the Great Pyramid and Christianity. I am going to prove that the Great Pyramid was a prophecy of the coming Christ and that the actual beings that built the Great Pyramid, which we call Ra, okay, were not evil. They were actually working for the good, okay? So all of this stuff is coming together. It's a part of the new class. You can sign up for the class at ascensionmysteryschool.com. I don't want you to miss that. And I have one last little piece of information to go through here. Um, and that is that we want to go through right now a group meditation, okay? I do want to do that before we're done. Because this is a critical part of how we're going to make this a better place. How many people do we have live right now? 25,000. All right. So we have 25,000 people live, okay? Let's go to this angle for a minute. We have 25,000 people live. Now, a very important thing that you need to know about the science that I had in source field is called the meditation effect. And that means what happens when 7,000 people, and remember we have 25, which is more than four times that many. What happened when 7,000 people got together in these large transcendental meditation gatherings trained in a meditative practice, and they were able to reduce global war, crime, terrorism, and fatalities by 72% with a corresponding increase in the health of the economy, okay? Or at least the good economy, right? We don't really want to help the cabal's economy at this point, but 7,000 people get together and meditate on pure consciousness, that's the key word, and there's a 72% reduction in anger, hostility, violence, right? All over the world. Wow, that means literally, I want you to think about this, there's 7 billion people on earth, or maybe it's 8 now, I don't know, whatever it is, there's a lot, seven, let's just say 7, there's 7 billion people on earth, 
okay? They have free will. They can choose to pick up a knife and stab somebody. They can choose to shoot a gun. They can choose to try to release a pathogen. They can choose to try to kill people. They could do, they could beat up their kids. They could do domestic violence. They could rape somebody. They could kill somebody. Three out of four of the people who statistically would have chosen to do that somehow decide not to do that through nothing more than the actions of 7,000 people put together under one roof meditating at the same time on the same idea. And what's so amazing is that in Lebanon, during the Israeli-Lebanon war, they had a group of people inside the theater and there was gunshots going on outside, literal machine guns and bombs going off right outside. They didn't know if people were about to break in and everybody was going to get killed. They decided to practice the technique anyway. They all got quiet, they all meditated, and within less than 20 minutes, all the war went away and it was totally quiet and it never came back. Now this has been documented and studied over and over again. It's been published in credible sociological journals. 39 different scientific studies just from the Transcendental Meditation people alone. So this works. 7,000 people. Now we have live 25,000 people right now. We know it for a fact. You can look at the number. That's more than four times more than it took to reduce global war, crime, terrorism, and fatalities by 72%. Okay? So we can do a real good hit on this thing right now. We can actually spike the ascension energy. So I'm going to get a chair and we're going to do this meditation. Because it's I'll, I'll meditate better if I'm not standing up, that's for sure. All right. Now there is a pink shirt on this, okay, that's my wife's. Just so you understand, that's not my design choice. Okay? I call her the little Chinese princess sometimes and she does their beautiful moves. Okay. Oh, I think that, how am I in focus? Do I look in focus? Or, or pretty much, or should I be back a little more? Back more? Okay. Let's do this camera. Yeah, this is a good one. All right. <sighs> okay, everybody. You can look at me. You can be of wire if you want to. I don't care. But, you know, you might want to close your eyes anyway. It's just going to be this frame, and I'm going to have my eyes closed. It's going to be boring. So just actually please try to do this, because... <sighs> Let's close your eyes right now. Take a nice deep breath and let it go. And I invite you to take another nice deep breath and let it go. And I want you to feel yourself as you breathe more and more deeply becoming ever more fully relaxed. Exhaling all places of tension in your body. Relaxing ever more perfectly in this and in every moment. Easing back into your chair or on the floor, whatever you feel comfortable with, lying down perhaps, letting yourself breathe deeper and deeper, more and more, becoming ever more perfectly, beautifully relaxed. Allowing your mind to go to a place of true, deep, meaningful relaxation. All the chattering, all the noise, all the difficulty, just let it go. And let yourself feel ever more calm and at peace. It's truly okay right now to let yourself relax. 
You breathe naturally however you choose. You're aware of your breath. And you find yourself feeling so deeply comfortable, secure, calm, more and more relaxed. Letting all the stress out of your body, exhale all stress, exhale all pain, exhale all trauma, all discomfort, all anxiety and panic and fear. For in the greatest sense, you are consciousness. You will always exist. Nothing threatens you. And you are immortal. And in this consciousness, it is not just your awareness anymore. It is your awareness and there is something so much more for you. You are becoming more alive. You are becoming more at peace. You are becoming consciousness, pure consciousness. And as you let yourself glide deeper and deeper down, going deeper and deeper, breathing more and more relaxation, easing of tension, going deeper and deeper, down into yourself. You can start to visualize the planet, the planet Earth, with its beautiful watery oceans and its beautiful continents, surrounded in living light. Envision that light awakening in people as they sit at home, observing social distancing. And you realize this is the first time that almost everyone on earth has done the same thing. Everyone is at home. Everyone is in a relatively peaceful state all the chaos, all the stress, all the deadlines, all the bills to pay, all that is on hold. The IRS has delayed everyone's tax deadlines, thankfully. Everybody gets to catch their breath. And if the briefings are true, a financial reset will lead to much greater wealth. So if you think you're going to lose all your money, you probably won't. You're probably going to do better than ever in the aftermath of this mass awakening. Right now, the global mind is waking up. It's been sleeping all these years some 25,000 years, the mind has been asleep. Now, as you breathe ever more deeply, becoming deeper and deeper, notice how the light you are creating around the earth is a global mind. The synapses connecting, the corpus callosum linking the two hemispheres of the brain, masculine and feminine, the opposing polarities unifying in a swirl of magnificence. This global brain has just had its first seizure as it's starting to awaken. And as insiders like Pete Peterson have told us, as you go deeper and deeper, the laws of physics are controlled by the observer. We define the way physics really works. 
if enough people believe they can fly, then the laws of physics change to allow that to happen. That's why if only 7,000 people breathe through feelings of love and peace, the world itself is transformed and 72% less war and crime, and terrorism and fatalities take place. See this awakening global mind and pump it up with peace. You almost melt into it. You melt into that beautiful, delicious, almost erotic light. There is a vivaciousness to it, a freshness, a youthfulness, a beauty. And you see that light now going through all molecules of COVID-19 and any other virus like it that may have been planned or is planned or was planned and gently restructuring those molecules so that they no longer have any lethality. They're no longer taking people's lives. They're no longer so contagious. They don't last as long. I authorize you to use your consciousness to restructure that molecule. Look at the little thing. It's a little ball. It's got these little spikes on it. Imagine those spikes melting like an ice cube in the sun. So it no longer attaches so easily to lungs. Mutations that we authorize to make this thing no longer a threat. Envision it leaving quickly on its bell curve, society coming back to life, people going back to work, children dancing and singing and playing, everyone is healthy, and we start to learn the truth, the big moment, the event, the mass arrest, the great awakening. Imagine now that moment, how wonderful it will be when we realize how long this plan has been in place, to free us, to free the animals, all the innocent koalas who died in the Australian fires, the kangaroos, all those animals now much safer because this insane group has been exposed and defeated finally after all these years. And we have true freedom and liberty and justice for all. I'd like you to take this energy of this awakening global mind and send it over all those who are sick, all those who are lying in a bed, coughing with fever. I authorize you to lower their fever right now. I authorize you to reduce their bodily temperature to a healthy level. I authorize you to see that virus leaving their body, turning into something that is not harmful to them. They start to breathe better. Their lungs are clearing. They start to feel better, less tired, until they are free and can leave the hospital and go back to their lives. And I want you to send this light also to all those who exist in fear who have bought into the greatest media magic trick of all time? How do you convince the whole world that something that's not dangerous is going to kill them? Not that dangerous, really, 1% or less. They were able to do this. They were able to do this trick. The cabal did this one thing. But it was necessary for our awakening. Q has made that clear. Breathe in confidence and peace and surety to all those people who have been suffering, all those people who are terrified, who go to bed afraid, who wake up afraid, who cannot leave the house. They're so scared. They have their food. They have their water. They'll get what they need to get. Just imagine them starting to think more peaceful thoughts, starting to relax, learning about the fact that we do have 
all of the coronavirus cases gone in China, no new cases. Everybody's going back to work. In South Korea, going back to work. Everybody in America, around the world, being able to leave their houses, going back to work. Smiles on their faces. The new tomorrow. The great awakening. And maybe, just maybe, they learn the truth about how we've been lied to. And it's a little traumatic, it's a little bumpy, but in the aftermath of what we've just been through, when people find out that this was an attempt that was made, 22 vials smuggled into Wuhan in somebody's socks, and the whole thing thankfully did not end the planet. Now we learn the truth. Now we have freedom. We can live so much more happily. I want you to really embody that space, live in that space, live in the promise of freedom, the promise of disclosure, forbidden technology, anti-gravity, free energy, greening the deserts by desalinating water from the oceans, freeing the planet and its resources. This is the ascension. This is the awakening. This is our transformation into a far more spiritual planet. For as it does say in the Law of One, although it is not likely or probable that everyone will go through the ascension process together, it is ever possible in a single fine moment of inspiration. We can co-create that single fine moment of inspiration. We can help it to exist by being a beacon of light to others, by shining your light in whatever community you may find yourself in. Creating the ascension, creating something where maybe everyone just wakes up. We all get that we don't need to hate each other, to be fearful, to be chasing each other down, to be hunting each other down on the internet. We can just relax, stay calm, be friendly, smile at each other. No longer having to say, my God is better than your God, my race is better than your race, my country is better than your country, my gender is better than your gender, my age group is better than yours, my intelligence is better than yours, whatever it is. Coming together, learning to set aside our differences that this one group worked so hard to create, to make us hate each other, to make us have opposing religions, to make us have opposing beliefs so rigorously held that we're fighting to the death over it. And you just let that go. It doesn't mean that we don't practice religions. It doesn't mean that we don't have different countries and different ideologies. It just means that it's all okay. It's okay to be a Buddhist or a Muslim or a Christian or a Jew or whatever else you choose in whatever your own journey decides. It's okay to have a certain race, to be of a certain country, to be in a certain age group. We're smiling at each other, we're walking happily, holding hands, seeing the planet become a true miracle blessing. For once and for all, it truly is. We authorize this by divine decree we use the power of 25,000 people live to change this world with certainty, with solidarity, with knowledge, with grace. We open our hearts. We release our fear. We've been careful. We've been protective. We're doing what we need to do. And we can usher in a new era of hope and freedom and justice and liberty. We thank the many, many hundreds of thousands of people in the militaries, in the intelligence communities, in the governments, and in the private sector who have worked so diligently and risked their lives to create this mass awakening, to bring us to that point where this will come into being. We honor those who have died. We thank them for their sacrifice. And we have a moment of silence for all those who have contributed to the planetary awakening.
And we reach out to those who are still risking their lives now, to all those involved in Defender Freedom 20 throughout Europe, the 38,000 troops. We thank you for what you're doing. We appreciate you. You are not alone. You are not working in silence. We know what you are doing and we thank you for it and we appreciate it. And we know that you had to stay quiet for operational security, but we're very grateful for you and we look forward to embracing you as heroes in a totally bug-free world. A world of peace, a world in which the plans of the Alliance have been fulfilled, that the great countries of this nation, this world, can all come together as one. Not that we're dividing ourselves, not that we're giving up our freedoms and sovereignties and laws, but just being able to see eye to eye and respect how this group tried to divide us, how this group tried to keep us hating each other, how this group kept us killing each other. And we're finally saying, you know what? We as a global mind, we've learned how to love now. We don't need this lesson of evil. We don't need these people to be making us feel bad. We don't need them to be killing the planet anymore. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for what you were trying to do, serving in the way you thought was right, trying to reduce population because you thought that was right. Thank you for your service. We don't need it anymore. We're drawing a sacred boundary and we're saying no, no more. No more wars, no more environmental destruction, no more pollution, no more hiding the technology that allows us to free the planet, no more corruption, no more lying, no more rape, no more murder, no more children being tortured and killed. We don't need this, we don't want this, we thank you for what you were trying to do, but we're done, it's over. You guys are done. It happened, you gotta let go. You can be a hero by doing the right thing and telling us the truth. Even at this late stage, if you speak out and you become a whistleblower, almost certainly you will be received as a hero, so you can still do it. You have a chance. You don't have to go down with the ship. You can be a hero. And we thank all those awakening heroes, all those people who are choosing to become heroes or who will choose to become heroes. We thank you. We honor you and we will receive you as a hero. We will not judge you if you step away and you're willing to do the right thing. We promise you, we will not judge you. Enough of us will support you. Some will not like it, but many will support you. And we will do our best to help you as you become a whistleblower. We will be there ready to hear what you have to say. And we will look in awe as so many of you step forward, finally letting us know that we are safe and we are free. And this planet is being returned to its rightful owners, the people of planet Earth. Now I want you to take all this light of this awakening global mind and return it to those you love. See the people you love, see them surrounded in light, see them happy and peaceful. And last but not least, I'd like you to share that light with yourself. Love yourself. It's so easy. You don't have to be worried about all the little things that might be wrong if you look in the mirror. You are worthy of love, respect, compassion, kindness, honesty, truth, fidelity. And you have a right to make sure that those things are happening and to gracefully disengage from the people who might not be giving it to you if it is a very consistent pattern that you've tried so hard to ameliorate, but you simply cannot. Many cords are being cut at this time, many old agreements are being ended, and you can step forth in confidence that you are helping to co-create this new world by easing and alleviating the codependent entanglements in your own life, giving those people a righteous release from whatever contract they might have held with you by being in such disarray. And now again, send this energy back to the earth. Imagine any little bugs being discombobulated, being deconstructed, being molecularly rewritten. And this does work. 
We thank you, Father, Mother, God, however we choose to define you, the intelligent infinity, the oneness, the creative collective consciousness. The science is there. We know this is true. We know we all have a single unified mind in the greatest sense. And we thank you for guiding us through this epic planetary awakening. And so it is. Now I'd like you to come back into the room. You've been with me for a long time. It's 9.23 p.m. We started this around 4.20, so 4.20, what about that, huh? All right, let me take my little princess chair out of the way here. I'll put that over there. <clears throat> and I'll step back into focus. So, how was that? You like that? You like that meditation? We're going to be doing those every week when we do the class. And not only am I doing my stuff, my wife Elizabeth has, I believe, three modules that she's going to be doing for you as well. We're also going to have Q&A. There's a lot of stuff to, to happen. She's going to be talking about sacred boundaries. She's going to be talking about power animals and finding your power animal. So it's truly both of us coming together as a dream team. What? I'm going to talk about all kinds of stuff. I'm going to talk about the Great Pyramid. I'm going to talk about how the Great Pyramid was a prophecy of Jesus, believe it or not. And that in the walls, in the actual passageways, there is a timeline, okay? And I have never gone through the pyramid timeline like I did in this book. It's very academic stuff, but I'm going to make it simple in this class, showing how the pyramid has a very precise alignment where if you count through the passageways of one pyramid inch equals one year, the pyramid inch is a little bit different than the English inch. It's exactly 500 millionth of the distance of the pole to the pole, North Pole to South Pole on Earth. If you count by one pyramid inch equals one year, there's these changes in the walls that happen at exactly these very precise historical moments. It gets all kinds of things. It gets the birth and the ascension of Christ very profoundly. It gets the invention of the printing press, the invention of the telegraph. It gets World War I. It gets World War II. The Battle of Los Angeles is in there. And believe it or not, right up to the present, it got the 2007 to 2008 economic collapse. That's a very big part of the pyramid timeline. It actually got what I think is the Edward Snowden revelations of 2013, and it does appear to have the prophecy of when ascension is going to take place, including the date, which is corroborated with some other sources that we're looking at. It looks as if the window is around 2030, 2029, 2030, 2031. The pyramid timeline tells us that. We thought it was going to happen in 2012. I took a lot of heat for that. But we'll talk about why it got delayed. Obviously, all of this stuff is part of the awakening. It did get held off for a while, but not forever, okay? We're going to be going through something truly profound. We're going to be going through something we've never seen before. And with the Great Awakening, this is a way that you can support our mission. You can help us doing this work that we're doing. And you're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have a great community. We're going to come together. We're going to meditate together. We're going to help to co-create how you can access your higher self. I'm going to show you the beings behind the scenes that are running the show and helping us spiritually, the angelic beings, the midwayers, the elders. There's different names for them. I'm going to show you some truly amazing connections between sources that I went back to and looked at and how that dovetails with what Corey Good was saying. We're going to talk about the secret space program. We're going to talk about sacred geometry. We're going to talk about higher level physics. And of course, again, Real focus on clear communication. How do you dial into your higher self? How do you get the information you need to make the right decisions for you and your family, as Daniel Brinkley would say. That's his classic cliche. We've laughed about that so many times, but it's a great saying. Anyway, I don't want to bore you with my marketing prattle, but it really does help us if you can buy this right now. And you know, what else are you going to do, right? You're bored, you're home, this is fun. So let's have some fun together. Let's do this class. I mean, honestly, per hour, it's like such a good deal. You know, for the price that we're charging, it's $333. Might seem a little high, but on the other hand, you're investing in yourself, you're investing in your future, and you're investing in something that's really going to benefit you. And you are helping us fight both legal battles as well as personal battles, all the things we need to do to be on the battlefield for you so we can keep doing these videos. All of this equipment, 
that was invested in from the last time, and I'm finally using it, so I'm really grateful for that. Thank you, those of you who participated in the last Ascension Mystery School. We do have a special offer for you if you sign up in the next five days, where you get $111 off, but it's only for the next five days. So if you do want to do that, now is the time to jump in, because that coupon code will go away. So go to ascensionmysteryschool.com, and again, even if you decide you don't want to do it, you can take it to the next level, watch the 20-minute video that we made for you there. I shot it over in the white room. It looks great. And we'll see you next time. Uh, this is David Wilcock bringing you what's really going on with the so-called Great Pandemic, which I think is going to turn into the Great Awakening. Thanks for watching. Now we got to figure out how to turn this off. what you got to do.